Never heard anything other than the the two. Yeah, you ready? Other than the two 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 existence. You know, now you can go up to different astral planes, which we'll get into deep today also too. Uh, to try to explain this thing also. Uh I, you know. I'm on? Okay. Uh starting this thing off, we're back at the hall of my yacht. Uh back at the hall of my yacht, um, uh, for the for the third time, the third installment of two lectures each day, uh, and um, it's been going pretty good and all. Like we still said, they're working against us in all the cities and stuff based on space. So therefore, um, we just keep on rolling as far as having a another place to uh, put our bodies in at a particular time and all. Just remember that in order for these things that go about, you got to support the businesses and stuff as far as the community calendars. Remember, uh, for the people that's in town, you can usually get a lot of this stuff at, at, uh, as far as the calendars at uh, Life Essential, the Shrine of the Black Madonna, and Soul Vegetarian will be places that you can also go and find out what's going on with, um, with uh, uh, the Hall of Mayotte. With, with, with the Hall of Mayotte. Oh, we got it on? Do I have it? Yes, yeah, so I don't know. Oh, I got a horse on? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got it. I know what you're talking about. With the Hall of Maya. Yeah. With the Hall, yeah. And so, uh, it's, uh, it's imperative that you all do this and all because, like I said, they're shutting down things every day. So, uh, we also uh, take advantage of all the community events, whatever thing. Like, we got this publication, Serious Times, which is the same arc of Sophis. It actually started out the serious time before we established the Arkansas when I came on board, but it was the serious time that gave you both the uh, meeting of the masters uh, uh, conference in um, 2000. Um, in 2000, so here's a uh, it says a quarterly journal, but based on the people's input, it can also be bi-monthly. Uh, that's uh, t for the people out there in, in radio land or TV land or whatever. You can get in touch with Delbert at. Um, 404-344-6862, or you can uh, just type in seriousTimes.com. The reason why I, I'm, I'm dealing with this one because places like the Hall of Mayotte will also, they're going to be taking out ads. So, so other people that really want to uh, have some type of black community business where you want to, uh, to, to get out to the greater black community at large, you can come and also get up in this particular uh, Serious Times um, newsletter with Sister Delbra and Wesley. Uh, the key here is, is that um, uh, we do that now because we got to come together as a small knit community. And I make emphasis on that because some forms of the black community is going to always be a cult like, whereas they, they, they believe in a certain leader or a certain aspect of a God, so they're going to close themselves off to the greater community. Although they might say that, you know, they don't represent the conventional Christianity or the conventional Islam and all, but still yet, it's still that cult-like atmosphere. And basically, if you're not on the agenda of either being down with um, their particular leader or their particular God, you see what I'm saying, then uh, it's going to be limited in the way they're going to reach out to the black community and assist each other. So you do have that fact factor that goes down in the conscious community. So therefore, the ones that's left outside of that, that doesn't particular um, uh, 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 put the plateau as far as one particular deity or one particular uh, belief system or one particular leader, those people who don't deal with that that's on the outside, on the periphery, in the aspect that say we try to deal with all of the black conscious information as a form of black history. So therefore, the Hebrew aspect, we accept that because the simple fact it's a part of our history. Doesn't that necessarily mean whether it's 10,000 years old or whether it's 3,000 years old. Uh, we, we deal the same thing with the Islam. We deal with because we understand that all of it is a part of black history, our particular aspect. We know that nobody outside of us put forth those particular systems. And we also know that those particular systems, if you dig deep enough, have their mystical side to them. So therefore, we don't necessarily uh, shut out anybody. It's the same thing like I'm dealing with this thing here, the return of the ancient evil. And um, the, the, uh, the sister of evil, uh, she said that she was dealing with something that she needed to deal with. Um, something based on melanin in the dark side or whatever. And I told her to go to Isaiah 44. And I knew that Isaiah 44 tell you, I will give you the treasures of darkness. 
But um, I told her to read the whole chapter. Um, because I knew there was another brother said that uh, when he read the whole chapter, there was all types of metaphysical things going out, coming out of that Isaiah, out of the book of Isaiah. And in there it said that I created the dark and the light. I created the evil and the good. So my, you know, the evil and the good. So therefore we're talking about polarities here other than wicked versus good and that whole kind, that, that whole kind of thing. We're talking about polarities, changing seasons. But it was right there in the book of Isaiah. Uh, right there, right there in, the, in, in the book of Isaiah. So we deal with all of this because we know that these particular scriptures are nothing but rewritten. There were ancient scriptures that was rewritten to fit a particular, uh, a, a, a particular movement. Now get take case in point. Good example. We always knew even, even in the Afrocentric movement that we knew that most of these scriptures came out of the libraries of ancient, came out of ancient Africa. And we knew that basically the pages of the Bible was nothing but basically rewritten or plagiarized pages of stuff that came out of ancient Kemet. The thing about it is, is we never really traced those particular, the book of Isaiah, the book of Job, the book of so-and-so, back to see exactly where does it line up with the text. Because on the other hand and stuff, we don't, we're not privy to a lot of things of research that these Europeans are privy to. Well, the guy Gary Greenberg that wrote the book, The Moses Mystery, put out this book called The Myths of the Bible, 101 Myths of the Bible. And by Gary Greenberg, and in here he's literally showing you, this is the book of, uh, this is the, uh, the, the, the book of, uh, let's say it's, uh, um, I'll give you a good example. Uh, the, go, the, the, the book of, uh, give me a, a Bible, uh, Deuteronomy, good. Then he'll show you exactly where you can say, find the same mythology in the Egyptian or the Camite text. And literally these people just took these particular things and just rewrote them in their political agenda. We're talking about politics here other than the word of God. So this particular book here is an excellent book, Gary Greenberg book, uh, 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 101 Myths of the Bible, where they literally, literally go back in and take those particular um, texts and those particular texts and show you the parallel between that and the Camite text. You see, so if we know that the book of Isaiah it says, it starts off, you know, well, I'll give you the treasures of darkness. We know that this is a lot of alchemical stuff. It's, it's a lot of Kabbalistic information. And basically, we don't throw anything out because we're all dealing with fragments. You see what I'm saying? We're all dealing with fragments. And that's the difference about really winning the game. Whenever you throw something out and proclaim this as the actual truth, the game stops. And therefore, you become stuck. It's just like the baby with the bathwater when we threw out the Greek thing, because we understood that the Greeks plagiarized the information from the mystery schools, the Greek philosophy. But Greek mythology was completely black. But if they plagiarized Greek philosophy, you still need to deal with that. You see what I'm saying? But then again, on the other hand, there's this whole story, whether Aristotle or any of these particular people, whether they were black in the first place or uh, whether they were black in the first place. You see what I'm saying? There's these, that, so, so this is this particular information, because we know that they said that they were persecuting people who came to Greece with this philosophy. So obviously, that anybody that came there had to have been of another race. And I remember one time back in 94 when, 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 when Ginger had first got off the Native American mounds, and I said, well, let me take this opportunity, because she was opened up as a channel. So I said, well, let me do something. Instead of just asking all these regular mundane questions and stuff of whether the rent going to get paid or whatever kind of shit, let me take this opportunity because I have a hierarchy to recorrect those particular histories. And then the first thing I ask is, why the hell y'all let white people into the doggone mystery system? And they say, we never let any white people into the mystery system. White folks never went to the mystery system. But then again, on the other hand, I met a Greek woman that worked with Ginger at the, at the uh, um, Atlanta Journal and, and Constitution in... Um, in 99, I was like, man, this woman here is going to, this woman here going to die from skin cancer. Because this woman has a tan year round. And I just thought she was going to some of those tanning beds. And the woman started talking and all. And she said, I'm from Greece. And, um, and, and in so many words, she said, that this tan is my permanent tan. So I said, now, wait a minute. Now, if this is a woman, obviously she looks European, but she, 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 
She's real, I mean, she was real dark. You know how the ones where you see the Europeans where they go and they tan to a point during the summer to like August, they're real dark before the shit start peeling. But she was like that. I said, well, if she's this way in 1999, can you imagine what the origins of the Greek would have been 2,000 years ago? You see what I'm saying? And then I met some out at a mall one day with nappy hair. And then and, and, and Charles Finch said that 90 percent, well, 70 or 80 percent of Greeks, or the Greeks, had sickle cell. So we know if the 80 percent of them had sickle cell, that's got to be a black nation. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, we're talking about the lies are so massive until basically you have to really analyze and you can't make no judgment. You know what I'm saying? Like they're saying like they, they, they found, what's the tomb, um, Ramesses the fifth or one of those Ramesses kings, Ramesses the fifth king back in 93, 93 or 94. They haven't opened it up to the public because the man said they over there just a painting and just a, you know, they over there just a painting and all and they making sure all those black figures are going to be lily white by the time they open it all up. You see what I'm saying? So they just over there just a painting and just doing all this type of stuff. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, and, and um, it's interesting because um, I was reading some book, The Gods of Dark and Light, and it was talking about Horus or Heru, and they say Heru is a deity that has blue eyes. Now we know that the, the, just the basically the eye of Heru itself, you see the eye of Heru, which is supposed to be Horace's eye, is a black dot. Where we, where, where we coined the phrase the black dot from, from the eye of Heru or the eye of Horus. But here this, here this person in this particular book said that Horus's eyes is blue eyes. And 98% of the book, she did a, a, a book, DJ Conway did this book, and, and, and all the stuff that's in, was in the book, was of another culture, mainly African culture, India culture, culture from India, all of this stuff, and they didn't have one black picture in the entire book. I'm like, God damn, huh? wait a minute now. Here it is, you call yourself the great people of deductive reasoning and logic and rationale, and then all of a sudden when it comes to race, you're just going to suspend your common sense. You know what I'm saying? And somebody said, well, you know, you know, uh, you know, well, well, you know, um, and we say, well, you know, people are supposed to produce the entity in whichever race they want to be in. Well, that would be good in our sake. But then again, on the other hand, don't tell me you're going to go to damn blueback Africa. You see what I'm saying? And produce a European. You see, so they're constantly, I mean, there is so much information that these people have, have, have covered over until in so many words, I hear things sometimes and I go, you know, I never ever say that no, it cannot be, uh, necessarily be that way. It's just like the same thing where they got this discrepancy of whether civilization started in the Yucatan over in the Western Hemisphere, whether civilization started in Africa. But then again, if the, if, if the Earth was one land mass, you see what I'm saying? There could very well be this reason why is, why is it that every creation myth that comes about, whether it's Native American, whether it's New Zealand, whether it's Aborigine, whether it's African, whether it's Mexico. Why is it that all of them say this is where the people first stood up? Now, they're talking about Montauk Point, Long Island, which is supposed to be the Montauk Indians or the Montauk Native, Spirit, Native Americans. And they got a mythology to say that the first man and woman stood up in Montauk Point, Long Island. You see what I'm saying? There's a mythology that the first man and woman stood up in the Samoan, uh, 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 um, you know, the Samoan nation, you see. And we got the same story, but if we're talking about, number one, one land mass, number one, we're talking about time being so remotely uh, ancient until we can't just say, not even Africa. You see what I'm saying? And that's when Alam Elijah Muhammad used to say, no, wait a minute, this whole earth belonged to us. And that's what your girl Akasha said in the movie. They were saying, she said, no, all this stuff belonged to us. We are the lords of all of this. And they made the distinction between the vampires and the gods. Because they were saying, no, we vampires, but now you fucking with the gods with Akasha. You have tasted the most ancient of blood. This is our mom, queen of the damned. 
You see what I'm saying? And so she said, no, nah, all of this belongs to us. Same thing, same thing what Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. Same thing that Master Farad Muhammad said. The same thing that, that, that all, the, the, the entire planet Earth. So therefore, now we're talking about just even revising the history particular point. Whereas they are lying every day. You see, so now you can't really rule out anything as far as the way we're going to do this thing. Because I think we even took this Africa thing to a certain level. Now, we're not saying that Africa is not no more remotely ancient as any other place. But my point here is that I'm trying to wonder, why is it that we can't see different sections of Mexico? You know what I'm saying? You see Mexico City, but I mean, you got parts of Mexico that's very mysterious and it's still myst uh, uh, mystical. South America. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's interesting because they got a bunch of brothers going over to South America now. Just started going within the last couple of months. Brothers from America, brothers from Atlanta. They're going over to South. They're going over to like Rio and stuff. And Brazil, they're like, hey, shoot, man. They go over there and they get set out. <laughs> so they go over there and I'll spend about two or three days and all. And they be like, oh, you from America? Shit, it's, it's on. So they say the sisters over there be setting things out. But then again, on the other hand, there's 80 million black people in South America, in Brazil, alone, 80 million black people. You see what I'm saying? They might not know they're black, but there's 80 million black people. And then you want to find out why there's land that's more fertile than America never gets developed. And why is it that these indigenous places like Africa, South America, parts of Mexico, you see what I'm saying? Remote places around the world that's not really remote, that's only remote based on the European don't want a doggone um, build them up. But they'll go and take a place like Germany after World War II and build it up after that. In 25 years, Germany is back on top. You see what I'm saying? And all. Uh, but, but yet these mysterious places that we don't even see. You see, like here, here it is again. The Moors are talking about forms of Yucatan, Mexico. Well, I even got, there's a book by Brother Philip. Brother Philip is a guy by the name of him. It's called Secret of the Andes. It's a channel book, but it's tight because this guy was writing an assumed name. He's Brother Philip on one thing. He's also called George Hunt Williams. You know, uh, George Hunt Williamson, I think it is, or Williams, one of those. He wrote the book Other Tongues, Other Flesh, and Secret Places of the Lion. But he also wrote under the name Brother Philip. You see what I'm saying? And they used to do a lot of this before <coughs> the 1970s because they would get ostracized and castigated by doing metaphysical stuff like the boy Hilton Hotima. Hilton Hotima is an assumed name. It's an alien, you know, it's, 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 it's not the alias name, but it is the assumed name, and it is a ghost name for some other writer. You see what I'm saying? And they used to do a lot of that type of stuff. It was book Secret of the Andes, and they talked about all of this particular aspect of places right here in the Western Hemisphere. You see what I'm saying? Right here in the Western Hemisphere, which leads us to the black water, the mysterious black water opening up on the coast of Africa. Now, isn't it interesting that the black water, anybody heard about this, we'll go into this, came about on the 22nd of March. This black water mysteriously appeared. They've been talking about it. They, they kept it a secret. It's been out there for a minute, but they broke it to the news on the 22nd of March, the first time we heard it publicly. And isn't it funny, during the same time that they would have that going on, they got this Israel bullshit going down. And they got this thing with the Catholic Church going down. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the black water in Florida. This black, mysterious black water on the, off of the, uh, the, the uh, Florida Keys. You see, and, and so we'll go into the, a greater explanation of that. But what we're saying is now, this thing has gotten to the point where as in actuality, you can't never say, no, this is the way shit is. Even this thing with the historical thing. Because we've been in this argument on history, man, for the last 14, 15 years, and there's just so much stuff occurring each day. Now, Walter Williams said that there's, it's impossible if a person has a symbol for you to know what that symbol is 2,000 years from now as far as hieroglyphics. He, as well as Dr. York and a couple other people said that they don't believe that hieroglyphics have been translated. But, uh, that might very well be when it comes to this little slab that they said they found, what the Rosetta Stone and Champollion is supposed to translate hieroglyphics. But, fortunately, one of the only black Egyptologists that we have um, was a sister Riketi Wimby. 
Um, she wrote in a lot of the uh, Van Sertima's books, uh, Egypt Revisited, I think, and, uh, it's just, uh, and a couple of other ones. Um, she wrote for Van Sertima and a lot of things. Um, when I was in, when I spoke in Trenton about four or five years ago, I was speaking in, um, uh, not Trenton, um, Newark, New Jersey. Come to find out that she lives in a suburb of Newark. So therefore, uh, the sister that had me come speak, we rode to her house. And uh, she gives me a whole other history about how Champollion and them, because she went to the University of Chicago, they didn't translate hieroglyphics or metaneta, that there was a black man, here he goes again, there was a black man that just knew it. You see what I'm saying? And just translated it. He just looked at it, and he did all the translation, and yet they did this Champollion credit for the shit. You see what I'm saying? They was doing this thing for 15 years when he was trying to do this and some other guy, and they were getting nowhere with it until they found this black man, and all of a sudden, overnight, hieroglyphics, how can something go when they, they can't find nothing in 15 years, and then all of a sudden, this thing by the end of the 19th century, this shit is completely translated. And their whole Egyptology springs up behind something that they had trouble for 15 years trying to decipher. That is because they did it from this black man, here it goes again, how they do things, and they did this thing from this particular black man that was in Chicago, that translated this stuff for the white boys. You see, uh, translated this stuff for the white boys. But then again, on the other hand, if we keep still believing in this scientific approach on which the white boy has, has brought this, this one model, we never get anywhere. Well, that one guy said, man, that's crazy. You're going to tell me that, um, that, that this can just happen overnight, whereas somebody can just look at something and know it. I said, I do it all the damn time. I do it all the time. You might have thought for the last fucking 10 years I've been studying, no. What I do is I just know the shit. I just look at it, and I know it. It's like your boy um, um, on the movie, uh, 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 what's the name of that movie? Um, uh, the movie with, with Tom Hanks, The Green Mile. And they said, who are we going to see this? We're going to see this woman that's sick. They said, how you know? He said, I just know. Well, what it is is, is I, I would study, and I would go and research what I was looking for, but what I was looking for I already knew. So the only thing I was doing is going in and getting a greater grasp on the actual stuff, but I just knew it. You see what I'm saying? It's in the movie, the, uh, 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 the movie um, Dune, where, they, where it was uh, with the sand people, uh, the, the Fremen, and this guy, he put his suit on a certain way, and the guy said, how did you know to put your suit on that way? You from another planet. You see what I'm saying? He was like, I just knew. And then, and then he said in his, in, his, in, his, in his mind, he will know their ways, he will know their ways as he is born to them. Well, it's the same thing also. Nothing is truly lost. Nothing is, nothing, nothing is truly lost. So therefore, this black guy deciphered hieroglyphics of Metaneta. And that's the no difference the reason why in, when it wasn't even popular, or putting black people in stuff, all of a sudden, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the early 70s, mid 70s, they got these three or four black people they put on at NASA. You see what I'm saying? to put on it at, at NASA. And basically this has been the case based on all of this particular information. But going back, I've learned that you cannot write the gospel as saying this is the way it is and that's how we get stuck. You see, that's how we get stuck whenever we come up and say that no, this is the way it is. And that's what the Afrocentric community did by saying there's a certain general way that we look at this thing as being valid. And as a result, after they wrote that law, it didn't grow, ASCAC didn't grow in, in, part, in, in the aspect of the general history that was put down. And then when you get all this, this, this metaphysical stuff, it looks like Mars cold to them. Because the simple fact is, you cannot say something is a certain way, but even Van Sertima said that from some rock, some spoke, some blade of grass, the truth always comes back up and comes out saying, you can't hold this stuff down. Well, there's a lot of interesting things happening right now based on that, but we need to go in, but I need to recap some things because, um, I need to recap some things because of, uh, let's see a particular, what is this, uh, what is this, uh, what is this back here, man? Oh, let's get ready to say. Oh, okay. Uh, I need to recap some things. Um, this particular book here, if you can find it, the guy is dead. The Yoruba World of Good and Evil by Conrad, um, uh, Conrad e, e, Conrad E, period, in the word M-A-U-G-E. What's that? Bog, M-A-U-G-E, Ph.D. The Yoruba World of Good and Evil. 
The year of a world of good and evil. And even when we have the whole universe thing that come down to us, we have a tailored form, whereas there were certain aspects that was literally taken out of it. That was literally taken out of it. And what we have here is a tailored form of a greater system, of a greater system that existed in the ancient world, in the ancient world. And although we know that this is a system that comes down to us from the ancient world, it is still a flawed system. It is still a flawed system. And I say that in the aspect to say, uh, let me go and pull this particular libation and stuff. I say that because um, um, based on uh, a war of principalities and a battle right now for supremacy that's going on based on certain elements that, 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 that of, is of the changing of the gods. Uh, I told you in the book, uh, what's your boy's book? Uh, Crawley's book under the tarot card, The Tower. And he talks about the, that the two towers that would fall when the lightning strikes, which, which also represents the two towers of the World Trade Center. It says it represented the tra changing of a garrison or a false. And now, get me, now, now try to understand me on this. Clearly the stuff that's in Israel is tailored. Clearly this particular stuff that is going down with the uh, Catholic Church is tailored because if they didn't want you to know that these boys been fucking people, you wouldn't know that. They wouldn't come out publicly. Because they've been screwing people since goddamn Rome. All right? That's no big deal. Everybody knows that the Catholic priest been screwing people. They've been doing it, and they've been coming up, and they've been testing these people for years. You always heard of these people being the molestators, uh, the, the molestators of the world. But the key is, is they're putting focus on it, now so all of a sudden it brings it to the attention. Remember now, if the TV don't put focus on it, or don't bring it to the attention, we never really think about it. That's the way the mind control goes. So for the mere fact that they're focusing on it and all, that's the tailored aspect. But the key here is, although it is tailored, although it is tailored, there's got to be something else that is going on that makes that particular aspect come out the way it is now. Why do they come out and they just actually shut down their own institution? Well, number one, we got to look at this particular part, too. We're talking about three major world religions that basically run the world. One is run from Mecca which is not necessarily the good ones. Because them white people in Mecca, them white Arabs in Mecca, ain't no different than a white man in Wall Street. See what I'm saying? So don't get that long to think that the nationality this is Islam over Christianity and over Judaism, over this and all, because we're talking about one of the same components. Father, son, and grandson. Because we all talking about patriarchal religion. But just look at this particular aspect here. These three major religions, within the last six months, have been attacked. First, it was Islam under, under the World Trade Center thing. You see what I'm saying? And now going on simultaneously, it's doggone the Israel thing and the Catholic thing. Where the world is run by Christmas, I don't know if it's run, but run from Mecca, the Vatican, and also from Israel. You see what I'm saying? That thing of Buddhists don't count. Although there's thousands of Buddhists, a Buddhist aspect, but they ain't talking about people. You see, they figure like this. Majority of the Asians don't believe in shit no more. I don't understand that. You know, you got the, the, this, uh, uh, the, 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 you got the, the Asians to deal with Buddhism, but Buddhism is an extension coming from India. But somehow that goes all up in, a, in that connection with that whole Tibet thing. But my point here is the entire, um, what was that, what was, the, what was some of the Asian stuff? Uh, Zen, the Tao. This stuff is almost forgotten by the masses of the Asians where you got a whole section don't believe in anything. Which I don't know if that's an attribute or, you know, uh, that might be an attribute at these particular times. But then again, on the other hand, they're cutting their eyes and be like white folks too. And all like this and all. So the point I'm trying to make here is, so they figure they don't count. They figure because the hub of that, uh, the hub of that, see, in, in order to have a religion that's supposed to be one that's world dominating, you got to have a massive power. So you have China, which is one particular aspect, but they, but, but the, the, the China that rules that they're scared about, they're not allowed to believe in damn near anything. And they have basically overhauled the indigenous thing. In Japan, they don't believe in shit, but the white boy. So as far as they're concerned, if you take that to Tibet, 
India, them, that, they said that's poor people. So as far as they're concerned, they figure they don't have no power. So that's not the world religion that they're worried about. They're talking about the ones that have influence around the world. is Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. And in the last six months, we have seen this thing fall. That means that there's a particular realm that is coming back to, into play. Not even though that might be orchestrated. It's like the World Trade Center. Although that they might have been forced to blow up their own buildings or whatever type thing, but it's still like one of the guys looked at me, he said, well, you know what? The white boy can never say again that he's untouchable. Because up until now, America, you see what I'm saying, never got their ass whipped. And maybe this particular incident might have been tailored or whatever, but up with, because the simple fact that their hand was forced, meaning that that's vulnerability within itself. And they can't never say no more that they're untouchable. Although it might have been orchestrated, my point here is, what is going on that's going to make you even make this damn move? You understand what I'm saying? To make this move. But on a higher level, this represents the, this represents the hierarchy of the old garrison falling. I don't even give a damn if they did orchestrate the thing that's going down in, in, um, in Israel. Or oh, they just decided we're going to give up a few priests. Or oh, they sent damn near a thousand something in America alone. You see what I'm saying? And that ain't including worldwide. You see what I'm saying? But still yet, if you look behind the scenes, what we're talking about here is we have seen a glitch or a break in the old system. Things that we would have never seen before. You see what I'm saying? And this is what's going on here because that's right there is a, a form of Despite what we think, there is a certain realm that is coming back in, but it's not coming back in in the, in the normal conventional means of what we call liberation and revolution like people think. This thing is like we say it's coming back in as a realm of indulgence that they talk about in Robert Johnson's book's Ecstasy, which is a key book. Robert Johnson, Robert A. Johnson's book, Ecstasy, dealing with the whole Dionysian myth. This is the Realm of the return of the Bacchanalian realm, Bacchus. That's the Roman form of Dionysus. You know, so that Bacchanalian realm, there is a return. So despite what is being orchestrated or being manipulated on the physical realm, there is a whole energy that when they look up, they're going down. Well, who the fuck is manipulating us? You see, what is making us, because obviously if the mutant, or I'll say the word hybrid, is in control by him being a hybrid, it also means that he can be manipulated. That's what Kenneth Grant says about C.W. Ledbetter, Blavatsky, and a whole bunch of Europeans doing the, uh, the, the, the late 18th century, late 1800s, and the early 20th century. That they were slaves of AWAS. That means that there was entities that used Europeans to get certain works done. You see what I'm saying? So even though you might have a pattern where everybody's lying, every now and then you get a break, where you get one, just, that's the same with this Gary Greenberg. He wrote the Moses Mystery, and he wrote this book, 101 Myths of the Bible, and all of a sudden, he has the whole New York Times, and he has the whole entire Jewish community saying that he's a pseudo-scholar. But yet this man is, this, this man is, is uh, this man is, um, he is the head of several archaeological foundations. Uh, Gary Greenberg, the author of the Moses Mystery. He is, a, he, is a, he is a member of a society of biblical literature, Egypt Exploration Society, American Research Center in Kemet, uh, Egypt, and the Anthropological Institute of America. You see, he has addressed international conferences of Egyptologists, the Society of Biblical Literature, and conferences held in America Research uh, Center in Egypt. You see, he is a senior trial lawyer for a criminal defense division of the Legal Aid Society of New York. So just like Tony Brown said, motherfucker, you're coming with big letters. You got the big shit behind you to say that you're legitimate, and well, white people say you're legitimate, but yet they're castigating him and calling him a pseudo-scholar. You see what I'm saying? Because he dare tell the truth, tell the truth. You see, so even in this particular aspect here at all, every now and then, something will come up and they will be slaves. And that's why the book of Enoch says, if you get R.H. Charles, the book of Enoch, his particular one. Because it was one sister like, man, you know, I, you know, I just get sick of these white folks and what they writing 
and all this kind of thing. And I said, you better be glad them white folks right now. I said, no, wait a minute, come on now, let's be honest with this shit. I said, now you got a brother like me and you got a few other brothers out here. We are getting into this particular stuff and said, my stuff is 10 years. I said, but if these white motherfuckers didn't write it, you didn't think you think we was going to wait on niggas to write the shit? We still trying to figure out whether we fucking damn Presbyterian or Baptist. So let's be logical about this shit. Well, I'm glad these white folks did write the book. I don't give a damn what their arterial motive is and whether they're writing it for white folks. They still was being influenced by a greater entity or a greater power to make sure that this particular information get down here because if it was left up to niggas, we would never have it. You understand what I'm saying? We would still be talking about whether I damn take communion or whether I get sprinkled on the head or whether some motherfucker baptized me in some goddamn swimming pool. You hear this shit? Oh, you sprinkle, you can't go to heaven. I got baptized in a big plastic swimming pool, so now I'm going to heaven. That kind of ignorant shit. And we're talking about grown motherfuckers. We ain't talking about babies. So therefore, we know we can't say this, if it's left up to black people, we have to lose some, use some logic behind it. There's always a bigger picture. And that's what we got to look at right now is the doggone bigger picture. You see what I'm saying? So they always use these particular entities. There ain't nothing to manipulate. So they use them a lot of times to work for them. It's just like some of the, the hierarchies that's been controlling over us use the white folks. This is one of the main keys right here. The white folks is a decoy to make sure you don't find out about the real enemies, which is a bunch of people manipulating them. Now even David Icke and them, despite his reptilian stuff, they were still talking about it. They then started talking about this shit with the book called The Gods of Eden by William, what's that, William Bramley. Bramley. And they were saying, no, the damn Illuminati and them motherfuckers is being run by aliens, but they weren't talking. But the aliens that they was talking about was not necessarily some space green people with big eyes. The aliens was entities. That's what Pat Robinson said when he said, oh, there's aliens, but they are angelic. So there's a whole angelic host that we pay homage to that's been ruling this damn shit, and they put the white boy down as the decoy, and you focusing on him, He's a minor player. He's a pawn in the goddamn game. Just like we are pawns to white folks. And other white folks are pawns to white folks. Well, they are pawns to other entities that we'll go deeper into the next couple, the next two days and stuff. Because they need to be unmasked. They need to be unmasked. And the reason why we know this and stuff is because at the University of Chicago, they got several papyruses that they got from not only in Kemet, but they got, they got all the stuff coming from East India. And since then, they have put back stuff that the regular books like the Rig Veda and the Upanishads and all those particular books, which is mainly uh, religious books. The so Rig Veda is a much more older book, but it's in fragments compared to the damn text that they got in University of Chicago. So for the last 35 years, they have had scholars to come back in and put this shit together, and the stuff tell a whole other story. And based on the University of Chicago, they're seeing that the whole hierarchy that we've been praying to for the last damn 2,000 years has been against us. And they got the white boy down there, and they put the white boy up as the chief one that they was going to deal to rule the world because he could keep this bullshit going on down here, and we'll look at him and not look at the gods. We'll worship them and burn candles to them. But we'll, and we'll, but we'll never unmask them as being the architects of all the fucked up shit that's going on down here. So what I'm trying to tell you is that our whole plight, our whole degeneration, our whole deterioration was based on a group of gods that made this shit this way because of the simple fact they don't want us to rise. And that's what your whole Mahabharata is about. The Mahabharata is a war that's put on where, the, where, where men fight against each other, but it was all orchestrated by the gods. All orchestrated by the gods, but it was a futuristic event, which started in the age of Kali Yuga, which is the age that we've been in, which they say, well, the Kali Yuga is the age of 6,000 years, or something like that and all, but still yet, when the Mahabharata war starts, that's when we are going right in the time about slavery, or let's just say the 2,000 mark, 2,000 year mark with the establishment of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. And as a result now, this stuff is being toppled. You see, it's being toppled. 
So this is one of the keys here based on this Mahabharata war. Um, there's, a, there's a whole thing, there's a whole double, there's a whole, um, they did one in 1998, they did a whole uh, film adaptation of the Mahabharata. Um, uh, on, on, on the Mahabharata, you can get that film, it's called the Mahabharata. Um, they did that one, then there's a smaller book on the Mahabharata, then there's three volumes put out by the University of Chicago on the Mahabharata. And in so many words, this is a war that is started against men fighting against each other to kill off certain ancient spirits that will take over, all put together and orchestrated by the gods. All orchestrated by the gods. Uh, um, now let me pull the libations and all so we can get into this particular thing. Because at this particular time, it's got to become a form of uh, unmasking. Because now things, if, if, anybody, if anybody in the last three weeks have been having a whole bunch of serious things that go wrong, I'm talking about like, you losing shit. Uh, you know, something that's going to, you know, it might not even be people that's fucking with you. All of that is always the case. But this time it just be some, just some fucked up luck. You see what I'm saying? That is because they are looking at the ones, they can see the ones that's the ones that's gravitated toward the ones that have the light in them. Because in order for you to have the light in them, you got to have the darkness. So they can see the ones that have the light in them, the ones that's aware. They know the ones that's aware. And there's a series of things, and it can just, it don't even have to be major shit. It can just shit to just get you off track. Well, you got to go a week out off course or two weeks off course just to get back. That's the kind of thing. So what we're talking about here is that these particular entities are beefing up their offensive for their last stand. For their last stand. And we're going to get into some of that, that particular information and all. Let me, let me pull the libations and all. Like I said before, and which I wanted to, which I wanted to reiterate, because I, 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 I talked about the three sisters the last time. Well, it was two sisters, but then again, oh, oh, it was, I said Tiacha and Shayola, these, three, these, these entities that came. And they gave me the, 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 uh, the, the aspect of, for the elixir, the formula for the elixir, Tiacha, Shayola. There was a third one, which was called Otincha, and she was the one, she said, don't forget me because I'm the fire, which means that I'm the fire behind the particular alcohol. And I tell a particular story about, um, I tell a particular story about, about how, uh, um, I had this attack on me, uh, I had this particular uh, attack on my teeth, and uh, they called this sister from San Antonio because I had her to be the psychic because I had turned her on two weeks before, uh, uh, two weeks before I turned her on as far as asking Zara Banda to go through her and open her up for channels, and about two weeks later after a strike force, um, they came in as like a strike force and hit me for opening it up, op opening up the particular uh, channel. We'll go in, we'll identify the entities and all of that. But as a result, th uh, these three entities, Otincha, Shayola, Tiacha, channel for, for, for me to mix dark whiskey and white and light liquor together. And, and then I, I perfected it over the course of, I perfected it over the course of, of, of three or four months. Now, it's interesting because I did a lecture here on the, what was that, the 20th, when was that last lecture? The 17th or something? Uh, 17th or 18th or something? 17th and 18th or something like that, of February. And then I went to, I went to Charlotte and some people got in the car, a, a, a sister in her 70s and this brother, they're like in their both in their 70s, they got in the car and they drove all the way from Virginia to come to Charlotte um, to see me. And one of the sisters said that she was blind in one eye, she was deaf in one ear. And she started drinking the damn elixir, and now she can see out of the eye. But we had this big argument, and we had this big argument, because we got everybody into the goddamn hell shit, and they don't even understand this shit ain't got shit to do with hell. Because what we're talking about here, see, but see, we're thinking on a mundane level. So the first thing is, oh, don't alcohol burn brain cells and all that shit. I'm like, wait a minute. We're talking science here. The alcohol is only a doorway to an entity that is an entity for healing. You see what I'm saying? So we're talking about something that overrides the physical. That's what they call it, metaphysical, above the physical. But see, for a lot of the people, they still thinking, you know, because a lot of the things here is it's one thing to be into the diet, but now we got a whole crew of people that the diet has become the religion now. 
So somehow they think that righteousness and they think for some reason that the diet has something to do with their evolution. That's bullshit. You understand? The diet, yes, the diet is great if you're down here. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're down here and you're in a physical body, we understand that the diet can help you in the physical body so that you don't suffer when you're down here. But you got whole crew on the goddamn radio now. Motherfucker um, on, on RFG thinking that for some reason they're going to get to the high goddamn rims because they're eating some motherfucking oat brands. That's bullshit. <laughs> so you done got to, so now you got a bunch of niggas now that's taking something that is supposed to be something medicinal, something that is supposed to be something that is supposed to help you as far as your physical body, which is just common sense. And now they done made it into a goddamn religion like we done made everything else. So we got a whole group of people, they sit around and their conversation is about what other motherfuckers is eating. Yeah. Oh man, I saw that motherfucker eating some goddamn ice cream the other day. Oh, child, so and so, so and so. So this has become a religion. And we've gotten off track. You see what I'm saying? That's the same thing even with the thing here, what I hadn't even got to draw this parallel. Whereas now, for some conscious people, whether you're conscious or not is based on whether you, whatever you say about white folks in the aspect like this. And what I mean by that is, if you're constantly talking shit about white folks, that is the criteria for you being conscious. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And some of us don't even see goddamn white folks for two or three weeks. I mean, some of us. You understand? And the motherfuckers that we do come in contact don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. So therefore, we have identified a problem, a greater society, and white folks' and racism is, is, is actually, actually, it's given. But my point here is that you got a whole group of people that's stuck on that shit. You understand what I'm saying? So therefore, it's always, even in, the, in all the aspects of um, when, you, when you hear stuff like um, a lot of the yogis and a lot of what you call, they keep telling you the whole time you got to keep going on because those things, they're just tools. But they can become crutches after a while. You understand what I'm saying? They can become crushed. And anything you get into, the ego is going to say, okay, you're whipping my ass through this because you are changing from the person that you used to be. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to become that which you are, are, are focused on, and you're going to focus on that so much until you're going to get stuck there and you can't go on. Well, it's the same thing with the diet thing. You see what I'm saying? And we tend to gravitate and become experts at that thing which we conquer. It's the first time when I became a vegetarian. I was up in the up in uh, I was up up in the store that I used to work in, and I came in and the guy said, "Damn, you a vegetarian?" He said, "Man, how the hell you do that?" I mean, I really felt good because I'm looking at the, the the programming. He said, "Man, how do you do that?" Man, just the thought of not eating meat. You know, so for a good goddamn couple of months and stuff, I was able to overcome something that I, you know, that other people didn't do. So I felt good about that. And so therefore the ego can stick to that and exacerbate, you understand what I'm saying? So the point is I can be bouncing around this motherfucker 10, 12 years thinking about what I eat as that being superior. You understand what I'm saying? God damn, you got motherfuckers in the world that don't eat at all. You see what I'm saying? But then again, on the other hand, those are all tools and I, are, 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 are tricks to get stuck. You see what I'm saying? We can get stuck on certain things. And that's why we never see the bigger picture and go forward. So the whole conscious community is a group of black people over the past umpteen years has got stuck in a certain system. And that's why, uh, that's why uh, uh, we at odds with each other. Because here's a system that a person got into and couldn't go beyond it, and they stuck there. Then you got another person that went beyond that, but then they got stuck in that. You got people that are stuck into the Kemet thing now. Now Egypt is in fragments like a motherfucker. But yes, you got people, if it don't, if it don't say, if it ain't coming through you by that particular deity system, they don't want to hear it. You got some people that think that East India is the only thing there is. You see what I'm saying? You got other people stuck in the Hebrew. You got people stuck in certain aspects and, we don't, and, and, and basically you got to keep going on. You see? And so we got a whole bunch of people that stuck in a certain way. So when I introduce this, the first thing they want to know, well, don't that burn brain cells? I'm like, well, goddamn, fucked up as your brain is, motherfucker. You need something to burn your goddamn brain cells out. You know? But here it is, and I'm saying, look, it's only acting as a gateway. Now, here it is, you're going to spit the same damn rum in a ritual. 
Every spiritual thing, even down to the Christian church, they use alcohol. You understand what I'm saying? The Islam shit don't count. That's just some straight up bullshit there. You see what I'm saying? If you're talking about something that's literally nothing, God damn it, you, half that stuff that is saved don't exist. That's all the Islam shit say. Don't exist. You know what I'm saying? It got even worse than these fools said. A woman got a motherfucking face that God created and say, don't show your goddamn face. You see what I'm saying? So we're talking about something that becomes such an insanity in the original thing with the covering up was the motherfuckers lived in the sand. And the sand was blowing, and goddammit, they had to cover up. You understand what I'm saying? But the point I'm trying to say here is, but I'm not going to pass on Islam because all of that damn religious stuff is a bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? When it is going to come to the point where you are lingering in insanity. You see what I'm saying? So some of us stop eating pork and play, playing seven times a day 13, 14, 20, 30 years ago, and we stuck in that shit. You see what I'm saying? So we stuck in that, and that's why we can't see the bigger picture. And that's why when, other, when the real stuff comes, that sounds like it's some crazy stuff. So we are so far removed from the, from the true things until 98% of how we're getting up out of this thing and how this whole thing is going to manifest is not going to be in the conventional means of what we think is spirituality. Of what we think is spirituality. Because in so much words, to the physical world, it is not only the evil that we're supposed to come to go to. Well, I'll tell you what I'm talking about about that. Because there's a distinction. Not only is it the evil, which is just talking about the destructive force, but don't get this wrong because one sister saying, you know, her whole thing is she want to fuck up a whole bunch of people, want to fuck up a whole bunch of black men. And she's like, that's just not destructive segment nature. I'm like, wait a minute, no, it ain't talking about you physically doing something down here. This is the damn illusion. What we're talking about here is any type of alternative thought that does not border or does not coincide with what we call the creative natural world is considered evil. That's the evil I'm talking about. You see, so they make a distinction. The European talk makes a distinction where they say evil in the moralistic sense, and then there's something called cosmic evil. Now, what the fuck is cosmic evil when it don't even apply to the earth? So based on everything that we got that applies to the earth, what we call evil is a certain code then what the fuck is cosmic evil which it don't even apply to the earth? You understand what I'm saying? But when you break it down, black holes are evil. In the cosmic evil. Comets, meteorites are evil. In the cosmic evil aspect, and then there's a whole other aspect of evil that they're talking about, which is talking about something that is alien. It's the Andromeda strain. It's not doggone evil in the whole bigger picture. It's just alien and evil in the aspect of it enters, into, uh, it enters into a particular realm that is not conducive to it. So it is the destructive element that they're talking about here that we need to become, but not the destructive element because you're going and fucking up a whole bunch of damn people that don't know shit. You see what I'm saying? So it's a whole bunch of stuff that is going on right now and all them. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about something that is above what people are, going to, uh, are dealing with at this particular time when I say the word evil. It ain't got nothing to do with what you do as far as a, uh, uh, you go out and go slap some old woman. That would be physical. And it would be a waste of fucking time. As if that make a hill of beans in the universe when hell, a, mile, a week later she might die any damn way. So what the fuck did you do? You see what I'm saying? In, the, in this case, we're talking about that when it comes to anything. Uh, anything. But let me, let me uh, pull, uh, pull the libations and then we'll go back into some of this particular stuff because we got a lot to cover. But... Um, what we're talking about now is basically, and I've been talking about this stuff before, and we've been re we, we, we recap this thing. We're talking about that Godzilla, which was a, which was a, which was a prime example of Godzilla, alien movies, the Predator movies. Whereas this is considered evil if the motherfucker is after you. You got serious problems. You would say, oh, that is my evil. This motherfucker trying to eat me. But in the big context of thing, it would not be moralistic evil. It is what it is. You would even give a valid reason to say, well, that's not evil. That's just a, that's not, that's just a, what's that? Yeah, that's not a, uh, uh, that's not a, uh, evil in the concept to a text that it is something that is moralistic. You wouldn't call the bear in the forest is after you evil. 
You understand what I'm saying? You would just say, well, you know, I just went down the wrong path and got caught up in the wrong damn thing, in the wrong place at the right time, actually. For the bear, it's the right time. And this is the concept what we're talking about here is we got to become the ancient evil. Not anything that you have to put forth physically. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a destructive element mentally that is not necessarily talking about well, the way you treat people and all the moralistic terms. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a new paradigm in the way of thinking when you say, well, hell, this shit don't exist any damn way. Um, in, anyway, so let me, let me pull libations and you, but you got how many minutes? What? Oh, what, what? Oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Well, you know that's the thing. You know the CP time. Hey, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know the C. You know the CP time. Conscious people time and all. You know the whole deal on that. Shoot. It's evil, man. That means I ain't got to apologize. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, let me, um, damn, I was looking for a time. Let me, let me pull some, pull this particular thing. Cause we got to break down this particular structure again, because there is a war going on. And then we have to deal with one of the orders at hand. One of the orders at hand is the, what I had to deal with because last week the inevitable happened. And to me, it was the most devastating thing could happen to me. I was in trouble cause my goddamn uh, stereo system went on the blink. You see what I'm saying? Now, goddamn, they can put a damn, they can cut off the, the gas. You know what I'm saying? All? They can even put a notice on the door. You know, you vacate the premises in a goddamn month. You know what I'm saying? I go from up there. But when the system shuts down, I got to get my priorities straight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I, but, but it was interesting because a certain thing happened. There was a certain thing happened. It shut down and all, and there was a certain thing that actually happened. And it was a whole ordeal that went down. And then I had to was faced and forced to go and try to get something new. And then I found out that they put in a whole, they, they have basically, they have basically attacked the whole sound levels on a whole nother level that I didn't even know. They've attacked the whole sound level, whereas we might say that in actuality for the last 10 years, probably no music has gotten to the inner ear level at all. Everything you're talking about is so synthetic and holographic to we're talking about something that don't even enter into the inter ear level. We got to get into that today also too, because this is major. If there's anything that I understand that is more major and stuff, when you look, you say, well, we understand there's certain things going on, but when it comes down to them shutting down the discos, and we talk about it, we've been talking about this gradually the last two or three meetings, but, some, but, but this thing is going on. I got to make a complete tape of this because there is a whole war out on this. Whereas I'm saying that basically we probably haven't heard music but only in glimpses. You see what I'm saying? Even that which is set that is old. You see what I'm saying? Could very well be filtered through something that don't give you the doggone the energy to, or, or, or the frequency to go to the inner ear. That's the key. That's one of the main keys. Remember I talked about this last time, how Crawley, Alison Crawley made such a major point in the book of Thoth on that one page about the importance of the inner ear on the book of Thoth, um, and, and on that one page, uh, and I, I, didn't, I didn't bring the book of Thoth, but I, I think I, but I can paraphrase. And yet, in the entire metaphysical world, they don't, they, they don't even deal with it. You see what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, this fall, Preston Nichols and Peter Moon put out a book called The Music of Life. You see what I'm saying? Very key. Why did they put out that particular book at this particular time? And then the ordeal I went to when I went to Circuit City. Forced to go try to get something new for a minute, and the shit wasn't working. More wattage. But certain things can't go with certain things, man. The frequencies and stuff they're dealing with here, man, this is a whole conspiracy. Because remember, um, what's that yogi master? Something or con? What's that guy's name? Uh, said that the new religion will not be a religion. It will be a music. You see what I'm saying? It will be a music. And what I'm saying is, even if you did, it has nothing to do with the person producing the music. I'm 
saying it's to the point where as the sound system that you have is already set within the system to give you a certain sound, although the damn music might have been 30 years ago, 20 years ago. That's what we're talking about here. The actual components of what they call Dolby ProLogic. You see what I'm saying? They got all this THX. You see what I'm saying? The THX from, the, from, from George Lucas movies, now that shit is on sound systems. You see what I'm saying? I saw THX, George Lucas movies, his sound system to go to the movies is, and in the video, now that shit is on the, damn, uh, on the stereo systems. Motherfuckers say, you know what THX is? I said, that's George Lucas shit. Yeah, that motherfucker's on Sony now. You see, so this is the stuff we talk about. We got to deal with this particular science. Uh, with this science. Now, let, me, let, me, let me pull these libations right now. Uh, pull these libations right now. Like I said, the last couple things, we're dealing with the Congo rights, as well as um, uh, the other six entities that came from the outer world that we'll be also recapping. Um, we'll, be, we'll also be recapping and all, um, uh, the other six entities from the outer world but uh, that, that, that I'll deal with. And these are the ones that I, I, I deem appropriate at this particular time, uh, this particular time. All of the entities are, you just gotta overrule a certain amount of aspect because you don't want that particular energy. And I'll give you the, uh, and I'll give you the, uh, the, the reason why also. So let me um, put a libation and then we can go on. All right. Zara Banda, El Cristo Negro, Los Centros and Tranquilas, Santissima Muerte, San Simon, El Cristo Rey, Madre de la Luna, Madre de Agua, La Santissima Pedro Eman, Francisco de Sweetie Reyes, Mama Shola, Otincha, Tiecha, Cheola, Omagumu, Kekombo, Lokeo, okay, Oshun, let me get this Yemenya. Got to give them Big Mama some props, boy. She done lashed out at me twice on, on several occasions and shit. And every time she lashed out, because she's a feminine manager, ain't nothing you can do. Just build her altar and hope she just get the, keep, keep the fuck out of her way. You know, so, uh, uh, Yemenya, Oya, Olakun, Oshose, Azuli, Edoedo, Dambaloedo, Bridget, Marasha, Baphomet, Sekhmet. Set Maya, Sat Teket, Osa, Aset, Heru, Heru Raha, Ha Sefi, Ha Maku, Newt, Apit, Had It, Tai Ert, Bashashetu, Balarama, Krishna, Radha, Pravati, Sri Lakshmi, Tenma Abadayas, Kali, Tara, Durga, Lakshmi, Tama, Kim, Kimapis, Kimu, Kimu, Tim, Rarit, Lilith, Layla, Lilithu, Hamaku, Hamati, Hararis, Haristidis, Hadit, Abdit, Kabdit, Allah, Layla, Lilith, Lilithu, Amin Ra, Amin Rimpensa, Patah, Hedheru, Nebhurt, Fashet, Mithra, Perseus, Jason, Medea, Dionysus, Bacchus, Eros, Inanna, Ishtar, Aphrodite, Kali, uh, Cam, Sam, Samson, Delilah, Delilah, Okanos, uh, Oceanus, Jaya, uh, Ereskagul, Erkidna, Sphinx, Nimi and Lion, uh, Hecate, Persephone, Demeter, uh, Pegasus, Medusa, Gorgons, Chrysoros, Chrysosaur, Chrysomelos, uh, Ama, Neama, Ba, Na, Ka, Yuguru, Digitalia Stages, Abd Earth, Ha Sefi, oh, let's see, Shakti, Shiva, Vetra, Danai, um, I guess that'll do. Ashe, all right, hmm? Ashe, all those underworld deities. Okay, uh, going right along to recap. What's going on at this particular time? Uh, we need to go back. First of all, I, want, I need to say something about this. Two things happened. Number one, we talked about the last time we went to go see the movie with Denzel, and Denzel told his little boy in the movie John Q to sell out. 
Well, apparently that was enough to get him the Academy Award thing. Now, this thing, this thing goes several ways. On one hand, yeah, he told the little boy to sell out, and we know that particular part, to get the particular Academy Award, but then again, on the other hand, they had to go in and they had to give the two black people the Academy Awards anyway, based on what time it is. Number one, this was a Mayotte year, because the, the, you, you got the 20, anytime you get the word 20, 22 is a number for Mayotte. The balance, the equilibrium. You get 22, you get Mayotte, and this was a Mayotte year because you got two twos and two zeros in it. You see, so they have to come correct on one aspect, but they say when we come correct, it's not as if we're not going to come correct by uh, also spreading the propaganda. So we got two movies that Denzel was forced to do something he wasn't supposed to do. Because the simple fact is, we got a fucking New Jack City in 2001. No, excuse me, 19, 1990 when we got New Jack City. Denzel fucked around and did a New Jack City in 2001, 10 years later. Just like you got in uh, 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 1991, you had Boys in the Hood, and in 2001, you got fucking Baby Boy. This is science. So in so many words, yeah, he played a hell of a role. But still yet, in China, in, in, in Australia, in New Zealand, in, in Paris, in Rome, in England, and on the continent of Africa, oh, that's the same niggas in the ghetto that was in the ghetto doing the same bullshit in 2000, in, 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 excuse me, in 1991 with Boys in the Hood and also with, you, with, you, with your, uh, New Jack City. You see what I'm saying? Neil Brown now is in a police car. That's the science on this thing. Because although the motherfucker did an awesome performance, still yet the setting is business as usual in the ghetto. And a lot of times it ain't even like that. They don't even have motherfucking ghettos no more. Down here they done fucking around and closed down all the fucking projects. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to tell you here is on one aspect, they give him this, and he did a great role, but he still, they got Denzel, a person who was not even, a person who wouldn't dare even do those kind of roles to do that fucking role. You see what I'm saying? Well, they got Macy Gray going around there like she was like a bat out of hell in the damn movie. You see what I'm saying? So here it is, they're putting forth that same stereotype and propaganda to the greater world at large. But in this particular case, it's even greater because they got the... Academy Award behind it, and that makes it a seal of approval for the whole world to look at. Right. Now, on the other hand, Holly Berry comes, and her shit is, no, motherfucker, you got a fucking nigga who killed your husband, who was in on killing your husband. And she just didn't fuck some, some rinsy cracker. She just fucked Billy Bob Thornton. That's Hilly, Hill Billy from the get-go. Oh, you see what I'm saying? So obviously her acting ability was not that great to go to get Academy Award with. You see what I'm saying? Well, she, but, but I'm just still saying, you know, whatever, the, you know, uh, you know, still yet. They know one drop of black blood. You see what I'm saying? But the point here is, it wasn't enough, so she get the Academy Award for fucking Billy Bob Thornton. And this is the way this shit goes around. So it's happy time for us anyway, because we're talking about one of the most racist institutions. My man got... What's, what's the name got Academy Award Sidney Poitier for Lilies of the Field? That was 1964. They didn't have another Academy Award winner until 1982. With Lewis, uh, Lewis Gossip did the shit with Soldier, what's that, Officer and a Gentleman. You see what I'm saying? So my point here is we're talking about a racist institution because it is the Academy of the institution to give you a step and fetch it and give you all those derogatory figures. So this is the people who sanction that bullshit. So obviously it's, it's going to be racist. But the key here is there's another side. But then again, on the other hand, now let's look at the flip side of this shit. Number one, they was forced to do it because they had to give black people something in the first place because it's always a ritual. Everything is a ritual from the Super Bowl, you see what I'm saying, to the Academy Awards, to the fucking Final Four. Always a goddamn ritual. You see what I'm saying? The key here is, although it's a ritual, that Mayotian thing had to stand. They had to put the two black man and black woman together. So on one aspect, they're doing an element that somehow is appeasing to the whole metaphysical and spiritual world. But then again, remember now, they're trying to be extended in ruling. And their rule is always rule over the indigenous people through propaganda. You understand what I'm saying? So the mindset is that the white boy is synonymous to technology. 
So therefore, the black people, the, the contrast of that has always got to be the person in the degradation aspect of life. Now, that's one aspect. Now, here's the other metaphysical aspect that went down. Number one, number one, and this is what the sister of Eva put forth, that the spirit channeled to her. She said, wait a minute. She said, it just came to me that in actuality, wasn't it Holly Berry that did the Dorothy Dandridge story about two, three years ago in 1997-98? And then all of a sudden they said that she comes back on and she wins the Academy Award. And they said that was damn Dorothy Dandridge up there picking up her Academy Award from fucking 1954. You see what I'm saying? So in one way and all, Dorothy Dandridge came back there and picked up her Academy Award. And that's the way the energy goes. It's the same way when they still... Dims a lot of the whole hurricane thing with the, with, the, with the boxing movie. He comes back and picked that up, and that was shit for that motherfucker that spent all that time in jail. So this is the way these things happen. And I said, you know, that's a good idea. When, she, when the Viva said that, that this is the way it came, I said, man, you know, that shit is profound. That is, that is profound. Now, uh, 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 and there was two reactions. I think it was Sister Kimberly. Somebody else was saying, was that you? I, when I asked, I said, um about the doctor then they said, damn, I'm getting chills up my spine with this shit. There was another sister, both of them had the same reaction. I said, oh, okay, this is the way this thing goes down and all. So on one hand, there is one realm that is moving concurrent to the realm that they're orchestrating the bullshit on. There's another realm. Remember that now. The one realm is that everything that you see that's going on is fucked up. The white man's hand is forced. It might be forced in his own propaganda, but his hand is forced never yet, nevertheless. And what I'm trying to say here, there's another realm running things. You see? There's another realm running things, and this is the way this stuff is going on. But that realm is forced to come in anyway. It talks about it in the book of Exodus, uh, Exodus the, ex, the book on ecstasy by Robert A. Johnson. If you shut down one realm, it just doubles back and comes back on another way. It still comes to, it's in this book, Return of the Goddess, by Edward C. Whitmount. And in this book, I don't know if it's still in print, they said if you suppress some energy, this makes the energy strong. And that energy is going to come back in so many ways. It's about like, um, uh, I, got a, I had a, 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 a friend we grew up with. Was, uh, my mother had a good friend, uh, and we grew up, my mother had a good friend that, that was her, her generation, and she grew up with them, went to high school and went with them. And then they, uh, their children was, uh, came up with me and my, my two brothers. And I remember this good. This guy, he was obsessed with his daughters. You know how it is. They had to come in from school every day at 3 o'clock like prisoners. You see what I'm saying? He didn't want nobody to get to them. And so when the first girl went off to college, she was giving our pussy out for draw, both draw legs, boy. <laughs> She set up shop. As a matter of fact, by the time I, she, she was, she was about, about four years ahead of my, my, my brother that's a year older than me. By the time he got to college and shit, motherfuckers, oh, you from Mullins. She was a damn legend. She was a goddamn legend. Say, you know, so and so man said, man, she turned this motherfucker out. You see, so my point here is, you know, <laughs> she, say, she turned this shit out. But my point here is, and every last one of his daughters went that way. That's because he tried to shut down a certain energy. You see, one girl, man, he, on prom night, man, he rolled up to the damn hotel, and the whole school saw her ass out to get in the damn car. You know what I'm saying? He rolled up to the damn hotel and stuff, and it was a party going on in the hotel. He rolled up that shit any damn way. She wasn't even in the room with nobody. But every last one of the daughters went that way, and the sons went uh, other ways by way of just, just being all fucked up. That's because they, she, she put forth... Uh, he put forth a certain amount of, of, of energy to try to contain that. I got another good friend. Mother's very hard on him. And I noticed this about people. Most of the ones where the mothers were basically excruciating, two things happen. Number one, they either excel above that and end up in, in, uh, above that particular ass and then become extraordinary, or either they become that thing that the mother hated. That whole thing about, you know, my worst fears have become upon me in that whole nine yards. And I know this brother, man, his mother, man, was, oh, man, it was ridiculous the way she used to treat him. And so he just started doing things out of spite. You see what I'm saying? I'm doing things out of spite. Now, that nigga been on crack for years now. And so this is the way these particular things happen. And so on, happen. But on one hand, what we're talking about here, in an age of science, in an age of complete dominance 
of the European and this military machine and everything he does to kill people, why is he still trying to keep on top of the basic things like sex and even going on down to the shit with music? Very key, because that is Bacchanalian in its form where you get the god Dionysus, but you get an earlier form of the god Pan, and Pan has a flute. Dionysus in, in some mythology has a flute. That flute represents a futuristic sound, a Pied Piper, to call certain people from one dormant stage to wake up. And that's why they, 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 they focused on this around 1990. Now, now to recap, we talked about in the Hermetic text how one thing, there's some prophecy that went down, several prophecies that did go down, but one of the prophecies that went down occurred in the late 80s and the early 90s. Just as the Hermetic text said, there will be a group of Egyptians that will rise up in the new world. Well, how did that come about? Those group of Egyptians that were black people got back into Kemet. You know, we always had these resurgence of um, African history. They had, it in the, in, in the, in the, they had it in the 1930s. They even had it some in the aspect of the late 20s. They had it in the 60s. But for the first time, we reached back into classical antiquity. That was a prophecy coming out of the hermetic aspect of a group of Egyptians. And so as far as the European was concerned, they say these people are back now. So therefore, they had to focus on one of the main things that one of the main things that we orchestrated in the 20th century was we were the head of the sound on the planet. As far as music, we led that shit. Because all music, and even, even down the country music, is nothing but the white man rendition of the same old gospel shit and the same old blues. So all aspects, we ran that. You see what I'm saying? So on one aspect, we didn't have to be dominant in the military like night, uh, might, but we were dominant in the realm of the sound, which in the prophecy, that will be the thing that will replace this realm. Now, follow me on this science here. Follow me on this. We'll deal with this right now. We'll deal with this right now, because this is, and then, and then, you know, before the music pump up, and then we'll deal with other things, but we need to deal with this right now. The last time I was here, I told you that uh, I, um, in 2000 and 2001, February, no, it was early January, I woke up and I had this humming in my ear. And it was a form of sonic hearing, but it was being developed. It was this humming. And a couple of other people said, I got this humming sound in their ear. Brother from Augusta said he got this humming sound. It was coming, going on. And then what happened was, in February, at the beginning of February, my ear got stopped up. And I thought it because I bounced around on these airplanes and stuff. And as a matter of fact, it got stopped up. It, it, it became its worst when I went down to Tallahassee. In, it, was, it was February when I went to FAMU and there's so two brothers in the audience now. When I went down there in the hotel room, my whole ear got stopped up real bad. And remember, was you driving me around? Somebody was driving me around and was getting earache shit, remember? Had to go to the store and all. So it got stopped up and then about a week later it subsided. But when the society, what happened was I, I started having just regular hearing for the rest of the year. And it wasn't until I got with the, with the nurses, uh, Stella and Belinda, and the sister Stella does ear candling, and she candled out my ear. And when she candled my ear out, she said, well, we had a brother that was deaf, and it took five candles to candle out his ear. Well, Shell, she did five on mine the first damn night. And then I could hear again, but immediately, about a week later, she had to come and do about three more. And over the course of two weeks, she had to count on my ear out 13 times. So apparently what was happening was I had an attack on my ear. And we'll go, go into this particular, the, the, the orchestrators of this attack. But they didn't really do much to me over the course of the year. I was like, damn, and I kept saying to myself, well, man, if we're getting closer and closer, we're in this black hole, the buildings fell at 9-11. We got so much shit going on. Why am I not hearing from these particular entities that is trying to stop this thing from coming on? But what I didn't realize was that they had already, the damage was already done. They did the most important thing. They walled up, they blocked up the wall or they walled up the passageway 
to another dimension. Now, soon as she came out my ear, I realized that I had had sonic hearing that had already developed over the course of the year, but I didn't know. Now, now, now hear me on this. She said that she cleaned out a brother's ear that was deaf in that ear. He was deaf in that ear, and it took five candles. It took 13 to clear out mine. But I was never deaf in the ear. I was hearing regular. It just had an annoying stoppage type feeling, like it being stopped up. But I, I, I could hear out the ear. Now, it took 13 to, to, to wall a candle out my, the candle out one of my ears, and I could hear out the ear. But immediately, the only reason why I could hear out the ear is because, let's say if they would have stopped it up and it was regular hearing, I would have been deaf in the ear. But because it was sonic hearing, and they stopped it up real severe, it only came down to be um, an annoying, like a heavy feeling in the ear, but I could still hear out the ear. I, uh, obviously, I couldn't hear. It was out of the right ear, but I couldn't hear out the right ear as good as I could hear out the left ear. But the key here is, when she unstopped the ear, I could hear my motherfucking heartbeat, and I could hear shit down to my feet. And some night I could hear shit going on in my whole body. And I said, now, wait a minute. I said, oh, then I have this sonic hearing. I said, okay, let me see here. First thing I did is I went and hit my library, trying to find any kind of metaphysical shit I could find on the end, couldn't find nothing. And I said, wait a minute now, this scenario is common. I said, this happened in, this happened in the whole metaphysical thing where you get all these metaphysical books and the whole key is based on the third eye, but they never really talk about the pineal gland. You see what I'm saying? And all these metaphysical books, but yet we get the earlier books for Hilton Hotema. His whole thing is, is on the pineal gland. All of his particular books, Hilton Hotema's book, Hotema's book, The Secrets of Regeneration, um, The Magic Wand, uh, what was the name of the other books? Um, Sons of Perfection. He has tons of these particular books. It comes out of re health research that they're now reprinting, uh, which in actuality now you can get through the Ark of Sophis. You can, if you want to get that book, search, just get the uh, newsletter and contact Deborah and them because they got access to that whole, that whole particular aspect. Um, because her husband is, uh, uh, is, is the computer man for New Leaf Books. So key here is um, I couldn't find nothing. I said, wait a minute, something is going on here. I, something is going on here. I said, now, one, uh, wait a minute, I heard this scenario before with Richard King when he said that he was in the classroom and the guy was talking about the the guy was talking about um, uh, how the pineal gland has no significance, but yet they, uh, yet they, um, he he walked across the, the campus to the guys um, in the library, and the guy had a whole section on the uh, the significance of the pineal gland and papers and stuff like that. And all. okay, so I, I, I okay, I said okay, I understand that. I said well. In that case, fuck it, let's go to Richard King. Because I had that one little thing in Crawley book where Crawley said that the ear, the Horace lock, is not indicating the lock of hell, but indicating something in the ear, which is the Bararandra Bar chakra, or something like that, which is the highest level of Akasha spirit. Then you get the word Akasha. Um, uh, Akasha. Anybody see? Because you know um, your, your girl in her book, um, Anne Rice, she said that she got the word Akasha from a book called The Lost Cities of Africa. The Lost Cities of Africa. Um, I was able to look at, I was able to see this book um, last week, and this shit is tight. This is one of these books that got past us. There's several, it's, it's the Lost Cities of, Lost City of Africa. And this book that she got a lot of her research, it's a tight ass book. And so she said that that's where she came up with the name Akasha from. But we know Akasha means Black substance, it also means spirit, Akashic records. And, um, and so he says that the, that, that, that the Bararandra Bara chakra is the highest level of Akasha spirit in the ear. He said that the Horus aspect was, had something to do with the ear. So the Horus lock is an indirect direct relationship with the eye of Heru. Now, I went through all the books. Couldn't find nothing in a whole library of metaphysical books. But I often know, because see, what I do, I got this photographic memory. Whereas if I see something, I can see it six years, I'll always remember the book. So 
I, I said, damn, all, all them books I looked, I never saw that much on the ear. And I went through the whole library, couldn't find them. So I said, well, fuck it, let's go to Richard King. And I said, I went to Richard King, and on page 34 or something, on the inner ear nucleus, it says the inner ear nucleus is the doorway to the temple. The inner ear nucleus is the doorway to the temple. And so the brother R.J. said, well, damn, Bobby, them motherfuckers didn't attack you because they had already fucked with your pineal gland by blocking up your ear. They figured, they figured hey, the damage has already been done until this sham shit is broken down, he ain't gonna get no fucking well. Now this is interesting. He said that the inner ear nucleus is the doorway to the temple. That's the doorway. He also goes and says that the inner ear nucleus in his book, African Arts is a Biological Psychiatry, develops the eyesight. Remember them white people can't hear sounds and they can't see. You see what I'm saying? Remember I told you I had that experiment where, where, where um, um, my brother needed some in, um, insurance one time, so he went and got, he went and got, um, he went and got my license with his goddamn face on it. You see, with his damn face on it. So, uh, so after he got it and stuff and got it, he said, here man, here goes, here goes some license, man. Go and change them over and get your, get your, get your face on this here and go change them over to Georgia license. Ah, oh, man, I fucked around and I ain't had no goddamn car. I said, fuck it. I, I didn't change no, I was going on the damn plane, and, and I, now anybody see my brother, and this nigga is a, is a mass vegetarian, almost to the point that it's almost pathological, you know what I'm saying, this motherfucker don't eat nothing but like, some Tom forms of, I don't know what that nigga, he, he, him and his wife, and ironic, this motherfucker used to lick ketchup off the goddamn ground, eat the fuck out of some, all types of sausages and shit, <laughs> this motherfucker, the ultimate vegetarian now, but he is extremely thin, compared to me. And when he gave me the picture, yeah, it looked about like me in 95. I wasn't, because I was still a vegetarian and it still looked about like me in 95. But shit, I, I rolled with this shit until August of damn 19, or, or 2000. And I've been heavy for a damn minute. And I go up and I flash that shit to white folks. This motherfucker with a skinny face looked like a goddamn, um, a, a great hound. And the motherfucker, I flash it and they go, okay, go on, Mr. Hennett, yes, you know, Flash that, you know, you got to have ID to get on the plane. I flash that shit to them and all, they go, okay. And every time I flash with the black people, they go, come on, man, now, you know goddamn well this ain't you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's me, man. I said, man, I had a damn stomach virus about five years ago. Because it had 1995 when he gave me. And I said, man, I got, shoot, man, I got, I got, I got real sick, man. We were like, this ain't you. <laughs> and every time I would put it with a black motherfucker, they'd be like, this ain't you, man. This nigga damn near a model compared to you. And all as far as the weight, it's like, God damn. And then when I convinced them, they were, well, God damn, what kind of diet you done been on? And it was interesting, white people, they look at it and they let me go, because they can't see. But it was interesting because I showed it to a Hispanic girl, and she goes, that's not you. <laughs> I'm like, damn, this motherfucker here can see this shit. So I know that there's a direct, uh, they can't hear and they can't see. You see what I'm saying? Now, which leads me to understand that the inner ear nucleus is the key. Okay, how do we know? Well, let's look at this. We have the pineal gland that's inside of the center of the brain. We know that these two eyes here does not register for the pineal gland. These two eyes make the matrix happen. These two eyes are, con are directly connected to the brain. And it tells the brain that all this shit here exists. Okay? It's the correct, because we know that these two eyes are a cheat. But we understand that these two eyes can see symbols and colors that can connect to the pineal gland. But ultimately, these two eyes are basically for the matrix. That gives angles of light to make us think that this shit is the way it is. Okay? Now, the pineal gland is up under there, but the only thing that we have connection to the pineal gland is two aspects, two holes. Well, you might as well say the nose, because yeah, because your nose, you could they go up in there and they can get, they can go through the pineal gland, and get through through the nostrils. We know the mouth, but another part here is we got these two holes in the ear, which is the closest to the pineal gland than the nostrils and the mouth, these two holes in the, in the ear, which is key, which is key, and this is probably 
the greater mystery to what's been going on. Now, apparently you got your boy Sun Ra, as well as Jimi Hendrix, which is a great enigma, because the more and more we deal with Jimi Hendrix, the more and more we find out more and more about him. Number one, we understand that he was into the mystical aspect. There's a guy that wrote the book, Jimi Hendrix, Star Child, deal with all that. How he used to meditate, how he talked about Atlantis. He even uh, said his own death in one of them things about how an uh, uh, Indian boy was rising up or something, and some people came in, they sleep, and killed him in his sleep. That's in, what's the name of that song? Anybody know that, the one? Uh, that's in uh, Watchtower. Watchtower. Uh-oh, now we're really getting somewhere. Now stick with that Watchtower thing, because that's the Enochian thing also. In the Watchtower, because that's the, your, your Enochian system is built up what they call the Watchtowers. And those are supposed to be the guards of the gateways. And we're going to break some of that down, too, because we even found out what are the names of those particular Watchtowers also, and entities that set over that now. In there, he talks about how the, uh, somebody comes in and kills this particular prophet or something in the sleep, this divine child. Well, that's how he got killed. Because remember, in the, if you get the compilation, CD compilation from MCA, put this thing out in 1993. The best of, was it volume one and two, or just one? The ultimate experience is the name of it. And in there, the, if, in, in so many words, if you read the little booklet, they say that he was getting ready to go back to America. He had a headache or whatever. He needed to get to sleep. He was going to go on to bed, but the white girl convinced him to take the sleeping pills. And she said she got up in the middle of the night and walked in the room and said, and found out he had vomit and go, okay, he vomit, and she went on back to bed. In so many words, they had this damn white girl to come up in there and she was the agent to take his ass out. But he had... It was even in the book Star Child and all, and then there was other things. He said that my music put people in altered states of consciousness. You see what I'm saying? And then come to find out recently that what he was trying to do was that Jimi Hendrix had gotten to the point where Jimi Hendrix had um, uh, gotten with some brothers and some, uh, some other white boys, and they was going to form their own studio, their own studio outside of the white man shit. You see, it's very key with this thing here. You can do all the music you want, but your music got to go to them white boys and get mastered. It's called the mastering. You see them master. So they'll say, here's Motown. Then they'll say, master that capital. Master that CBS. You see what I'm saying? So you can do all the shit you want. The mastering, that's the sound engineers. It has to go to the white boys and be mastered. Otherwise, your shit don't get put out. And remember I said it was in Baltimore, Maryland, and with some group of brothers that was, that was dealing with the rap. Um, this was in 97. They was dealing with the raps, and they was, they was, they was in there putting down their beats. They had already gotten a goddamn contract with a major uh, record label. And I can't think of the brother's name right now. They had, already got, they, were, they had already signed the contract with a major label, and they was in recording. So this was a little bit different than some niggas out here with some piece of paper and shit doing some things like this. They had already signed the contract. So they was in the, in the midst of putting the stuff together. And they said when they we was in the studio, they had a guy, an armed guard, standing down uh, with a fucking, fucking machine gun. It was a little like an Uzi. A, a, a security guard with an Uzi standing in front of this door. And he said, what the fuck is that guy down there with that damn gun down there at the door with that Uzi? And they said, oh, that's the place where they go and they put that shit on the record after y'all leave. So no matter what you all do, by the time they get the master... When they get to the master, that shit gonna come out the way they want it to come out. So Jimi Hendrix had already formed a line with a group of white boys and some black guys, and they was getting ready to do their own mastering shit. Very key. They said that they did the same thing. They got after both him and Sun Ra with the frequencies and stuff. This is very key. The mastering is the key to this thing. All right. That leads us to this. That leads us to this. And that is that, um, like I said, no matter what you do, if you can record all you want, the mastering has to be done to the, with the white boys. Now, we've been talking about this thing. We've been going through this whole music thing the last couple of months. And uh, uh, the last couple of months, and so to recap, I was telling the people, 
back in 95 and 96, I was telling them about the LP and how they had to stop the, the LP in America. But there was a brother that worked at Wax and Facts Records. He used to have bold, the motherfucking representative of bold speakers. He was a DJ, and he was in one of the record clubs, and he was a, a DJ, and what it is is they were looking for the certain DJs to come out and represent them on the disco circuit or on the so-called, uh, the, as a matter of fact, this particular guy, he, what made him stand out among, um, uh, amongst all the other DJs, he was a DJ not only in the clubs, but he was a DJ also at one of the skating rinks. So as far as they was concerned um, uh, with the skating ring is that um, he could reach a wider audience of what Bowles wanted. You see what I'm saying? And so as they came out to his house, and they were setting up all their shit and all these speakers and stuff, because they wanted him to be a representative. And so he was in there with all his equipment, and the guy was throwing on the CDs, and the guy was like, God damn, what kind of speakers you got, man? Your shit sound better than my Bowles. He was like, no, man, it ain't the damn, it ain't the damn speakers. He said, it's not the speaker. He said, you're running a goddamn CD, and I'm running motherfucking albums. And the, he was fucking the bold speaker man up. And the guy man said, I can't believe this shit. And the man stopped playing stuff, and he thought, he said, well, he said, well, get out some of your CDs, the same ones I'm on my master album. And he said, his bold speakers couldn't even touch his regular speakers. He had some high power shit, but with the fucking LPs. You see, with the LPs. And he was saying, man, this is one we brought blinded by sound. I said, I know, man, because at that time, during the early 90s, I was having him get shit imported because they didn't ever stop the albums over in Europe. Never stopped the LPs in Europe. Every now and then you will get a, a it's the people that, that, that's, that's in the LPs every now and then, I'll see an LP that never came out over here. The LP would have made it across the water and it was in Europe. And, 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 and I got several things that I wanted to get on LP in the early 90s. I had to wait about 10 years later, damn near, to find it on wax when somebody brought it from overseas. I said, okay, then. I said, so, they just, he said, no, they got CDs over there, but they got the LPs. They stopped the shit in America. You see what I'm saying? And then they limited it, and so and, and I was talking to a, a white boy that worked out at Book Nook. He said, um, I had a whole Miles Davis collection a Miles Davis collection. He said, so when the CDs came out, everybody, based on space, went and traded in their LPs. He said, so he, by he, and he works at the place who sell used LPs. So he said, I brought all my used LPs, my, my Miles Davis collection, in the store, and I, because I, I had gotten two box sets of the same stuff that I had on my, what's called, I found in two different box sets of Miles Davis. And he said, he was playing this shit on the scene, and he said, something ain't right. He said, because he had been listening to Miles since he was a teenager. And he was something like late 40s then. This was like in 97. He said, he'd been listening to Miles Davis since he was a teenager. He was like, wait a minute, something ain't right here. And then he said, he even looked on the box, and in the box set, they said, they have been, they, there's some things they print in the box sets they don't print in just the regular LP. And then he had these specialized box sets, some import stuff, and it says, we have taken out several octaves that was on the LPs. Now, follow me here on this one. Um, there was a group from uh, LaFace Records called Highland Place Monsters. But I don't remember, they was on the LaFace Records that came out in the early 90s. And they had this song called Let's Get Naked that I used to love, and I only had it on CD. About four or five years later, I found the LP. I found an LP on it. When I went to play it, it was, it was pressed real low. It was pressed real low to the sound. It was pressed to the point where, as it didn't sound like the other records that I had, it was pressed to sound like a doggone CD. Because they got all that kind of technology. All right, now we're just trying to give you the stage on what's going on. There was a bunch of Luther Al uh, Vandross albums. I got a stack of Luther Vandross albums um, uh, 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 a couple of months ago. He did all that stuff in the 1980s. And then in 1990, he won a Grammy Award. He only won a Grammy Award off the one, The Power of Love, in 1991. And it was like, damn, Luther was in top shit in the black community for years and never got no Grammy. He go to 1991, and he wins this Grammy Award for The Power of Love. The album is smoking, but the thing about it is, it's pressed real low. I got to turn the stereo way up. 
even on the LPs of the new stuff. Okay, I said, okay, that's another aspect. And I got several things that was pressed in the 90s. You got to turn up and stuff because they pressed them to sound like the actual CDs. So they took these things out. And remember I said a couple of years ago that you got a diamond needle, which is carbon. Then you got the black vinyl, but anything, anything like plastic, rubber, and anything like that, whenever you see the dark form, they have to cook that metal, they have to cook that plastic or the rubber down to like the rubber tires on your car. That rubber is white and they cook it down to the carbonical level to give you the black tires. Well, they do the same thing with the vinyl, but when they cook it down to the carbon level and then when they press it, because in order to press this thing, you got to dig into the grooves of this vinyl, you are literally getting melanin on melanin. And they had understood that black people in the damn 1970s and even in the 1980s out there, they was putting all kind of shit on us. You see what I'm saying? Remember, my, I remember back in the, um, my grandfather got roots put on him, but he so-called had muscular dystrophy. And my mom go, oh, Raymond got one of them white men. Uh, in, in our time, Raymond got one of them white man disease. Certain things that white people had, black people didn't come down with. They said, damn, this is like 1968, 1969, 1969. The people go, he, because he died in 71, so it was like 1969. Everybody was saying, my grandfather Raymond, they said, he got one of them white man disease. Now, only reason why he caught that shit, because he got some root work put on him. You see what I'm saying? And apparently he was working on some woman, he was a master carpenter. He was working on some woman's house, and the guy came home and thought that uh, my grandfather was going with his wife and put the root work on it and he ended up dying from the stuff. And it was, that was like, and he died in, in the spring of 71. And then like in 1976, my mother, she ain't, she motherfucker ain't had but damn near two boyfriends since I knew, since, I, since I've been living, since my fucking father. And one was this brother named Ben. How I know because goddamn she ain't never had but two motherfuckers I know of. So Ben bro took her out to the house, took her out to go see one of the friends. He took her to the goddamn root man house. And he, she go, he go, you miss him, and you that school teacher. I know all about you. This is all the time. He said, I know all about you, about your family. And she was like, God damn. This root, this motherfucker root, man, with all these snakes and lizards all up in this place, know all about me. He was like, I know about your, your, your father. And he told my mother about her own father, how he was root work. How he was root work. Now, I don't know how the hell I got on this kind of particular subject, but <laughs> I'm going to find my way back. <laughs> how I get to this goddamn Miss Rudolph shit. But, when they root worked him, that was the only reason how he caught this muscular dystrophy. There was a lot of disease that was white folks disease that we didn't start catching until the late 80s or actually the damn 90s. All right? So now, dealing with this, they understood that the black people was curing themselves on the weekend through that fucking vinyl and the party. And the party. You see what I'm saying? The party was always good. The party was always good. Certain drugs was good. Don't let no motherfucker, the white man don't give you hash since 1975. He don't give you motherfucking that damn cess and all that shit they used to have. We ain't talking about this shit, no cracking shit, because we know they manufacture that shit to fuck us up, and they put melanin up in there. But there was certain shit that all indigenous cultures had their own peyote or their own fucking peace pipe. And, shit. and that's what this stuff was about, based on whatever the herb or whatever that shit is. You see what I'm saying? Oh, the key here is, the niggas was dealing with all that particular different stuff in the 70s, and they was curing themselves. You see what I'm saying? And Negroes wasn't dying with half the bullshit. Even if they was going to fake this thing with AIDS and all this other crazy stuff, they had to put some shit on lockdown. Okay? So, that... LT, I was saying, all of that particular stuff was healing people. And they studied it and all, and they understood the science of this particular music and all. They said, we got to stop this shit. And that's why they had to go to fucking hologram, laser. The laser is the same shit that makes the matrix. This is not that these eyes are cheap. They give you certain angles of light to make you think this shit is real. But it's only a hologram. Michael Talbot's book, The Whole Holographic Universe. Michael Talbot's book, The Holographic Universe. But so they had to take that and they had to make a holographic music. So for America, they had to cut out the damn LPs. 
And then they found out recently that a motherfucking cassette, that brown cassette, had some of the same aspects, especially if you record it off the damn LPs. So they cut that shit out. All right. So we went through this whole thing based on the LP and based on Healy. And this is the new thing. You could override the CD if you got you a basic, um, if you got you a basic graphic equalizer. You could even override the fucking CD and tap back into the shit. Now the, what they did is, is they told they, they they got the black man and the, or the black teenager or the black a uh, uh, black man riding around in all that bass and all that subwoofers and all that shit in the car. But see, that stuff there is closed in. What it does, that makes you deaf. As well as the fucking headphones. See, it's a difference. They know there's certain things that you put in there, that makes you deaf. deaf. Cause I just started having a goddamn problem with my head until I got under them damn headphones. Well, we know all that, but I'm just saying, I'm talking about the music right now. So they know that the woofers and all that shit in the car, that makes you deaf. Okay. But we're talking about the certain sounds and shit. They didn't have all that shit and all. Niggas was healing they stuff all fucking eight tracks. But let alone them fucking LPs and them fucking 45s. That was a black disc. That was a form of the eye of Heru. Carbon, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons, which is the basis of melanin. So they had to cut out that black disc during the time of 1990 because we had already, we were well into the Afrocentric movement at that time and all the consciousness was coming through the music. So they had to cut out the particular LP. We talked about this before. Now it comes to the latest findings on what some shit that went down with me just a week ago. So I've been dealing with this, this music thing for a while. Last Friday, we up in the damn house and something happened and the brother our day, uh, something happened and um, I guess the energy got to a certain level and the damn system just conked the fuck out. You know. But then, so let me, let me, let me backtrack now, because I think part of this was my fucking fault. So let me backtrack. Because things happen for a reason. Okay. I did the lecture here. I did one in December, talked about the music. I did another lecture here, talked about the music. I went to Charlotte the next week, and for some reason I became obsessed. I was already running... Uh, ten speakers in my damn house. Right in my watch. I got ten speakers. I started out with four. Then this shit just started getting built, and I became obsessed, obsessed with this thing. And it's some high water shit, equalized and all this. So I became more obsessed with the thing, and I went up to fucking twelve speakers. And I was obsessed with this sound. I didn't know what it was. The spirit say, "You're gonna try to, you're gonna try to, you're gonna try to break your way through the underworld." Because immediately after my ear got unplugged, I became obsessed with the fucking sound. So I became obsessed until I kind of fucked up the other week when I found me two other systems, two other speakers at some pawn shop for like $20 for two, two big ass speakers for $20 together. So I plugged in 14 damn speakers. And it was on that that first night we plugged it up. But I remember the first time when I went up to, I went up to, I went up to, Let's see, when I went up to 11, oh uh, no, I went up to, yeah, it was 10. When I first went up to 10, Brother Ade and the sister Stella, they was all up in the room, and I went up to 10, and they said, damn, we can feel this shit in our fucking heart chakra. It's hitting all the damn chakras. And all that. I blast that shit, and that's amazing when I'm dealing with the sound, because I have this shit blasting 3, 4 in the morning. The neighbors, I'm supposed to be getting a knock on the door from the police. But what happened here is, I got them spirit, them Apollo spirits in the, in the house, and that shit just cushions the outside of the house and nobody can't hear it. Now, I know that they got to hear it because when I first got this other system that I got, and I'm going to go into this stuff because this is very key. When I first got this other system, the first day I got it and shit wasn't, and I was just trying to figure out some stuff, my brother pulled up. He said, God damn, man, he's, I can hear this shit down the block. And this was like in December. And but but we started having these parties on through the night. We sometimes these parties last until the fucking next morning. And yet the neighbors couldn't hear the shit. And I had the shit blasting loud. But I said, oh, and the spirit said, don't worry, we got that shit. They can't even hear. And I walked outside the house one night and couldn't hear some shit. I turned that shit up loud. Okay, I fucked up and got the 14 speakers, and I think I must have burned out something. You see, I must have burned out something. But I don't know. We were drinking out of elixir at that time and all. 
We were drinking out of licks at that time. And shit got real what's called and what's the name puffed on that goddamn weed for a minute. <laughs> and something happened, we had some type of some kind of brain, something, something happened where we thought about something at the same time and the goddamn system conked out. Nevertheless, that was last Friday, not this Friday, but the Friday before, well, I guess that we Friday before last, anyway, so. Went, um, so I, I said, I said, damn, I said, my shit is fucked up now. I said, damn, I ain't got no bias. I said, damn, you know, um, poor motherfucker like me, I ain't really got nothing now. I, I said, I used to study all these books and shit. I said, but damn, I done synthesized that. I said, the only thing I got is my damn sound. So then comes the help from Dorothy from Kansas. This is Dorothy from Kansas right here. I <laughs> Dorothy from Kansas and all, I told her, I said, man, my shit is fucked, man. My damn shit can't die. She said, well, I know that's got to be serious stuff there. I said, yeah, I take that. That's top priority. That's more than rent. I said, black man got to have his priorities right now. His sounds and shit. You know, on, on the movie um, Jackie Brown, when damn uh, uh, your boy uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson told uh, Robert Neary, don't be fucking with my levels. And like your boy on a, um, like Chris, uh, what's your, Chris Tucker told my man on, um, oh, what's that on, um, uh, don't be, you know you don't be fucking with a black man radio? You crazy? <laughs> now remember Joy Sabir, the brother Joy Sabir, black man guy to making money, said when he went, traveled all over the country, and he went to, he said he went to the poorest part of any motherfucker in the ghetto. He said the motherfucker be poor as shit on welfare. He said, but you go in the house, they got a nice system. He said from the upper mobile, to the poets, they goddamn levels is straight. He said, man, a motherfucker, he go to a damn rich motherfucking black man house, he got a nice system. He said, he go straight across town to the goddamn, you know what they say, the price of living is going up and the chance of living is going down. And go to the other side of the hood, he said, but the motherfucker got that goddamn sound. You see. So I had to get my puppet priority straight. So Dorothy from Kansas wired me some money. So, Went to go hook up some stuff. Now, this is interesting. Because first thing, I hit the Cash America. You see, Cash America, they're popping up all over the damn place. You know what I'm saying? To go get some good shit. So went there and all, and see, there was a lot of stuff on. So the brother, I said, how many watts is this, man? I said, because I need some heavy, I need some hard shit. I can't be fucking around with that little shit. I said, my other thing was a, a little over two and stuff, and it carried me until I fucked up with them 14 speakers. So I said, I need some wattage. And this brother, he couldn't tell me nothing. You know, it's a pawn shop. You know, shit. He, you know, you know, and um, he said, well, the best thing I tell you, go call Circuit City. Went outside, the damn phone was ripped. It, this was on the, the low, over by Candler Road. Went outside, the damn pay phone was ripped out the goddamn wall. First of all, it was fucked up. I said, man, I'm trying to buy this shit. I got money in my pocket. You should at least let me use the phone. I said, well, oh, it's the black neighborhood. I already know how the bullshit go. Went outside, and the pay phone was ripped out the damn wall. You know. Damn, I went back inside, I mentioned it, the pay phone was lit out the wall, and the nigga looked at me like I was crazy. Oh my God, I'm trying to buy this shit here. So the brother Monsil said, hey, uh, hell, Second City's right there at Greenbrier Mall. Let's just go around the city. You got about an hour. We can come back here. Because they had, what that shit is called, uh, um, that, that system. The, uh, no, a con what's the name of that thing? Um, a Harmon what? Harmon Carton. A Harmon Carton. That's the top shit from Korea. Now they had one of them up in Cash America. So I said, no, this is the shit right there. I just got to know what, what, what wattage it is. So I went round to Greenbrier, Circuit City. The home of Carden was goddamn $700. I said, that's the motherfucker I'm going to get. But the guy said, wait a minute. He said, no, the components was put together. He said, but wait a minute. I got a Sony up in this shit that's 700 He said, you need wattage. I said, I need wattage. I said, my other shit gave me the sound. I said, I need some shit that my shit don't blow up. I would rather the speakers blow up. But I could replace the speakers. He said, you need, he said, I got a brand new Sony up in here. That's 700 watts. I said, that's the shit I want. He said, well, you know, hook the phono into the auxiliary. I told him, I said, man, I'm running a phonograph. I'm running a fucking turntable. He said, hook it up into the auxiliary. 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 I got home, hooked it up. Phonograph wouldn't work, but I said, oh, I said, I've been dealing with these systems. That phonograph don't work, but only in a phono hole. Auxiliary don't run. It might run a CD and all that shit, but it don't run the phonograph. So I took it back. He said, I got a one that's a, uh, uh, I got a one that's twenty dollars more. It's got the phonograph on it. I said, man, I'm in the house. I'm in the fucking house. So I got that one. 
he, I said, will the shit hook up with an equalizer? He said, well, it's got a built-in equalizer, but yes, it will hook up with an equalizer. But I looked on the back and it didn't have tape two, which is your tape monitor, because your EQ got to hook in your tape two. So I got the shit home, started blasting it, it pushed all the speakers, but it didn't hook up the equalizer, which means you ain't got no range. Okay. I called him up, I said, man, this thing does not work. He said, well, hook it in the video or tape one, and it didn't work. Then he said, oh, he said, well, the shit got, he said, it's got 27 music variables, and 27 music variables, and um, I said, yeah, he said, well, maybe that, because it got a built-in equalizer, he said, your built-in equalizer is probably overriding your regular equalizer. And then I said, wait a minute, I got to bring this shit back, I said, because I see what's going on here. I said, well, because the built-in equalizer, that means they already got your shit set for you. That means you can't take your hand and push it to the level you want. I said, I see the shit that's going on. So I said, oh, all this is a nuisance. I had to take the shit back, get my money back. So I said, now I got to go back and I got to get some shit from 99 on back. Because none of the new stuff, all that stuff, none of it has an output for, 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 for phono. But remember I just told you now, you can override that shit with CD if you got your graphic equalizer. There is no way that they can stop the range even with CD. You can hook me into certain times if you got your EQ. Okay. So I go, and so uh, uh, to put a long story short, I go and find me this fucking Harmon Carden. And, um... Found one with the phone on all that shit. Got home, the damn shit didn't work. Went back, found another fucking Sony with high wattage with the with, 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 with the phono, with the phonograph, and the fucking tape too, the plug in the equalizer, and then I got it home and our shit start pumping. And when it gets, you know, cause you got your dial, and when the range got to like 10 o'clock on the dial, they got this little shit that shuts it off. Says protect. So at first I was thinking, well, maybe this thing is to shut it off to say protect. Because my other one used to do it too. I would just turn down the bass a little bit and keep on rolling. But then I figured it all out and I, and I was playing this shit. But every time, and I and it was pumping, I said, damn, this shit is getting it. And I turn it up, you get my range right, and it would cut off. And the spirit was like, oh man, damn, you done had two systems with this protect on it. You didn't realize. It wasn't that they was doing that so you didn't blow your system out so you thought. They was cutting the shit off because they didn't want your volume to get to a certain height. I said, God damn, this motherfucking cracker got this shit hooked up now. At first I thought it was supposed to protect the system, but I had remembered something. I, I got a system back in, 90, in 1989. It was about three years old when I got it, an Onkyo. And this, I ran this fucking system on high every damn day from fucking 89 to November 2001. And the shit finally blew. And it finally blew and stuff. I ran that shit nonstop. And I said, wait a minute now. This Sony is 200 and something, 220 watts. And, it's, and, I, and I push it up and the shit clicks off. I said, but yet I got a 100 watt amp here with the Onkyo. I used to take the shit and push it all the way to the damn end. And that shit would never do nothing. It would push whatever I had. I said, something ain't right here. Then I said, wait a minute, hold on. This shutoff valve that says protect is not because the system shuts down. This is more wattage than the one I had with the Onkyo. The shutoff valve was to make sure that the sound didn't get to a certain fucking level. Now follow me on this. In this Kenwood amp I had before, because this is all, it might not seem like nothing, but this is all very serious. The Kenwood amp that I had it would only shut off, and I would turn it down, and I was over one day, and, the, and, 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 and Sister Kennedy and, and, and her boyfriend was over, and, and the brother Sky said, it was clicking off, and I was thinking I had too many speakers. He said, well, your turntable is unbalanced. And then I balanced the turntable, and it's got that anti-skating on the back of the turntable on the knob, and I fixed that so I could wait. It's a weight light to make, to make sure your needle stays down so it don't jump. And the shit stopped clicking out on the Kenwood app. Now, the key is this here. I could turn that shit all the way to the end of the level on a CD. But on that turntable, anything was off because it's an actual recording, because a record has grooves in it. So you actually getting the recording and the needle in there. That shit was so powerful that it was shutting off the 220 watt system. Okay, that's one thing based on the LP. Now going back, the Sony in so many words, I come to find out that cutoff valve where it says protect, 
That's to make sure that your, your level, your volume don't go to a certain level. And when it gets to a certain frequency, which is going back to the inner ear nucleus, the shit cuts off. All right. Last but not least, I was listening to this damn shit, and I had my music on. I said, well, I'm going to have to go take this shit back, and maybe tomorrow I might find me something that I need. But I was listening to it, and I figured out one thing in this whole ordeal. My albums was coming out sounding like CDs. So apparently, these new systems that they got out here now, it don't matter whether you got an LP or anything. It is set, even with an equalizer, it is set. They got it already, the component set in it, to give you whatever sound they want you to have, no matter what you got. Now, what is this all going on? I finally went back, and a week later, I finally went back and found me some shit to do all of it. But I had to go, like, to a 99. I think it was, like, a 98. Like a 98, and it, you know, I think it was a 98 because it had some other awesome, and it had that Dolby Logic and all now. The Dolby Logic gives you surround sound, it gives you theater, it gives you hall, it gives you disco, it gives you all these things. But what it is is they done came in and designed a certain sound so that you can be fooled and say, oh man, this shit give you everything. And that's the sound that they designed for you to make sure that's to satisfy you. They give you all these goddamn options and a fucking remote control. And the Dolby Logic and all this shit that they give you, that's just some shit to satisfy you because you ain't getting pure sound. You be like, man, look what this shit does. It'll give you echo and shit. It'll give you hall, big theater, small theater, discotheque, jazz club, club. I'm like, damn. Sports, arena. I'm like, look, they give you all that awesome. That's some bullshit. You get stuck up in that and all because you ain't getting the real sound. They don't work with them little gimmicks and gadgets. That's all that digital shit is. Shit is set to fool you. But you ain't got the hands on stuff. Meanwhile, none of this shit runs, and most of that stuff don't run the equalizer. But even if it does run the equalizer, it's already set to cancel out certain octaves until you go 99 on back. Now, that's going back to say one thing. The inner ear nucleus is the doorway to the temple. Apparently, we probably haven't heard any real music in damn near 10 years. Although you heard the music, the music that reached to the inner ear, they got the shit all hooked up because I think Jewel Pukum was here, what, about two, three weeks ago, and said that, they, that all of the damn radio stations, they done cut down the frequency and the wattage on it. And so therefore the people are coming down with these diseases and shit because they're not getting healed. And they're not getting healed and stuff because the radio stations, they got the shit now below, probably, even though they say 100 fucking watts, that don't mean that. They say they got the shit on a low frequency. And the reason why they got on a low frequency because they know that you can get healed on that shit. You see what I'm saying? Because if you notice, sometimes the radio sound better than the shit in your house. You know what I'm saying? In a clothing vehicle or whatever. In, you know, and stuff. But the point I'm trying to make here is that she said that they, all the radio stations, they got a low wattage, especially all the black radio stations. And that leads to the question is, why the fuck you can be in Denver and get this V this and this V this, V103 here in D.C., V103 here. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, all of a sudden, these shits have done been co-opted like one fucking franchise. See what I'm saying? Why is it the same V this and V that stuff? So you go to D.C., they got this. You go to doggone Memphis, they got the same shit. You see what I'm saying? And those things are set. They say, don't go over a certain damn frequency. Don't go over a certain frequency. Because we're still going back to the whole healing properties of sound. So now one of the mysteries here is you got to go and get your graphic equalizer. And this is the first thing the guy said in, in, in Circuit City. He said, we used to sell a lot of these equalizers. He said, well, we don't sell that many now, man. Because he said, why do that? He said, the stuff is coming built in with equalizer. I said, yeah, but I can take my hand and push on the screen and push up whatever level I want with my fucking hand. Either they got a graphic thing you can do it where you can just touch it and it goes. Or they got the actual knobs you can pull up on the old ones. I said, either way. That shit that's set is already set, and you mashing a button, it's already fucking set to what they want you to deal with. You get where I'm coming from? So, recapping on this, the new systems don't have phono. And if they do have phono, they don't have take two, so you can plug in for your equalizer. And then, 
they, and some of them do, that, that, that do have the take two, they got a built-in equalizer that overrides the equalizer that you do have. So in so many words, they going back to this thing based on these systems. Although these systems sound great, it is the top technology. The sound that they're giving you is designed not to give you sound based on the inner ear nucleus. That's the key. It's, 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 it's the stuff that they say you can't get to this particular aspect. Now, what does this have to do with this dispensation of time? All right, this is the key. Why in Crawley's book, when he started dealing with Horace and Heru, and he talked about the Horace with the Heru's lock, and he said, this is the highest level of the spiritual aspect ascending upon the Akasha spirit, this Bara Randra chakra. He said it was the highest level. Now, try to understand what's going on here. If this is all an illusion and it don't exist, Maya, the new word, the matrix or whatever, you know, the movies and stuff, you see what I'm saying? It's an illusion and none of this stuff exists. Then the realm of sound has to be the realm, you see what I'm saying? That's one of the higher realms. Another thing, the realm of taste. All right, now. I often wondered this thing here. Now, in the vegetarian thing, you got to know two things. I was a vegetarian. And two things about vegetarian. You either better got to learn how to experiment with fucking taste or you're going to have some bland shit. All right? Everybody know this now. So what happened was, in my vegetarian years, I became an extraordinary cook based on taste. I said, no, I better look at them goddamn Asians. And I got to look at them Indians, East Indians. I said, because the motherfuckers over there ain't got a lot of damn meat. Them motherfuckers over there, the vegetarian cultures, by uh, 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 not by choice. You see what I'm saying? You know, because if it moves over in Asia, they eat it. So all they dogs and cats and rats and all that shit been gone. Rat, no, not to take his ass and no fucking Asians. So don't get on no goddamn boat and come your ass up over here because them motherfuckers eat everything. <laughs> don't laugh, them motherfuckers on the continent, they be eating big ass motherfucking rats on the continent, look like dogs in Africa. Ah, shit, I ain't, I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I got a homeboy I work for U.S. Customs. No, I always talk about this homeboy I got work for U.S. Customs. He worked for the Agriculture Department. He said a plane came in from goddamn Africa. And there was a sister, uh, sister on there with a motherfucking cage with a rat in there as big as a goddamn German shepherd. <laughs> she said, what the fuck you going with that shit right there? He said, what the fuck is that? She said, that's a rat. He said, you ain't bringing that motherfucker in this country. <laughs> He said, what you going to do with it? It's already dead. He said, had maggots in the eyes. He said, what you going to do? He said, motherfucker, daddy got maggots in the eyes. From Africa. He said, what you going to do with that shit? He said, we going to eat this shit. Damn. And he wouldn't let her come in the country. And he didn't tell her if they would have cut the feet off, they couldn't allow them not to bring it in the country. Because a rat ain't no, no different than a hog or whatever. No different, you know. So that was the U.S. custom. He said, you, he, well, she, she didn't have no knife right then. He was like, you can't bring that motherfucker up in here. But he said that she'd have cut off the, because they, they go based on the, on, on, on the agriculture, whether the, the animal carry disease by the feet. That whole hoof, foot and mouth disease shit. So if they should have cut off the shit, she, they could have been eating goddamn fricassees rat. And first I said, man, that shit there sound crazy as hell. And then some embarrassing shit. I saw the shit on PBS. I said, that goddamn cracker is crafty. You know what he doing? They had two white people and a real light-skinned white black guy hiking across Africa. 
And they got to a damn village and shit, and they had a big ass rat look like a goddamn pit bull. <laughs> and they say, what are they gonna say? We're gonna eat this shit. And they skipped that shit and they were doing that motherfucker like this. They do that hog and shit. <laughs> that shit was on that fucking rotisserie or them two sticks. And they was goddamn basing and barbecuing that goddamn rat. They showed that shit on PBS. I saw that shit. <laughs> and it's interesting. The white girl and the white boy ate some. That nigga like, I ain't eating that goddamn shit. That brother was like, oh, hell no, I ain't fucking with no rat and stuff like that. <laughs> then again, where the fuck is this going? <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> key here is with vegetarianism, I had to become, ve I had to become excellent. So when I fell off the wagon on, in doing the Olympics, when I was hungry that night, all vegetarian, all proud of that shit, and that nigga came up in there with that fucking, that, that turkey. Now I was trembling and shit. And I bit down on that motherfucking turkey and fell off the wagon. And found out that my consciousness was the goddamn same. It was over then. Shit, next week I was at Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Now this is the key, but I'm gonna tell you what happened now. All bullshit aside, all bullshit aside, this happened, this happened in 98. I ate some Kentucky Fried Chicken and came down with fucking paralysis. I was paralyzed. On a Sunday night, Ginger had to prop my goddamn head up against the futon. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I was paralyzed from that shit, cause that's that damn MSG up in that shit. That shit, and what had happened was, is I think I was still on that, on that good health kick and shit, that, that, that damn, that, that grotesque uh, aspect of the meat thing had to kick back in good. I had to, you know, had to get myself back into the swing of things and stuff, you know, to come back human and normal and shit. <laughs> so that day I was really cleaned out and I ate that fucking Kentucky Fried Chicken and I came down, I was paralyzed with that shit. Now, going back, what I'm trying to say is this here. The realm of taste is very key. The realm of smell is very key. You see what I'm saying? Uh, there's aspects of the realm of sight. But that can be, but that can also be mis misleading and stuff and all because we're talking about the pioneer there. But one of the keys here is the realm of hearing is very key based on the particular octaves and what you do. And for some reason when I became obsessed with this thing, and I was, I was, I was almost there the other week with the 14 speakers, I just needed about 20 more fucking watts before that shit conked out and all. I got them now. I got them now. But they got a whole war going on based on that particular aspect, which is very key now because the whole concept, okay, yeah, good. You're going you gonna to take the break? Yeah, because then we're going to go back and all because we got a lot to cover. The whole concept now, which is very key here is, is they're trying to stop the Bacchanalian realm. Now, show you something here. Remember I told you there's a movie called Ravenous. And we know that the whole vampire thing. And you know, Ravin Ravenous said that the Native Americans said when you eat somebody, you take on their spirit. And remember I told you, recapping, that I took that melatonin one night, because I cleaned out with an enema real good. Fuck around and went and took that melatonin, and uh, I must have took on whatever brother they killed for the melatonin. They must have snuck up from behind and killed him, because I woke up in the bed hollering that night. And shit, because whatever it was, somebody snuck up behind me, and I actually saw that, uh, I actually uh, uh, went through that guy's death. And so Ginger was like saying, you took on that whole motherfucker spirit when you took that man melatonin. And whatever it was, there's different memory. There's memory throughout the whole body in the cell. I must have got the cell where they killed that motherfucker. Because that night, I took that melatonin, but I, was, I, I had cleaned out all night with a fucking enema. And when I took it, it must have got through, and I woke up 
And I jumped, damn now. I was like, well, she said, what the hell going on? I said, oh, there ain't nothing going on. Then I told her about a week later. And I told her, I told her the next morning. She was like, you took on that brother's spirit, whatever it is. And then I said, I went around the country, and people that were heard the tapes took the melatonin, was coming down about four people. When I went to New York, I went to uh, Indiana, and I went to a couple of places around the country, and, I, and about four people had done the same thing. They came down with the same shit when they had woke up. They had witnessed a person death with the melatonin. And so... Um, um, I, I knew that what, what it was talking about in the movie Ravenous, which is the origin of the vampire thing, where they was talking about you can eat a person to take on their spirit. I knew that, and also that movie called Body Parts. Remember that Jada got a different body parts in the movie? And he was a damn mass murderer. And there was, in, in the different one he gave the body parts, when it was killing everybody and stuff, body parts of Jeff Fahey. So I knew, I said, well, that movie, that shit is talking about pure melanin, because that's dealing with that whole aspect of, of the stuff is inside your cells. Okay? Uh, it's inside your cells. Now, I, I, I knew that particular part. I was in the movie Ravenous and all, and I knew that the Native Americans, in the movie Ravenous, they give the thing on Native Americans about this thing happened, but they wouldn't tell you what the name of it. And then I got that thing called How to Eat Your Melanin, that, that, that aspect, that, 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 paper that I put out, and in that particular paper, the, the people who wrote it said that it was called Pasquati, which is, a, which is a, a literal Native American terminology. And in this particular book called The Garden of the Golden Flower, Journey Through the Spiritual Fulfillment by Langfield Beatty, if you can still get it. Langfield Beatty, The Garden of the Golden Flower by Langfield Get Beatty. He, this book came out in 1930-something, and in this particular book, he says it up in here about how you can eat the certain people. You can eat certain people to take on their spirit. And, uh, and I said, wait a minute, hold on. Because the spirit said, well, that's how they was fucking fucking them Africans up, and that's how the European took over the world. They would go in there, would fight them people, and they would eat the people, and they would get this superhuman strength. And in the movie, the seventh... Wasn't that was the 13th warrior that was doing the same thing in the 13th warrior, eating the motherfucker and, and was taking on the spirit. And they was thinking there was these ghosts and what it was. They was eating the people and it was taking on the spirit and get superhuman strength. Just like in the movie Ravenous. It was in the movie 13th Warrior. Remember I talked about that? In this book they talked about that particular same thing but it's called Pasquati. And in this particular book by Langfield Beta, he drops on all the signs. This came out in 1930-something. The key here is... The key here is, is one thing. Now, this is the mystery. This is what we got to go into. Now, I said the last year since 2000, I've been talking about that sex tantric thing. I started, I done came in and gave you some motherfucking alcohol. I done gave you a whole bunch of shit that normally in the conscious community, motherfuckers say, you crazy. My, I always curse, but my, around 99, my fucking cursing level exceeded even on, on even Bobby Hemet standards. And that was, and what it was is, and then all of a sudden, I'm being humorous, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm being conservative today because the entity that started, everybody got an entity, this holy God and angel. When my holy God and angel started coming up, I started getting more humorous. And then all of a damn sudden, I, I, I just couldn't stop, just, the shit didn't start. The last tape I did, I did one in Indiana, man, I was just, the shit was goddamn, Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy ain't had shit on the nigga boy. You know, so it was off the damn chain. It, it, was, it was off the chain. Now, what it is, that's called the Bacchanalian realm, and that is the whole thing in which the churches say the whole satanic evil thing is based off of. That's the get your freak on, like Missy Elliott talking about. Get your drink on, get your eat on, and get that particular realm which brings you to the creative process says that in actuality all religions are against. And how is it that the white folks is tapping into this shit and black people, and no more conscious we are, the more and more we like the fucking goddamn Amish and the pilgrims. All puritanical. Mennonites and all kind of goddamn bullshit. You see what I'm saying? All religious fired and all this shit here and all righteous but not getting the freak on, because the freak is the muse, all right? That whole thing is the Greek god Dionysus, the Indian god Shiva, the Egyptian god Set, Osiris, same composites, and the Roman god Bacchus. 
the Bacchanalian realm. Well, why the fuck is in Langfield Beatty's book, they're running a, uh, the church is running a bullshit on you because in Langfield Beatty's book, guess what? The word, the word I-A-C-C-U-S, Iacus, or Io, Jehovah, Baal, and it says, moreover, Bacchus bore the same mystery name as Jesus, called Aichius, the fish. So in so many words, the Bacchanalian realm that the fucking church in them don't want you to go to, the name Jesus is the same name for fucking Bacchus. And he breaks the shit down how the word Bacchus is the word Jesus. So Jesus was saying, get your fucking freak on. That's why he's hanging around with that goddamn hoe. See what I'm saying? Now look at this thing here. The Bacchus realm, he's saying in Langfield Bailey's book, Basic Symbols, that the word Jesus, I-C-H-T-H-U-S, which means the fish, which, which means the fish, all of this is another word for the Roman word Bacchus. And remember, even in your boy's book, Historical Origin of Jesus Christ, he said they took the Jupiter, J from Jupiter, and they put the word Zeus or Zeus and put it together. You get the word Jupiter, Zeus, and you get the word Jesus or Jesus or Jason. All that shit is the same thing, but they were talking about the word Jesus is another word for the word Bacchus. And Bacchus is the motherfucker saying, get your freak on, was drinking the wine. Drinking the vine. In this particular book here, this, this particular book here, Ego and Archetype by Edward F. Edinger. He shows, how many times what you got? How much time? Five minutes. He shows in the book that the parallels between Jesus and Dionysus, because Dionysus is the Greek Bacchus, which is Bacchus, is the Roman part, but the fucking name Jesus is a modified name for the word Bacchus, which is a motherfucker with the wine, the grapes, the flute, and a whole bunch of holes around him, having oranges and all kind of shit. The shit that you like, but you've just been trained to be decent by the church. Huh? This is Edward S. Edinger. In this particular book, if you can get it, The God of Ecstasy by Arthur Evans. In here, there's a whole chapter on the parallel of Jesus and Dionysus. But the Roman aspect, the word Bacchus, is the word Jesus that they talk about in here. And the whole church is trying, the whole church is just basically got a motherfucker on lockdown because Jesus is the fucking damn freak. Harder. There you go. And what he's telling me in, in, in the Gospel of Thomas, he said, what kind of, what kind of damn diet you want us to go on? And he said, what, why do what you hate? Blessed is the man who eats the lion, because the lion becomes a part of a man. And cursed is the man that gets eaten by the lion, and a man becomes a part of a damn lion. So what I'm trying to say here is, what we have gone into is a fucking Afrocentric fundamentalism trying to be righteous, and all that shit is is got a niggas on lockdown when in your mind you want to get your freak on. What is the freak? Look, man, it's simple, man. Look here, man. Shit, go to go to the other side of the track, man. Go to the other side of the track. Put about four or five of them motherfuckers around the street together. Make you one. I'm talking about you go to the other side of the track and say, because you know, the motherfuckers who got the sexual expression and shit is not the so-called so-called good standing upright girl that you so-called think it is and stuff. You see what I'm saying? And it's a lot of time it ain't the damn conscious motherfuckers because that ain't nothing but just a new manicured Christian. Manicured Christian just got an African clothes polished over the same fucking communion. But my point here is, <laughs> my point here is, what I'm trying to say here is, the whole concepts here is, 
Why does Jesus ride in on the donkey? The donkey represents something that it freaks or jumps outside of the matrix, of the norm, of the conventional. Like they say, I am superficial, I hate every motherfucking thing official. But Grace Jones said that shit. But my point here is why did he ride in on the donkey? Because the donkey, that's the whole set type, and that is the Bacchus element. You see what I'm saying? So my point here is we hear he again, over and over, got to turn this shit around. We got to turn this shit around and all because the word Jesus is the word Bacchus. And uh, so, like I said, the gods of ecstasy, but it, this book is probably out of print, so the one that's in print is Ecstasy by Robert A. Johnson. That's the one you want, Ecstasy by Robert A. Johnson. Because we're talking about the Dionysian realm because when we come back, we know that this is the realm that is toppling the church with the Roman Catholic shit is now being toppled with that whole, see, whenever you try to hide some shit, it come back on you. So it's now being toppled with this whole sex scandal shit, as well as that damn so-called holy now Israel with that bullshit is mass murderers. That shit is being toppled. And, on, and, and let me tell you, it's not by accident that all this shit start going on right when they got that black water off the coast of Florida. Off the coast of Florida. What they ain't telling you that they got these damn shits all over the world. They just telling you about Florida. These are portholes to the other dimension. Now, going back to the sound. If this shit doesn't exist, the new dimension going to come in based on what you hear. What happened was when Jim Cam locked my ear, I started hearing these sounds. And I said, damn, I'm hearing the other world, the other world, the world to come. I said, I hear this shit in my goddamn ear. Because they say heaven is within. And I was hearing stuff. So my point here is the new realm is coming through the realm of sound. You see what I'm saying? So like I was, like I was telling some brothers in their early 20s out I, 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 in California, they dealing with the whole rap thing and all that. I said, you're going to have to, man, lock into taking this kind of shit that you're dealing with and trying to get your own sound right, but don't depend on them damn white boys. I say start with the damn basic graphic equalizer and get the sound right because the new shit is going to come with the sound. That's what they're trying to stop. That's what they're trying to stop. So we get ready to go to a break. We got the live food back there uh, for the people and all. And when we come back, we're going to start up with some other stuff like here and all, you know, and all. And all. so, uh, uh, we're going to go to the break, and when we come back, we'll start back up. Yeah. Where are you going? Back in? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, got, I still got the CDs for the people, the, the conscious CDs on the latest mixes. Okay, we're back. Um, we're still dealing with a couple of things. Um, Apparently, like I said, the whole thing that's happening in Israel, as well as the thing that's happening to the Catholic Church, as well as um, what happened to the whole aspect of Islam in the last six months. We're talking here again as the three major world religions that basically rule the world, like they said. Um, from Israel, the Vatican in Rome, and Mecca. We talk about a rulership that actually rules the world. And all of a sudden we see in the last six months a whole thing heaped on all of them as far as anything from, you know what I'm saying, from warfare to scandal. That is the reason, um, that is that, is, and you know, and you know that happened at the, uh, that happened at the end of the decade in the 1980s when you had the fundamentalistic moral majority and all those fools ruling the next thing you know all kind of scandals started coming down with Jimmy Swaggart and all of that kind of thing here. Here again what you're dealing with here is the Bacchanalian realm coming back into being. Now like I said the Bacchus which is the archetype to the Christian church as the devil is in actuality Another name for Jesus. So in so many words, what they're saying here, based on the theology that Jesus 
in the true form is doggone satanic to them. Because there's a difference between scriptures, there's a difference to, uh, between the origin of all of this and theology. There is, there is a difference. The theology. That means that you can take the same, and we've seen this thing go on the last 100 years, where we would have 200 different theologies based on one damn book, the, uh, 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 one book, the Bible, or uh, uh, chapters. And what we know, there's 12,000 different sects of Christianity alone. So even at the core of what this thing is talking about with the real aspect of Jesus, which is basically in so many words, because somebody wanted to explain that, that they took Dionysus, uh, Bacchus, Dionysus, Shiva, Krishna, uh, Mithra, um, definitely Horus, because you know that's one of the uh, oldest origins of it, the Typhonian aspect of Set Typhon prior to him being castigated as the devil and ostracized and basically um, la uh, uh, labeled the devil. And that particular aspect all became, those particular deities became wrapped into one as Jesus and then the original scriptures of the original Jesus, the one that coming from the Gnostic scriptures, was they homogenized pasteurized, and basically washed all of the ancient motifs of creativity, which makes this person a superhuman being, which is nothing but your soul coming to a higher level of spirituality, because it's not that one person. All of that stuff was historicalized by the Roman church as a political tool to get on top of, to get a, a political tool to get on top of the entire, um, religious world, a spiritual world, to make a monopoly out of this whole thing and then turn it around to be that other than the spiritual aspect. So your whole spiritual motifs and stuff was all washed out. Recently we have been talking about, and Gerald Massey even talks about it and all, because we have to go back even further than that, because the original origin of Satan prior to it being a male aspect, was in fact the great mother or the feminine aspect that was overthrown. Now we got glimpses of this particular aspect of this particular feminine aspect, but it is always set in the context of the masculine deity. So we got uh, uh, an array of feminine entities in uh, Kemet but they always have their consorts. And what we needed to do is we needed to trace this thing back far beyond the aspect of when it was even the male deities, when it was, when the whole thing from warrior goddess to every kind of thing you want to name was all comprised in the feminine aspect of the pre-dynastic era. We, all of this was lost to us as far as that pre-dynastic era, prior to the masculine hierarchy or the masculine principalities ruling. And a lot of that was lost to us until recently, the pre-dynastic era, and, they, and, and a lot of the goddess books make reference to this time of the ruling, even the book When God Was a Woman, and all these particular books make, 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 um, they make references to it, the great cosmic mother, they make references to that particular time of the pre-dynastic or what they call that particular um, realm of the matriarchal aspect, but we haven't found any text outside of the both balance of male and female where we have that whole rulership comprised of the feminine aspect until recently we found texts in India. Now you got your Rig Veda and all of that, but even those particular text, which is your oldest ones, the Vedic text, was replaced by, was, excuse me, was, was a replacement of an earlier aspect of a feminine cult that was in India that traveled out of Africa dating back to the pre-dynastic time. So now we have the major text now that is the complete aspect of the feminine, cult of the feminine, is called the Ten Mahabadayas, which is these particular texts. Like I told you, they got several things that's coming out of the University of Chicago. 
and also University of, of California Press, Berkeley. So they've been having a lot of text and stuff that they have just been translating. They have just been translating. And this book here, The Tantric Visions of the Divine Feminine, Tantric Vision of the Divine Feminine, the Ten Mahabadayas. That's M A H. And that should be Mahabadayas because that, that, that line is over the A, which makes it a. Hmm? Uh, uh, M, you know, M A H A V I D Y A S. M A H A V I D Y A S. The Ten Mahabadayas or Mahabadayas or Mahabadayas by David Kingsley. This is a masterpiece because it puts back that lost feminine realm, uh, that lost feminine realm, as well as the book that was made reference to this book where he is making reference to the same thing, the book called Tantra, the Cult of the Feminine by Andre Van Lysbeth. Andre Van Lysbeth. Um, I don't know how much this particular book is. Um, this one is a $30 book from Samuel Weiser. This is David R. Kinsey. Now, he has another book called Hindu Goddess. Hindu Goddess. Um, and what I'm saying is this is very key because they have a whole entire aspect of the god Kali, which we're in the Kali Yuga. Um, the other book, Hindu Goddess by David Kinsley. Uh, da da David Kinsley um, is a very important book to get. But especially this Ten Mahabadayas, because what this particular text is, is the remaining text of that cult of the feminine that existed prior to the masculine aspect. Now, one thing I want to emphasize here, because there's a problem going on with groups of sisters that's just not coming into this particular consciousness and don't understand the science. Now remember, the sister Stella came up the last lecture and she read from, uh, the, the brother David came in and she had read from a particular book where they were saying that the, ma major, the, the, the patriarchal was exclusive. That means that they're they produced these particular realms where it was only exclusive to the males, where the matriarchy was, uh, was all inclusive. So that meant that the matriarchal society had both male and female in the, in, in the particular rights. You see, that's why even, some of, that's why even when, it, when, it, when it boiled down to the book Ancient Mystic Rights by C.W. Ledbetter, the white boys who was given their particular information from the Moors, by the Moors, the white boys even went in trying to be authentic, they had women masons. And they show all these things in ancient mystic rites where they got these particular ma women matrix, masons uh, the ma in the Masonic order and stuff like that. And we are yet to have them. We won't hear no separate Eastern star bullshit. But then again, it don't really matter because, of, because, because, because the black masons are nothing but a, uh, uh, a joke anyway. Uh, in the particular aspect, if you are studying on your own, that's one thing and all, but as far as the Masonic order, that's a joke anyway. But the point I'm trying to make here is the masculine order is exclusive. Now, this is very key. We've got to address this because there's some stuff that's going down uh, in the conscious community, not necessarily here in Atlanta, but other sets, and I'm not going to name no names or whatever type thing like that and all, but I'll try to give you a, an example of what's going on. Uh, 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 of, of what's actually going on. But including, I've even seen um, orders called the Brotherhood of Isis, or the Brotherhood of Aset, which in this particular case, these, this particular Brotherhood of Isis, these particular people had sisters in the actual Brotherhood, the whole Crawley thing. And not necessarily trying to raise white folks up, what I'm trying to say here is, they would give us the fake shit when they would try to get closer to the authentic thing. In Crawley Society, the Golden Dawn Society, plus the OTO, they got both male and female. But yet, whenever we have some particular society outside of a cult, you know, where they have the both male and female, but they so use it, they, in most cults, if they got the male and female, you best believe the, the damn females are subservient in most cult aspects. But in the particular male and female aspect, and I'm going to drop this type of, type, 
type of science. So a person who is on the neophyte level and, 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 and on the uh, neophyte level of just trying to get into this type of stuff always fail to, uh, uh, fail to understand because they're still looking at the physical aspect and they don't get this. But even your OTO and all, your, all these societies, they were trying to mimic the ancient mystery system. The Europeans, they have sisters in the cults. They have, not the cults, but they have sisters in the, in the rites. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about a society where we say we got sisters and shit, but the sisters in these societies that black people have, isn't it funny, they're always relegated to a motherfucker down to some subservient level where they end up cooking. Or some bullshit like that. It's always the stuff they say, this is a society, but when it all boils down to it and stuff, the sisters are relegated to the same menial roles. You see what I'm saying? And so even in these conscious societies, that's still, so, so that's a form of, of matriarchy, but now we're talking about things that some of the sisters are doing, and I'm going to try to, under, to try so you can understand what's going on here. Why was the matriarchal order of the ancient aspect was inclusive, all inclusive, based on males and females. Now, to try to understand that, the first aspect of the matriarchal order, they were tantric cults. So that meant that part of the energy of the tantric aspect is, in which tantric means the sexual cults, part of, part of the energy of the tantric aspects is that there was a whole sexual cult, a sexual energy that had to be brought together based on male and female. Now, we're talking about being separated from the original knowledge so far as to, even in my mind, I have to wonder sometimes, how could our systems be based off the sexual expression? That's based on what we have been taught to make things such a secondary thing that we do in the dark. And I've been talking about this stuff, and you know, and it might sound like a broken record, but what we're still trying to say here is, is, is the cult of the feminine where you have the whole cult of the tantra, the cult of the feminine, was brought to you by women. And it is interesting that when we have the first aspects of Satan in the particular Taboos against things, there's always taboos against sex. And in this particular case, in Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, it is taboos against the harlot. And that particular harlot is not necessarily, all, although it's all based off the great mother, they were talking about a tantric way of life or a tantric rites of passage and a tantric, which is sexual ecology, that the women put together in a system prior to the male domination. You see, that's one thing key, that when the male goes totally off the path of the heart chakra, where it becomes deficient in white males, one thing happened when male-dominated rulers like Hitler and Napoleon. Here are people that had millions of people go to their death. Amongst the two, they both hated sex. That was the aspect that they were frigid in. It's like the big fat white man in the gray suit and the big black shoes. You see what I'm saying? Because what happens here is, in the sexual aspect, you got to give up some feelings and you got to give up some emotions. You see what I'm saying? You got to go beyond just the facade of having it all together. You got to break all that down to the doggone ego. You got to break through the ego aspect of that particular uh, aspect. So this is one reason why they're going against the Bacchanalian realm. The Bacchanalian realm where you see Osiris, Dionysus, and Sheba surrounded by women. Might sound like pimpism to you. But remember now, Dionysus, Sheba, Set Typhon, and even the early forms of Osiris 
were the son of the mother. There's two sons of God. There's the son of the mother and the son of the father. You see what I'm saying? These are the early aspects of the son of the mother. Now, why do I say this? Because this is very key about the son of the mother based on the son of the father. To try to understand this particular aspect. And this is something that I was trying to get at at the conference where they had the Hemet Summit and trying to get at some stuff. Where, as I read an a, a Alistair Crawley book, and they say, the people of the Silver Star, which is supposed to be the Star Sirius, they call it the AA. The people of the Silver Star already talk about male and female. And the later version of the Silver Star is this so-called AA or OTO, which is Crawley's system which is supposed to be the later form of that. And these are just white folks mimicking our ancient order. But in the book, the book of lies, he said that all the entities, both male and female, all the entities, both male and female, in that hierarchy, all women. Now, now follow me on this, what I'm trying to say here. That's the reason why the matriarchal order said that in the matriarchal order, both male and female were included. Now, this is where you got to really think on what's going on. Um, one thing happened with, black, with, the, with the black man. Spike, no matter how much you think he got his shit together, he is always a victim of sexism when it comes to the white male. Now, see, we talk about sexism, and we understand the sexism, and they always talk all this stuff about, and they got these sisters all together, and even had goddamn sisters let the white women convince them that their doggone history and their cause is one with them, and that's bullshit. Because when that white woman, when that white man was lynching us, that white woman was right beside him, firing up the goddamn barbecue grill. Now, let's not be funny with this mess when it comes to this shit here. But the point I'm trying to make here is, when this shit came down in the 60s, you see what I'm saying? They took the sister and got the sister in on the bullshit. And basically, by taking the, 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 the matriarchal aspect of the black community, making it into a force for them on the feminine aspect, you see what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden and all, uh, we sisters got to stick together, yet... The black man, worldwide, is one of the few people in all races that is a victim of sexism. That's why your jails is filled up with fucking black men. Why is it? That's because of sexism. The white man feels xenophobic, inferior to the black male, just like they would feel xenophobic and inferior to the, male, the, 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 the females, period. It's the same energy. Racism comes from sexism. Sexism existed before there was racism. But, when, but, but, but racism, the whole concept of racism is the same thing when it comes to doggone. The black man is part of the white man's racist attitude towards the black man is a sexist attitude. He feels inferior based on the sexual connotations. Get where I'm coming from here? It's the difference in stuff. So the black man is a victim of sexism. He's one of the few people in world history that is just as much a victim of sexism as the so-called feminine females that was a victim of sexism under the white man. You understand what I'm saying? Under the doggone white man. Although, let's not now, let's see one thing. We got to get clear here because, see, in the Afrocentric community, first of all, we had to build up the hopes and the stuff for the people. We had to make something appealing so the people are going to say they're going to give up Jesus and all this shit here. They had to make something appealing for them to go gravitate towards. But don't be funny with this shit. Our slate was not clean in Africa. You see what I'm saying? If we're going to deal with the whole history and the circumference of it all, we got to understand this particular part here too. The sexism aspect, you see what I'm saying, has just as much an origin in Africa as as well as outside of Africa. You see what I'm saying? So it wasn't just like we were just the most perfect motherfuckers in the world. Because you got to understand deterioration, and Dr. Ben talked about that. There's several layers of deterioration. We're not, we understand, we don't have to doggone make an excuse. You see what I'm saying? For us fucking up in a few later years, because we lived for thousands of years, and we were the authors of the shit when it went right. We produced that. So therefore, we don't have to sit up 
and make an excuse when the shit was not going right for us and say that it was all based on outside influence because it wasn't. You understand what I'm saying? Our slate was not necessarily all the way clean. And we even get aspects of this going back to the dynastic period, where the dynastic period starts. Get um, your book um, from Fetish to God in Ancient Egypt by E. Wallace Budge and get that, the, the creation myth. The, uh, uh, from, from Fetish to God in Ancient Egypt, and in the back they got all these papyruses. They got the creation myth. And a part of the creation myth is Ra comes into being by overthrowing the great mother, Apep, which is also Apep, the hippopotamus goddess, but Apep, the great mother. So Ra comes into being, so we see the aspects of this patriarchal origin of sexism starting even in the Kamite culture or the Egyptian culture. You see what I'm saying? We get this. We get Marduk rising, overthrowing Hiamat. These are things long before there was any European ever came on the earth. So the slate was not necessarily clean. I'm not necessarily saying that we took it to the degree of the European. You understand what I'm saying? We always was a, a, a historical and classical people that we had a certain amount of balance and different things that we did and all, and it wasn't that grotesque because we didn't have certain things in the rites of passage that would make it grotesque. When, even when John Henry Clark said that murder was a taboo thing, so it was almost non-existent and there was no jailhouse. So I'm not saying that we did things on that degree, but I'm trying to say the first glimpses of the sexes and stuff was as well as a very well started in Kemet. Remember I told you about the brother that back in 19... We was all supposed to go to Kemet in 1981 because I was in Dr. Green's mystery system, so something... The Atlanta crew didn't go based on some finances, but one of the brothers went through, the Detroit crew went, and one of the brothers came back very upset. He said, because every temple he went into, they had motherfucking black people tied up in every damn temple. And one brother makes this particular argument, and this brother named Wesley X, which was one of them kind of brothers, which was a goddamn scientist, he did a lot of good research. So he was like a brother, just like me. He, he exhausted the research, and he made a good point, whereas they talk about even the early aspects of this particular history. That, and even Gerald Massey talks about it in Book of the Beginning, Volume 1, as well as Natural Genesis that in so many words, the Egyptians, the dynastic Egyptian was not only rebelling against the matriarchal order of the pre-dynastic era, but they were rebelling against a black African in equatorial Africa. You see what I'm saying? They were rebelling against a much more primal aspect of themselves. Now, how do we know? Because when you go to Kemet on damn near every temple, they got some big lip African tied up. This is history. We're dealing with the bigger picture. You understand what I'm saying? Now, going back to this particular aspect, we see this big lip African tied, tied up. We see this particular, and then all of a sudden in the dynastic period, we see the sexual aspect become much more diluted or much more hidden than it would have been in the primal aspect because all that stuff goes up into India and then they got all the temples of them motherfuckers doing all kinds of sexual acts. We do have glimpses of it in Egypt and there was probably tons of it in the libraries and stuff, but on the, monu on the mass monuments, they rebel against certain sexual tantric culture. You don't find it on the mass monuments in Egypt, on that tantric culture thing. You find it on the monuments in India, but remember now that people from India is your pre-dynastic Egyptians, Kushites. That's your untouchables, which where all this shit come from. So the Ten Mahavadayas by David R. Kinsey is, the, um, um, is brought to India by the blue-black untouchables, Ethiopian type, Kushite type. You see what I'm saying? This is pre-dynastic Egyptians. So when this guy here tries to put this stuff back in the cult of the feminine, he's trying to give you a glimpse of how this particular aspect happens. As far as we're so alien now until we can't even fathom a whole system was based on sex. And why not? I mean, that's what we got down here with. 
So obviously, it had to have not been. If this is the this is the reason for us incarnating on the physical earth, why does it have to be so fucking hidden? In the basic aspects of religion, by the time that shit get to be Christianity, there's nothing about your dick in your vagina in the Bible in so many words. You see what I'm saying? So we see the glimpses of this stuff disappearing even in dynastic Kemet. Now follow me, follow me, because I'm trying to do this to illustrate a point. But we see these things travel up into India. We see the same Bacchanalian and Dionysus. You want to ask, so they say, well, what was it if the Egyptians in their mythology was not talking about a rebellion against evil in the aspect on what? We know of as far as evil in the aspect of moralism because they didn't deal with that. Even the white man said, when I go back to all these ancient cultures, I don't see no form of moralism because they didn't deal with moralism. That's some new shit for some people that basically is a political thing for the Romans to, to make subjects out of the people that they're going to doggone um, dominate in the world and colonize in the world. And that's a whole different history. But... What was it that made them rebel against the Typhonian order? One was the new form of sexism, which was the stopping the feminine aspect, period. But also these tantric cults that now we find in these new things coming from the California Berkeley, where they got all these ancient texts. And so they have now, in the last 30 years, rehashed all these ancient texts. And they will put it in... The stuff from India, they got the same amount of text coming out of Kemet, but that's all on lockdown. That's Egyptology, and that's all on lockdown. They won't let us see it. But you don't have to, because the simple fact, if you just get out of this thing, everything got to be Kemet. If it's all black people, then you find it where the hell you find it. So we're finding these things resurging in text coming out of India and aspects of, the, of, of, of tons of stuff that they have now translated in these particular texts. Um, in, in these particular texts at the University of California, University of Chicago. Now, stick with me, because what this is also saying is this. We know that they rebel against the tantric thing, in the ten Mahavadayas, the cult of the feminine, and other things. We know they rebel against that. Um, but there's another thing that is going down here that a lot of people cannot understand, and this is one of the greatest mysteries that has something to do with our black race. Now you can even trace this even down to the Camites. Why is it on the temples you have to look hard to find out whether some of them are male or female? Especially on the wall paintings and stuff compared to uh, a lot of the later statues where they were, became very descriptive which gave away from the Romans and the Greeks copying that. You see what I'm saying? But even the Romans and the Greeks and stuff, they were dealing with hieroglyphic images to the point they were trying to convey a message just in the picture you see. And that is, is what Crawley and them was going back to say, and that is this. Now, this is the mystery. He said that this AA, which is the silver star, which is the star system Sirius. He said, in the physical lodges on Earth, we have both male and females in these particular lodges. But on the star system Sirius are what they call the AA, which is actually the souls inside of us. They say we are all females. I talked about this in the, in, in the conference and all, but I want to say this particular part here. It's interesting sometimes when you get certain readings from certain seers and they can see back in certain past lives and stuff like that. Well, um, I've had, since over the, over the course of the last 10 years, I've dealt with several psychics. And there's all different types of psychic phenomena. So you got mundane psychics that only read what's on this realm. You got some that can only get transmission from a higher level, level and they don't get them all the time. Then you, and you got all different types of, of psychics, um, all, all, all different types of psychics, but, but, but you even got something that can deal with past life. Well, at this time when I was dealing with, 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 with Sister Ty Celia, some of you know, um, she did a, a, a whole aspects of the past life and stuff, and she was giving me all these different things and stuff on what I was in the past and stuff, and she said even going back to Atlantis, because even with Atlantis, we know that most of that is pre-physical age, but the beginning of the physical had to have started in Atlantis. Otherwise, even if Atlantis, most of that is pre-physical, but the origin of the physical had to start a uh, 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 jump off point when we talk about that one landmass, Or when we talk about how they are down now in Cuba, 
digging up all that shit that they found based on that Atlantis thing and made that whole Disney shit about it. And if you ever look at that cartoon, it dropped because of, because if you really see, you know, Disney is a real, a real racist company. But if you look at the Atlantis cartoon, that's one you need to buy. Because when you look at the stuff, the masks, the motifs, and everything they did was strictly African. In the movie, in, in that cartoon Atlantis. And although they might have had them with blonde hair, they was clearly all black people. So they do that little playing with shit and all. That's the one you need to buy is that Atlantis one and stuff. And you know, the, the blonde hair thing, you know, Hollywood, white people going to do what they're going to do. You know what I'm saying? At this particular point, that's we shouldn't even have them trying to validate that them give us all black stuff. We don't make shit. You understand what I'm saying? We don't make shit. I mean, you know, the, the closest we have done now is open up goddamn restaurants if we get some money and shit. Like, we ain't putting nothing in nothing. You know what I'm saying? On some stuff like that. So, since we don't do that and all, you can't talk about the other, you can't holler about the other race what they're going to do because we know the white man has been doing that. But, the, but that movie on Atlantis, the one, the animated thing, all of the, Af every, the mass, everything they did was all African. If you really looked at it and saw what they were dealing with. And they got this thing in the cartoon, that they put a black person in there, it's always a lighter skinned black person. Well, you know, that's what they deal with. But the point I'm trying to make here is, um, that movie came out right at the same time when they, they announced they got all this shit off of Cuba. Or, 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 you know, or, off of Cuba. Now, going back, but there was a physical Atlantis that was the origin prior to the spiritual Atlantis. And one of the things she said, she gave me all these things, you was this Egyptian priest then, you was a student here, you was this, you was that, and then she said, and all most of them was male, and then she said, you were a housewife one time in Atlantis. I said, God damn. Well, now, wait a minute, now, hold on, now, look at the science here. If I was a housewife one time in Atlantis, then the only thing that dictates whether I'm male or female has nothing to do with my soul. Because if my soul was masculine, I couldn't have been a goddamn housewife. I might have been a drag queen up in that motherfucker. But if my soul was masculine, how could I ever be a woman in an incarnation? And we know that some of the origins of the homosexual thing here is, is some, because of the rites of passage is broken down, a lot of times, it's a past life where the motherfucker was female, reincarnated as a male, and carried some of that over, but the society we live in don't have the rites of passage to correspond a person's life with what incarnation the physical body is in. That's the real origin of that shit. There's other things also based on social origins on why you would have that whole, that homosexual thing. But one of these things has been ruled out because we don't deal with this stuff because we, most of the people are not into the metaphysical or the occult realm is there's an incarnation where you have a person who was a female in a last, uh, lifetime or a male and they incarnated in a body and they carried most of that over. And somehow between the time of, of a childhood, they didn't get the of rites of passage to register and correspond the soul with whatever newly incarnated aspect it was and sometimes it carries the other incarnation into this in, in, into the next life. That's a, that's a metaphysical aspect. The point I'm trying to make here is in dealing with this you got some sisters now that's coming all up and, and they're, being, they're being fueled by the Anne Rice book which was a hell of a damn movie. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, that particular thing, it was a ritual because she showed that she was burning their ass up in the movie by fire, so they made sure she died by fire. You feel what I'm saying? She died at 22, they put it out on the 22nd. And she turned the pure black melanin, uh, queen of the damn, and, what, and, and turned the pure melanin, and what happened was the white folks all stood against her their mother, and say, we rebel against you, our mother. Like the guy said, you have tasted the most ancient of things. Number one, the other guy, the one that who turned Lestat, he was a moor. Because when they first came into the thing, if you look on the top of the uh, building it was in, it was a star and a crescent. And when it was on top of, and in the movie, when they was on top of the, uh, the, the uh, they were standing out, and he was showing him Hollywood. And they were sitting on this big sign. And he said, this reminds me of the, 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 the locals who used to run through the, world, run through the woods during the time of Cordoba. It wasn't, uh, yeah, 
It was Cadova. And they were saying he was a Moor. So they had a lot of stuff up in there. He said, that's your mother, and he said, but then again, they, they made the distinction between the mother and the gods. They say, you don't need to be dealing on the realm of the gods. Who were the gods? That was the black woman, the black people. You see what I'm saying? So they say, you don't even need to be dealing on the realm of the gods. And you've got to go back and look at the movie twice, because the, the person who ruled with her was a black man. He saw the hair was real nappy, the one she so-called bit. But what the deal was is she kept saying, Damn the humans, they know nothing. Don't want to know nothing in so many words. And what they was talking about here, it was, a, it was a battle between us going back to the godhood and us staying human. These vampires wanted to hang around with the humans talking about they're so frail and they, you know, they ain't going to be here for so long and that's what makes them so special. But anyway, now going back, there's a whole feminine cult that is now basing it because in the book, she wants to kill all the men. Well, that's the Anne Rice and you, she doesn't put a twist because because the majority of her stuff she got from African and ancient mythological motifs. You see what I'm saying? If you get the Anne Rice Vampire Companion, if you ever if you can get the Anne Rice Vampire Companion, that's the one you need to get because that's the one that breaks it all down. Um, Anne Rice's Vampire Companion, which is an encyclopedia, you just turn right to it. But in but 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 in the book. Um, but in the book, her little twist on it is, is, is ultimately Akasha wanted to get rid of the males. Now, this is the, so, so now you got a, a, a certain a feminine cults now just rising up and their whole thing here is we must fight against the masculine energy and they are thinking that the black man is the prototype of masculine energy. We are all slaves. Which means, in actuality, did we have the, the, the power to dictate our own destiny? No, not as slaves. You see what I'm saying? Well, we can say that about the black woman. Do you? Get, 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 we can say that about the black woman and stuff where ass. Where did this whole shit about come choosing your mate based on what kind of purse strings they got? That is clearly Victorian white woman. We don't think about that kind of shit, but all you got to do is go see movies like, um, uh, What's the movies? Um, Emma Thompson was in the movie. Uh, um, let me see several movies. Um, Age of Innocence, Sense and Sensibility. See, a lot of these movies you need to go see. These are movies of white Victorian repressionism. You need to go see these movies to find out what kind of monsters we became based on watching these movies like The Age of Innocence. What's another other one? Um, Sense and Sensibility. Um, what's the one with, um, what's the name did, um, Emma, what's it, no, uh, the one that, um, um, what's that old white girl, uh, um, Gwyneth Pelso did, uh, all this shit is Jane Austen novels, um, Jane Austen novels and stuff. See, you gotta watch a whole lot of shit, you see, that's what anthropology is. It ain't just watching some shit to be entertained. You gotta go watch it just to see what kind of motherfuckers that we're imitating, especially now, where did we get all this bullshit from? And back then, you know, that's a Victorian thing where you choose a person based on their family and what kind of money they got in purse strings because everybody was poor. You understand what I'm saying? And now we get this type of thing here and all, and basically we, we see sisters just locked into this kind of shit, and they don't know that, that ain't, that's not African in origin. So I'm trying to say here, we got a lot of fucked up things that's going on with us, both on the, based on the black males that they're complaining about. There's things that even if you think in your nice aspect, you, you pretending to be that goddamn white woman. And we don't know where the origin of these things come from. Oh, what's the name of that woman, Gwyneth Paltrow? It's not Emma. Um, now, Sense of Sensibility, uh, several of these movies came out in the 1990s. A lot of them put out by Merrimax Films. And they put these movies out. They showing where motherfucking white people come from, and how this is the basis of the 20th century cracker that now the black people is falling behind. Mainly the fucking no good ass upper mobile nigga. That everything is based on materialism. We don't even know where that shit coming. From. That shit is coming from a motherfucker from England. You see what I'm saying? That you know what I'm saying? Where all this kind of shit comes from? Where they said that the greatest nobility, the greatest. 
Normal thing of a man is vanity. You see? So we got to find out where all this is. So now there's a whole group of sisters now that's dealing with this shit. They actually think that there is, that, that to gather around the female is to be, here it is again, to be exclusive from the male. Now look at this. And they don't understand that what they are doing is patriarchal because it is the patriarchal masculine order that excludes. The male, the female order is all exclusive, all, all inclusive. You know that right now when it comes to a black woman and her relationship with her goddamn son. You know what I'm saying? That mother, her, her son is goddamn key. <laughs> see what I'm saying? She'll mortgage her goddamn house to get that nigga off death row. You see what I'm saying? The relationship with the black woman and her goddamn son, wretched right now. Even when they, when they set the damn laws. You remember they had the white boy on TV telling them how you got to pick a jury if you want to send a nigga to prison? To make sure that it's a certain black woman, to make sure, make sure that, it, that, that, that a certain black mother, it said that black woman is the, is the age of that person's mama, she'll let that motherfucker out because she's looking at the son. They get a black man and a certain age when you get a black man. You see what I'm saying? So we know that even in our, even in the DNA, the goddamn black woman gravitates towards her goddamn son. That's her key shit right there. You see what I'm saying? Like they said, she like Jack the Ripper, Jack the Ripper mama. Them bitches had it coming. You know. So I'm trying to say, so, so the whole concept here is, you got a whole thing now with the females now being exclusive. And the only thing they're doing is they're following the same old patriarchal order of the black Masonic order of a whole bunch of motherfucking men. You see what I'm saying? Of a whole doggone bunch of men. You see, and that's what it is. So that is patriarchal in the aspect, in its all aspect, because the, cause the, cause the patriarchal orders where we started getting these all-male cults, all-male doggone brotherhoods, is, to, is to exclude the females. They even got books now coming out here on how, was a, there's a book out, I can't think of the name on how, the males, and this was not white boys, this was black people, developed a system of writing so that they can lock out the females. Now don't, now, now don't get me wrong, writing is not predominantly male. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying here is there was a, a system of scripts, scriptures, and writings they did to, and there's a book out on this thing. What's the name of that damn book? Alphabet versus the Goddess. Alphabet versus the Goddess is the name of the damn book. Well, they did a whole alphabet script just to doggone exclude the sister. Alphabet versus the Goddess is the name of the actual book. And all, just to exclude the doggone sister. But, Going back to this particular thing, there's a whole bunch of people. They're fueled by Ann Rice's book. Because in Ann Rice's book, it's about, it's about killing the male. And they keep thinking that, um, that the male has something to do with the physical body. Hell, if I was a female in one incarnation, then in actuality, what we're talking about is the same essence and the same origin. Even when, when, when we had the, the thing that went down at, at, at the Hemet Summit, even Valentine had to agree that the kundalini energy is a feminine energy. Well, goddamn it, the fire and all of that type of stuff is a feminine energy, then what the fuck is male? If the spirit aspect of that shit is feminine, then what the hell is male? And go now going back, this is the same energy that the white boy is trying to keep down or keep back that will retake the world, the return of the Shakti power which is a fire, which is a sexual energy, but it's also a fire, and it is the kundalini energy within itself. You see what I'm saying? And that is the great serpent, and the ancient evil. The ancient evil. Well, what does this have to do with us becoming a certain way? Well, the story goes, the mythology goes. And now you heard me talk about this in past lectures, and there's a book called uh, let me see the name of this book. It's a book put out by Wendy O'Flaherty. I didn't bring it, but I need to get you the name of this book. The name of this particular book. They have a, several of her books in here. Let me get you the name of this book. Uh, 
Let's see the name of this book. The name of this book is called Women, Androgynies, and Other Mystical Beasts. That's the one. Women, Androgynies, and Other Mystical Beasts by Wendy O'Flaherty. And in that book, they talk about inside of the seed of both male and female. They give it to you in mythology. Now here's her other book, Dreams, Illusions, and Other Realities, which is a book that breaks down the whole movie. The Matrix and all that is coming from ancient scripts, but we trace those scripts back to the Maya, to, to the word Maya, which is illusion. So the whole movie and stuff, that's coming from a lot of East Indian texts, although they had it in a lot of Gnostic stuff. But the movie Matrix and all that type of stuff, if you want a scholarly thing, and I've been talking about this the last three, four years, is this book called Dreams, Illusions, and Other Realities. And in this book it talks about how Shiva, you know, how, how they had this sage dreams of a, of a flower, the flower dreams of a gnat, the gnat dreams of a bird, the bird dreams of a tree, the, dream, the grass dreams of a blade, of, the, uh, the grass dreams of this a frog, and, and it goes all up to this particular dead dreams, or uh, something dreams that it is the god Shiva, and then the god Shiva wakes up from the dream, and this illusion is over. You see what I'm saying? And that's the whole matrix when Leo woke up. Well, they talk about all that in this particular book. But in her other book, Women Androgyny and Other Mystical Beasts, they talk about, um, they talk about, um, this Sh Shiva, which is a prototype of the Christ, Prototype of the Christ, well, and one thing is the mythology of Shiva. In the book, Shiva the Erotic, the Erotic, Shiva the Erotic Ascetic. But in the other book, the other book, it becomes a sage, which is a high priest, or a scholar, a high priest called Erba. And Erba's anger gives rise to a submarine mare, a horse, a white horse. Same white horse in the book of Revelations. Same white horse when you see tri-star pictures. And you see the white horse jumping over tri-star pictures with the what's called, that's Pegasus in the Greek mythology. Pegasus, you will see Pegasus in the movie Clash of the Titans, which is the Horus myth, great movie, Clash of the Titans. You'll see the owl, boo-boo, up in that mother. That means wise one in Clash of the Titans. But you will see Pegasus, the winged horse. The winged horse is the Christ, called Chrysalis in Greece. So now, we get Pegasus, or that white horse, in the Greek mythology. In the Greek mythology, you get the goddess Medusa, with the snakes in the head. The goddess, the snakes in the head, that's nothing but the kundalini energy in us. The snakes in the head represent the different glands, the pineal pituitary and all these glands. The thalamus and all this type of stuff they talk about in the head. Her head is cut off, which means the kundalini rises to the head, the crown chakra opens, and what happens? Pegasus is born. What is Pegasus? Pegasus represents your soul. Now follow me on this. In the Hindu myth, Shiva, or is Shiva in one mythology, it's a sage named Urva in another mythology, gets angry. He gets mad. And from his anger, the Kundalini energy produces the submarine doomsday horse, Mare, through anger. Everything that the church is telling you not to deal with. Through his anger, the energy produces the Christ. Produces the Christ. So obviously, whatever situation it is to shut down a motherfucker from rising, the church is telling you you need to deal with all this. You don't need to deal with none of that stuff. You see what I'm saying? You don't need to deal with any of that. But it's the same submarine mayor and Pegasus, born from Medusa's head, is the same aspect. 
But that's Urva or that's Sheba that produces this particular male. And they say what they have to do? They say that they have to put this male, after the male is produced, or this horse, this Pegasus is produced, they have to take it and put it deep in the bottom of the ocean till the end days. And then the doomsday male will rise up again and destroy the earth. Now, where's the bottom of the ocean? The bottom of the ocean is not the ocean that you see on the physical earth. The bottom of the ocean is the root chakra. And the anger that unleashes that root chakra is still the sexual energy or given away to indulgence. Whatever shit is your vice. In this case, one of the key ones that I went through this whole thing the other the, 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 uh, hour ago was the government is trying to stop the fucking music. Now you go all over this country. I was in Cleveland. White people is partying. Black people on their side of town, we don't even know where the fuck they are. Whatever they're doing, they ain't partying. You see what I'm saying? You go all over the country, white folks is partying. You go to Buckhead, them motherfuckers got club after club after club. They got one little pony, a little pitiful club, a little club, Kaya, and have a hundred thousand black people because they done shut down the club. They'd be a line two, two goddamn miles long. Hell, you can't party up a damn nowhere in a shit where you like this. You can't even get the moves or whatever the deal is. Plus, the rap music ain't really set to give you no high energy dance music. You see what I'm saying? It's a chill out music. You see what I'm saying? So, here again, here again. Now, like we say, the motherfuckers from the damn Caribbean be partying like shit. You see what I'm saying? But that's still a form of the, that still represents the minority in this country, whereas you got some cities where you don't even have influx of the people from the, from the islands. Some, 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 not country, some, some states. But I don't care whether you go all over the country, the nightlife of the 70s and even the 80s is gone. Because here again, through the music, through some form of stimulants, and some storm of, of complete sleep, going back, recapping what we've been talking about the last couple of months, where you're not being able to have access to the dream worlds, all of that type of stuff is shutting down the submarine wear. But don't get me wrong now. The monitor here is, when they start fighting amongst themselves, Oliver Elijah Muhammad said that, you will know it's over when the motherfuckers turn against each other. When there's infighting amongst the elite. You see what I'm saying? In this case, Israel making a fool out of itself. Catholics making a fool out of itself. Believe me, Catholicism ain't, ain't nothing conspiracy blow wide open. If the Catholic Church and the Pope didn't want you to know about the damn shit, you wouldn't know. Because basically, the Illuminati runs the airways. And what they don't report is not reality. So, because the matter of fact, they're giving us that. That is because they want us to know it. And then again, the whole Islamic thing. So the basic structures that is shut down the muse are now under attack. I don't care if it's orchestrated or not. There is a Bacchanalian energy. We don't give a day. It don't have to happen by the masses and motherfuckers in the church. It's only talking about the ones that are conscious. But too often the conscious community is on lockdown because these motherfuckers, based on the consciousness, is a thousand ways not uh, on how to be righteous. Now, you, you, you piggyback off of the uh, argument I had in Charlotte. The argument I had in Charlotte was um, this brother, they're going to stand up because I said, look, first of all, we need to get out of this this aspect of the chastising that is based on what we're going to go through based on the judgment is based on what we did in a matrix that don't exist in the first place when we were in the dream. And this is being an illusion. But if I say, no, no, man, I do know about Egyptian shit here, and they have a, a judge, man, and they got to weigh your heart with the feathers, and I'm like, look, first of all, when we was learning this stuff here the last couple of months, what we was actually doing was on the last couple of years with, with the afro those are historians. So therefore, they don't know about metaphysical reasons 
So therefore, all getting the historical answer, well, this is the origin of where the judgment scene in the Bible comes from. But basically, like I said before, they took the same model of what the Bible was talking about of fundamentalism and tried to apply this shit to the Egyptians. It didn't have nothing to do with that. The judgment of the ancient Camites or the judgment of the ancient mystery systems around the world is an alchemical judgment. It has nothing to do with what you did when you was in the dream. It's whether you alchemically line up to go to the next level. So if you were not born of the original substance, the original substance, by being the original people, you don't line up to go to the next level. Now, I might add this particular part also, too. Uh, I might add this particular part also, too. This thing is going down now into, in, in all honesty, yes, the percentage of white folks that don't apply to this is a great number, but there is still a 2 to 5%. What's the name says four in the in the in the African arts of biological psychiatry? Two to four percent of them people that's black. And the reason why some of these people, remember I was telling you, the book of Enoch, I, I started to say this, but I didn't get it. The book of Enoch, R. H. Charles book says, there will be people that will write stuff and they will lie on you throughout history. But there will become a time when there will be those particular people who you think have done you wrong, as far as this race that they're talking about, will write stuff in your favor. Do not make the mistake to, to ostracize or to cast these particular people out because you think that they are not the ones. They're going to be, they say there will be an appearance of the enemy. So they say it's going to be a group of white folks in this kind of thing because they also go in and they... In the book of Ena R. H. Charles book, they go in, they talk about steel mountains. What is a steel mountain? A fucking skyscraper. The basis of a skyscraper is made out of steel. They talk about these things in the book of Enoch. And right at that same time when they're talking about that, they will talk about there will be a group of white folks that will write stuff in your favor. Do not be on a certain level that you don't get the bigger picture. That you throw that all out and don't want to do no shit because of the color of somebody's skin. You see what I'm saying? Why did they say that? Because they're still talking about the 2 to 4% of white folk that ain't white. You see, they are black. You see, they might be incarnated in a white family or whatever the deal is, but you'd be like, how the fuck you motherfuckers can do that shit? That's been an enigma to, the, to us. You see what I'm saying? That's been an enigma to us because uh, cause, cause ultimately they can't hear music. But what explains a steely dan? Somebody up in there is a nigger. You see what I'm saying? What, ex what explains a fucking Gino Vanelli? Anybody ever heard this motherfucker here? The uh, best goddamn slow music you want to get some fucking Gino Vanelli. Get you some fucking Gino Vanelli. You want to romance some shit? Get some that Italian nigger. Gino Vanelli. You see what I'm saying? So what explains these elements of a fucking Pat Matheny? You mean this motherfucker here? Or oh, goddamn, like to say, Jocko Pastorius. Or oh, even Joe Zawinow, like to say, some weather report. What explains these crackers? They, but even, even, even um, Farrakhan said, every now and then you get a motherfucker jump their nature. When we talk about alchemy, we're not even talking to the surface level. We talk about the inner level and stuff like that now, which explains how these motherfuckers can hear the music. Because Clint, certainly, if I can listen to this shit and say, God damn, this shit here is on. They can hear the music and I can listen to damn them five or six white motherfuckers shit and don't, don't hear the music at all. You understand what I'm saying? Don't hear the music at all. You see what I'm saying? I can even listen to some hard rock and roll that apparently somebody in there had Produced the hard rock and roll based on the blues motifs that could hear the music. Then I can hear some hard rock and roll and some crazy, straight up crazy shit. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So my point here is we're talking about on that particular level of the muse, uh, on that particular level of the, um, uh, uh, of, of the inner melanin and the judgment that they're talking about is an outcome. He said, no, but they got the, they're weighing in the heart. I said, man, you're talking, it's a, 
You're talking about something that's metaphysical and you're trying to make it in these same mundane levels. Everybody standing in the goddamn line to be judged. That kind of dumb shit. I said it's a hell and actually it'll take a million years to judge all these fools down here. But the key here is, so they said, but he said, well, how can you explain the 47 seven laws of Maya or the 147 negative confessions and all that? I said, and I've explained this. When the person is reciting, and I talked about this last time, when they're reciting the negative confessions, it's not based on what the physical body has done. Obviously, if it's based on the physical body, I have not done this. That means you just stood in a line like this here and, and didn't do shit for you know, umpteen years. It wasn't talking about what the physical body had done this. The, the person saying, I haven't done this because his soul on the inside is lying dormant. It's a baby called Harpocrates. It's lying dormant and the soul has not done these things. Remember in the book Barnes, the other Bible, they say that some cannot get to the other level because they are not capable of attaining the other level. In the other Bible, Bible, what's that? What's that? Barnstone? Barnstone. Uh, yeah. They're not capable of attaining the. No, they say some cannot get to salvation because they're not capable of attaining salvation. Which means they don't have the alchemical workings to go to another level. They are a fucking hybrid. They say, but then there are others. They cannot accept decay, cannot accept decay, they will be, they, they will go to salvation because what their soul is, is salvation. It is saved, it is the soul that is saved because the soul is the savior. So the whole concept of talking to God is talking about the God inside of you. But it says just as gold is placed in the mud, the, the mud over thousands of years, the mud does not harm the gold, we cannot damage our souls no matter what we go through. Uh, the it's a Gnostic text called uh, the Gospel of um, Adam. You want to get a Gospel of Adam in the, in the Gnostic text in the other Bible? Um, we cannot um, we we cannot damage our soul no matter what we undertake and stuff. You see what I'm saying? So when the, when, when the actual person was reciting the negative confessions, it wasn't the physical body. The priest knew that it wasn't that. That's impossible for you to go somewhere based on what you did down here and shit. When as with most Christians, just a thought puts your ass in purgatory or hell. Right? They were talking about the soul cannot do it because the soul is the only thing that exists. The hologram can't go nowhere in the first motherfucking place. It didn't do nothing because it never existed. The soul, only the ego is the one that made all these crazy shit, but even the ego is an illusion. You see what I'm saying? Even the ego is an illusion. So they say that your soul cannot do these things because your, your soul... Your, your soul cannot be damaged because your soul is asleep. That's where you get the sleeping Buddha. Or if you get the, 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 the god Harpocrates, which is the little baby Horus, Heru Parkrot or Harpocrot is the Greek word. That's the baby Horus with the thumb in the mouth and the Horus lock. You also, that baby Horus was converted into the god Cupid in Rome. Same baby, the divine child. And then later on, the baby Jesus. The baby Jesus, you know, which goes back to this particular science based on a, 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 a science of the ego. And then we go, we, uh, we, we, we got some more stuff to come back tomorrow, but I want to give you this type of thing here, whereas it talks about it in the book, the introduction to chaos, man. Did you ever get that? Leave a chaos? Yeah. Leave, a null in the, leave a null in the psycho knot. Yeah. First of all, chaos is what melanin is. Richard King tell you that melanin is chaos. In the book, Introduction to Chaos Magic, Leave a Null and the Cycle Knot. And he also wrote the book, Leave a Chaos. Peter Carroll is the name of the person. But in there, there's a chapter where he says, you will have all these people say that they have neutralized the ego and they have gone to the divine. They say they have done nothing of the sort. They have basically inflated the ego and have gone insane. Now, this is very key to what's going on right now and stuff. That's why even the Nation of Islam said it. Unseasoned knowledge is dangerous to the virgin mind. To the virgin mind. I'm going to give you an incident that happened. Um, remember when I first started, I said, I said that 
There's a lot of shit going on. It's just be some shit that's just going on. It's just be some weird shit. Like you said, you, you, you misplaced your keys for what you call but your keys weren't misplaced. They was missing. Well, that shit happened to me last summer. I was drinking that damn Myers room and listening to that music. Now, the key is when I get up, is you got to drink a lot of water to offset that shit because basically it will de dehydrate you. The, 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 de the, the five sisters don't, the three sisters don't do that as, as much. But you drink a lot of water. Well, this morning I got up, the goddamn water was gone. I, I just bought two goddamn gallons last night. Wasn't no water in the house. That meant some entity came in the fucking house and took my damn water. Took my water. You see, same thing happened, 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 uh, what, uh, uh, two weeks ago, Sister Olivia, we was up in, um, um, up in, uh, Magic Johnson Theater, went to go see Blade, it was Blade 2. They made a good karate movie, but the, the, the science was nothing like Blade 1, you know, it was nothing like Blade 1 and shit like that, no. But up in there, uh, uh, she had this ring of mine. She put it on a necklace, the way around, around the what you call it, and had it on in the movie. We heard the shit drop. I thought I had dropped something out of my pocket as I checked my stuff. Got home, called the theater. I said, well, that motherfucker ain't in there. If it ain't up in there, that means, I said, that means there's a spirit fucking with us, a spirit doing some stealing and some stuff. Okay. What happened was, she called, clean up crew, said they didn't see nothing the next morning. I said, the spirit got that. I said, okay, let's see what happened here. She came and said that the necklace was popped. It wasn't like it broke or something, it fell off. It popped, somebody actually snatched it. And I said, now that's interesting, I said, because it was a sister named Erica Harris, was a psychic sister, one of her heads was Oshun. As far as one of her, you know, they call it your head. That's the goddess that you line up with as far as your energy. And she had a ring on, and Oshun liked the ring, and Oshun took the ring off her finger. Oshun took the ring off her finger. So, I said, this happened. So, she took the broken necklace and threw it in the wastebasket. Brother Arde came to the house to give her, uh, to, to give her a reading. And she came out, she said, did you take this damn shit out the wastebasket and put it on the dresser? I said, no. She said, well, it's interesting. The broken necklace is out of the wastebasket. It's on the dog on dre uh, dresser. But the rest of my necklaces that had the, the dependence through it, dependence, what is it? Dependence was on the dresser, but the chains was all gone. In this case, it was Big Mama breaking through. Big Mama is Yemen, y'all. And in my particular case, for some reason since last summer, every now and then she feels neglected in the aspect that I'm not recognizing her. And so as a result, she shows her ass sometimes. So that means I have to go out and I have to build an altar to her. So I had to go get a blue and white candle. I had to go get some, um, I, I had to go get some blues. I give her some elixir. I, I had to fix her, basically fix her altar to her. And she was pleased about it. You see what I'm saying? She was pleased about it. So I do know that those type of entities can do things like that, and she's considered one of the great mother entities and stuff like that. Now, what about these other ones that is trying to stop you from getting to the other realm because they understand that their time is up? So what's happening is there's a group of old entities, most of these male, these male entities that don't want for us to seize power. And as a result, there's all kind of shit that's happening to conscious people. One of the things that they're doing here is, is this, and I must go into this particular science right now. Um, in order to try to understand this, so because I'm quite sure that most people, when I say this thing, they say Bob is losing his mind because everybody wants to believe that everything that, that, that comes out of Africa or everything that comes in, in some things is just so divine. And it's not necessarily so. Um, I told you at the beginning that they use these Europeans a lot of time as a decoy so that these gods can sit back and do all kind of fucked up stuff to us that we don't rise. And we're looking at the dog on white boy and he's only a pawn in the game. And they've been using this motherfucker since slavery or since the Moors were ousted from Spain. 
and it ain't even them. It's a hierarchy, which is a bunch of white boys. And remember, there was a bunch of people, even David Icke and them, in so many ways, they distorted stuff. But William Bram, the book, is just saying, they were saying that the Illuminati and all them was run by a bunch of aliens. But it's not aliens. These are hierarchies. These are hierarchies that set over them, and they channel and tap into them. Well, I'll tell you like it is. Uh, a lot of the, the, the stuff you get in most of the Christian stuff and a lot of the ancient stuff, a lot of that stuff, those systems have shut down. And they, they, those systems have been in use for thousands of years. So like I said, those hierarchies, they have to go to, they have to go to the, uh, uh, go or stay in the remaining systems who hadn't shut down since ancient time. In this case, some of the only systems we have left that's, that's still viable, that, 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 that's still viable, is your West African systems. In this case, the Gnostic talk about the Demiurge and these group of people that rule, that was the architects of creation. You'll get that in several books, the Nag Hammadi Library by James M. Robinson, the Gnostic Scriptures by Bentley Layton. And they talk about the Demiurge, these particular interests that created a counterfeit reality or uh, on a, on a, a, a botched a job on an abortion creation and trapped souls down here to, to rule. They call it the Demiurge, Adalabroth, Yahweh lines up into that, even Zeus, and different aspects. In the West African aspect, and even based on the, uh, uh, the, the Yoruba world of, of good and evil, that's a leg bar. And his warrior, Ogun. In this particular book, Ogun, the African Ogun, in this particular book, he directly sets over Zorabanda and them, which is nothing but a form of Anubis. El Cristo Negro is in there, which is a form of Osiris. El Cristo Rey, which is a form of, of Amen Ra. And this is the underworld realm. These particular entities, now what we're dealing with here, so, so we don't get all this duality thing of good and evil and all that, what we're dealing with here is, we're dealing with a fucking family fight. To understand this, you got to know something about a bit of the nature of either voodoo or a bit of the nature of the Yoruba religion, Yoruba religion itself. These guys always, you see what I'm saying, had their squabbles and skirmishes. You understand what I'm saying? Some of the goddesses don't like you to invoke their name with the other ones. Who that, yin and yang, or why you don't get along? You see what I'm saying? So this is a family fight, so don't get all hung all up. I'm not talking about in your Christian form, but ooh, there's these people. There's, they are Negroes just like we are. You see what I'm saying? And so there's a family fight going on in the hierarchy, in the principality. That's just the way it is. And you think I'm lying? Just read it in the Yoruba material, in their mythology. The tales of the Yoruba. They go through all kind of shit all the time. One of the things here is that they locked Oshun out of a form of creation. That's because Oshun existed in a creation, a creation before the physical earth. And they and, and, and both Alegba and Ogun locked Oshun out of the creation of this earth. Now, dealing with this particular thing on this war of principalities and this family fight. Ogun, Obatala, Shango, and um, Ogun, Obatala, Shango, and Legba, which is the chief of these mothers. Ogun is the warrior. They stepped to us in March of last year. Because this is because you have that communication. Simply say, Obama created, he got, well, what do you think all these goddamn ancient books is written off of? Did, did these things come about? Because they had these texts that existed on other planets and all that shit, and they flew them here on the spaceship, or did they ultimately channel these texts? How do you think that all this stuff we're dealing with, what we call my knowledge, it comes from one realm and is transferred from the psychic level into another realm? Well, we still do that. So we have the particular scholarship, but there are several levels of scholarship. One aspect is we have a whole psychic phenomenon to get things, and I told you they're different psychic levels. Well, one sister and uh, uh, one sister and her daughter, we was dealing with this particular stuff, whereas we invoke Otisha, Sheola, Teacha, Omagumu, 
Tecumbo, and Locayo. And these were supposed to be entities from the outer realms that will rule into the future. But they are also extension of the level of the deities in the Apollo region. So this particular dark side of Santeria is nothing but the, the underworld realm that will become the manifested world and the world of light will disappear. Well, Ogun and Elegba in them represents the gods that sat over the ruling aspect of this dispensation of time, which was the creation period, which is the one that is, we're in a twilight era of coming out of. You get it? So those particular ones, because their time is up, their family members, they don't want to get up off the goddamn power because they are feeble, they are old, and they just hate change. So as a result, they got pissed and they doing a whole lot of bullshit and fucking with folks. Now one way they messing with folks is we had some other seers that got mixed up into some shit because one sister, she, I turned her on to start, uh, uh, to start seeing at a certain time and start doing this divining. This damn sister got the big head. She, she got the ego that I'm the shit, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. Did you tell the motherfuckers I'm this? I'm like, you just got in this shit two days ago. Two years ago, your fucking ass was a goddamn bona fide holy roller. Sunday go to meeting, Christian. Now all of a sudden, you the high potentate goddess of the universe. I'm this, I'm that. Did you tell the motherfuckers I'm about this? I'm that. I'm like, look, you need to get on top of your fucking ego. I said, look, well, I said, look, yeah, I talk a lot of shit. I said, you know, I've been in this shit for goddamn 15 years. I said, I spoke for damn near 10 years. This, is, this month is my 10-year anniversary. And I said, but spy all the bullshit, I did it with a level of motherfucking humility. One of my humilities is I ain't got shit from Shinola by being broke as a motherfucker and never got over on the goddamn people by saying, give me your goddamn money. So I'm not saying, look, you need to, look, yes, I talk a whole lot of shit. I say, but I've been in this thing for a minute. I say, but I ain't out to get over on the damn people. I said, but you just got in this shit. You're doing some damn good work and all, based on the only thing she's doing is Zara Banner is telling this motherfucker in her ear what to tell me. And a lot of the time it's confirmation because I already know it. But oh, no. She just, a, I'm the damn greatest. I said, you fucking up. The damn cops you two miles into this shit. And that's what Alma Elijah Muhammad used to say. He knew more than anybody in the nation of Islam, but everybody else was more arrogant than he was. Some people just got off the street two days ago talking shit. That's why I say it ain't good for you to learn some shit and go home talking shit to your people. But your people got a remedy for that motherfucking ass. You go talking that shit to your people, and you always lose that fight. Why is that? Going in there trying to teach mama something. See, me and I say, you don't teach mama shit. You know what I'm saying? She, got, she ain't going to accept that shit because she had your ass. But why is it, you know, you, I don't learn this shit, I'm going to go home and beat up on the motherfuckers. And, you, and why is it that most times the motherfuckers go home with them goddamn ignorant niggas, they always lose that fight. You be sitting there in a the damn corner and just be laughing at you and your African shit. See what I'm saying? You be shaking your head, these niggas don't know nothing. Them niggas whip your ass because it ain't about teaching nobody nothing. Who ain't called to know this stuff. So I'm like, uh, don't, you know, with the ego thing. So she kept right on. She kept right on. One of the other sisters got a motherfucking hatred for the males in this particular shit. So when damn leg boss started lurking and, 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 and Ogun, Ogun and them took over their minds. Because that's what happened. That's what the book said. The book, leave a in the psychonaut. They said, you thinking you all this and shit. And what it is is these entities use, the entities use your ego to barrel their mind into yours. And then give you their thoughts and make you think that they're your own. And then you go crazy. These are fucking damn entities up in here. And how to ward them off. It's a form of humility until you learn the science of what's going on down there. But especially no motherfucker crawl out from under a rock yesterday. You know, 
1998, you in the church. Then all of a sudden, you the goddamn high goddess of it all and all this kind of shit here. And that's where the ego shit comes in. Because now leg bond them, they're doing all kind of shit. They're rolling and they're fucking up black people in the aspect. They're messing up black people in the doggone aspect and all because they don't want you to get to another level. So you got motherfuckers going crazy now. And they're going crazy because they're going crazy based on that a hierarchy that don't want us to rise. And what they do is, is they rule based on your weaknesses. So they will rule based on you got a fucked up friend that you fold the cut loose. They will somehow make an incident out of that messed up friend. As well as, and I talked about this the last thing, and I talked I talk about this the last uh, time, is they also rule um, based on if you're in a relationship, and the certain amount of, there's a bond that comes with your relationship, and then that karma burns up, and you no longer have this particular job you do together within the relationship, and you stay the fucking together with the karma burned up. You know, ain't nobody goddamn fault. The karma burned up, which means you have severed your ties, and you still stay together, then these motherfuckers can come in there with a conscious situation and start fucking with you. You feel the land? That's why it's good not to let the social reason for staying with a motherfucker that you can't stand be the basic premise of why you staying together with somebody. You see what I'm saying? If the karma, not karma, karma, desire, once that burns up and that bond burns up, you can no longer be with them. It ain't got shit to do with your waterhead babies, your child, your house, or nothing. You got to get the fuck on because the physical realm has nothing to do with the spirit realm. And you got motherfuckers that be lingering in situations based on social shit. What the damn family don't think? Fuck the family. You got to exit that situation because if you stay, then what happens is the karma turns into fucking karma. And there's no universal karma, some God looking down on you. and do, But you are the gods and you create your own karma. So we are the creator of karma. And basically, if a certain energy is not connected, it's static and it's going to create some shit. You see what I'm saying? So you have to exit that particular situation because these principalities are going to make sure that if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. You see, and so this is some stuff that's actually happening with this particular aspect, but like Wendy O'Flaherty said, uh, which is a book that, there's a book, all of these are good books, are always out of print, but it's been in print this in the 90s, so you'll be able to get it. Now let me try to explain this to you so that you understand. See, when well, you got to give that white boy credit, if it's some shit that they need to get to the bottom of, they got the means, and we be arguing shit, they get to the bottom of this shit. The University of Chicago and the University of California, Berkeley. When you go to these ancient Indian texts from India, the people in India, they just got these one or two little books and all these little old, these little old, little, 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 little fucking people is teaching them this shit here. But the ancient shit, the white boy got, because he was up in that motherfucker for what, over a hundred years, taking that shit. So they got volumes of the shit. And them motherfucker, little, 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 little motherfucker with that shiny ass head, a black motherfucker with shiny ass head, and shit like that. Them motherfuckers are teaching on the fundamental aspect of this stuff here. They got half the knowledge. The white boy got the major shit. So what these motherfuckers did from down 1970 to, to like the 1990s or the early 80s is that they compile these texts. And I'm going to tell you what the fuck is going on. They compile these damn texts. And when the old Flaherty and them, they compiled some texts and what they had concluded based on the shit that they got in these Sanskrit texts is that these fucking entities that lord over us are some of the most worst cutthroat and dangerous motherfuckers in the world, the ones that you pray to. And they concluded that these gods say to whatever we do, to hold humans down because we don't want them to ultimately rule because these divas that they call the gods, 
the shining ones, these gods, were nothing but a bogus tribe of entities that overthrew their parents, the pristine, much more superior gods, which now reside in us, the, 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 the humans. And so they overthrew the Asuras. I talked about this stuff before. The Asuras become demons, but what they have concluded in the University of Chicago, and what I've been trying to tell the motherfuckers, they concluded to the same conclusion I got through outside of this information, that the word demon and the word human is the same. So you against the demonic world, you against your own self, because the Damien is nothing but the soul inside of you. The Damien and soul is the same. The word Damien, the word melanin, the word Hades, the word Satan is the same as the word soul. The pre-existent sons. The, 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 the sons. So the whole concept here is the return of the ancient evil is us. The problem here is we have been thinking of our particular selves as good. Now, one of the great mysteries, yeah, one of the great mysteries in ancient Kemet is when they go down what is called the Book of the Gates, and that's when the soul descends deeper and deeper into what is called the twat or the underworld at the hours, each hour of the night. The closer it descends down to the stuff, the more and more the layers of the illusion starts to pop off of this shit. So it starts off as a human, and then it starts to descend, going into the underworld, and all these illusions, bam, pops off. I thought I was this, that, that, that pops off. All this shit pops off, it keeps popping off, it keeps popping off till they get to the goddamn underworld, and guess what? When they get to the damn underworld, guess what? Only thing is left is a whole bunch of monsters. That's what we are. Now, you know, I want you to hear what I'm trying to say. Now, he makes an allusion to it in his book uh, called the um, E. Wallace Budge book, The Egyptian Heaven and Hell. There was a little small volume that was put out years ago. They waited 90 years to put the original text out from from 1906, I think, to 1996, which is three other volumes. And in there they talk about these monsters that's in these realms when you descend deeper into, your, in, into the underworld. Whenever we shed all of this stuff that we call human, we turn into motherfucking monsters. The, the predator, alien, Godzilla. No, listen to me what I'm trying to tell you. It's not just a high glyph. What I'm trying to tell you, now listen to me what I'm trying to tell you. In these texts is called the monstrous soul. They say man is so far removed from what it really was and so when it gets a glimpse of his soul, it's fighting at what it sees. Because guess what? When you see them monsters and them demons in the brood at night, guess what? That's your fucking soul. We are monsters. The ancient evil. I'm not telling you some shit that I try to give all the scholarship and stuff like this and all. It's called the monstrous Soul. The book Dreams in the Underworld. They talk about these night brood, these breeds. Go back and get the, the, the Greek text where they talk about the Titans. When the Titans fell, what were these Titans? There was a bunch of brood and a breed of these slimy, grotesque things. That's what the fuck fell. That's what the Olympian realm of Zeus and them defeated. They defeated a bunch of monsters. It's in the goddamn movie Demon Knight. What's the name of that movie? Uh, Tales from the Crypts. Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Demon Knight with Billy Zane and Jada Pickett. And they say, in the beginning, demons used to rule the earth. All right? If you get the movie 
you get the movie Wishmaster 1 and 2. This for the Islamic folks. They say in the beginning, jinns used to rule. And the Wishmaster say what? We get enough wishes, jinns walk the earth again. Especially the Wishmaster 2. Then we are the jinn. We are the Damien. But I ain't talking about some good shit. I, that, I was candy coating that shit for years. Oh, you know the Damien is good. You know, I ain't really saying, I'm trying to tell you, in the book, a cult of the, let me see this book here, uh, y'all all right? Yeah. Yeah. Ruthlessness. Damon, look now. The Cthulhu. Cthulhu is a group of monsters that used to rule. Used to rule. That was overthrown. And where man lives now, Cthulhu, Shemigarov, Hastar, Yosathos, Azathos, used to rule, but they will be ushered in by one dark messenger called Nearly Hotep, the dark god. And he's called Crawling Chaos. Now, Cthulhu and them used to rule, and we and where where man they say where man rules now, the great old ones used to rule. When the great old ones, where man rules now, the great old ones shall rule again. Now stick with me on this. This is very important. They got this H.P. Lovecraft dream of all these damn Cthulhu and all these monsters. And the basis of the old monster movie and the basis of horror comes from H.P. Lovecraft. Cthulhu mythos, with the call of Cthulhu being the first in 1922. Now, he was getting these things from the dream realm of what he was seeing, and he was a racist. But why, if a man a racist would name the ultimate messenger of his mythology that made him rich? A black man, who was supposed to be the only human of all of them, was the black man, nearly hotel, crawling chaos. Now, stick with me. A guy named Fred L. Pelton in 1947 traced the Cthulhu mythos, which is supposed to be fictional, and lined it up with ancient Egyptian, Sumerian, and Greek mythology and proved that the Cthulhu shit of these monsters used to rule is in the, the, the ancients have been talking about this shit for years. And when he first did it, uh, uh, did, did, did this particular a uh, 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 book wrote this particular thesis, nobody in 1947 would print it. So he ended up dying, his kids sold off the shit, and they weren't able to get this shit to 1996. The, the guy to the, occult, the, the Cthulhu cult, the, the guy to the, and he has a whole section called, um, a section called Pre-Human and Non-Human Races, Non-Human Cultures. Now, and he calls this shit evil mythology. They were non-human. So, the basis of the monster movie that people have been scared of all these years, or oh, these monsters gonna retake the earth, guess what? That's us. This is why the white man gives you religion. He know you ain't gonna never tap into this shit here. This shit here is so motherfucking crazy that you never get it. That's what it always gonna come to. The Godzilla. You see what I'm saying? These particular entities, but it, uh, these particular entities that are pre-human are non-human. But in the book of the gates, which is the, your hell scene, like Diop said, but Diop, shake ass to Diop before he died, came to Atlanta, went to the King Center. They even named one day of his money, shake ass to Diop today. He said that the damn Hebrews didn't even have a hell concept until 100 years before Jesus Christ, and they took the Egyptian book of gates and drafted it into the hell concept, and that becomes the whole Sheol thing. But the Egyptian Book of the Gates, they only put the complete Book of the Gates out, which is called the Egyptian Book of uh, Heaven and Hell, a big, a big green book. It's, it's, I got it and all. I mean, it's just trying to translate the shit. I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, it's, it's worthless. But they, they, they didn't put it out for, they held it for 90 damn years. But in that, the motherfucking I need uh, the person who's going through this shit, when he gets back to his destination, when he gets home, he turns into a goddamn monster. And that's what we are. And whenever you have sex, you express that shit. Whenever you give away to the muse, 
Whenever you give away to the indulgence, you tap back into that primal energy. That's why they got you in church. We have become humans when we are something else. We are titan figures. It was in the damn movie Toy, Small Soldiers. But I saw that movie. The decent ones was them little monster-like figures. And the only thing they wanted to do was what? Get back home. The fucking white man was the fucking all the army shit. He even had some niggas up in there trying to kill him. And, and, what, and, and guess what the white man's job was? They just wanted to kill them monsters. That was they, they every waking hour was to kill them monsters. So if you line up with them motherfuckers, then you are enemy too. Small soldiers. Get that movie. They dropped in that movie. But those entities that you saw, that's us. That's why the predator has dreadlocks. It's interesting because in, in the whole alien thing, and, uh, um, uh, and, and, and the brother Sky was, was, was saying that they were supposed to make the movie The Alien versus The Predator, because they two were the same damn people. They never did get around to making the movie, but they did put out two paperback books on the shit. And although they got a little white girl, she's standing up in front of the alien, she got on all this African shit with the dreadlocks, she got the braids in her hand, all that shit. To, they kind of throw you off, put a little white girl up there. But remember, in, the, in Predator 2, in Predator 2, when he went up against Danny Glover, Danny Glover whipped his ass because they were the same Negroes. And he gave Danny Glover a gun. You see what I'm saying? Why the hell Danny, ain't no motherfucking Predator 1, nobody can live. And what's going he looked at him and all, and all of them stood up there. They supposed to have waxed them Danny Glover ass when he fucked their damn cousin up. They looked at him, gave him a gun, and said, oh, man, we the same motherfucker. They did the same shit in the movie, Mars Attack, when damn Jim Brown was dressed as a pharaoh, and he the only motherfucker went up against them damn Martians and beat their ass and ended up living. They was killing everything walking. They even killed old Uncle Tom Colin Powell, played by, um, what you call it in the movie? He was the first motherfucker to die. Like Christopher Atticus. Pitch Black. Class example. Pitch Black, the only thing that lived was, uh, was, 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 uh, Paul Winfield was the Uncle Tom in the thing. He was Colin Powell. But in Pitch Black, the only thing that lived in this particular movie was two black men. Now, now goddamn, them the first motherfuckers die in a damn science fiction. In Pitch Black, the only thing that lived was two black men, one could see in the dark because he had melanin. And they were saying the other one could see too if he wasn't so wrapped up in Islam. That's what the shit was about. Keith David, they said if you were not wrapped in religion, your blinders would be off and you could see too. You see what I'm saying? That's why he had to get his ass whipped in the movie they lived to put on the goddamn shades. Same nigga. Then he saw in the movie Daily, and the white man had to beat his ass and say, put on the damn shade so you can see the truth. Yeah. Roddy Piper. Yeah. But in Pitch Black, the only two motherfuckers that had some little old white girl, and she had to be on her fucking period. That's the reason why she lived. To get that period thing again. But she, but they, all the motherfuckers died, and all the most fake white Arabs got killed and everything. Only thing lived was two black people, and one, and one of them motherfuckers went up against, here it is again, he went up against one of them monsters and beat his ass. Saying the only thing can beat this shit because they were number cousins. Pitch black. When the darkness comes out, that's when they rise up. That's why in the, in the, in, in the, in the darkness, at night life, they got to shut you down because the freaks come out at night. So they got you in the damn house watching Saturday Night Live. <laughs> this is the kind of science that's going now. So it's all in the particular myth. We're going to go deeper into some more of this stuff here tomorrow. You know. But the key here is, what I'm trying to get at is, the monsters that they talk about, uh, the monsters that they talk about, they got all these books on mystical beasts and mythical beasts. But those particular monsters that they talk about, that is us. So even when we are trying to go somewhere, you can't get there by trying to be good. Now, we're not talking about you going out and go slap somebody, baby. Because to, to do something in the physical like that would give away to a physical act and you still fucking with the matrix. 
We're talking about a mentality, whereas at least if you know you're a damn monster. You understand what I'm saying? Go get you some goddamn hogging dolls or something, or some, some liquor, or, or toot on that herb, or whatever shit that floats your goddamn boat. You know what I'm saying? You see? Whatever the deal is, you know, whatever. Some chains and some whips or whatever the deal is. You know, whatever the shit that is uncool that you like to do. You know what I'm saying? Do it to give away to the stuff that is outside of you, outside of the official to the superficial, outside of the conventional to the non-conventional, because ultimately you're giving away to that particular aspect of the monster that they want to shut down. But another thing they say that music soothes the savage beast, there's some stuff in the sound. You see, there's some stuff that is inside of the sound that they are stopping us from getting to. You see what I'm saying? So there's a combination of things that, 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 that work. First of all, it don't matter about the masses of the people. Why you say, why the masses of the people have gone into this thing? It don't matter about the masses of the people. It only matters based on the conscious people. That's the ones that they're worried about. It's us. You see what I'm saying? So, we're the ones that got on lockdown. We're the ones that's more righteous and everything. You know what I'm saying? Walking around with a big old stick in our hand and all kind of robes and shit in our rendition of some old Moses figure. You know what I'm saying? We are the ones. Because we get stuck in things and we don't go further. We feel comfortable in the first thing that we got that was liberating us from the aspect of ignorance. So the first level we got to, it was so pleasing to know something other than what the shit most niggas been knowing the rest of their life until we got in there and we got stuck. But ultimately, it ain't even about that. Ultimately, the divine has to become the grotesque because ultimately, we're talking about a power that has to go to another level. Now, are you saying that we supposed to become monsters? No, I'm just trying to tell you this particular thing. Things are getting ready to happen, but you have to give in to those particular carnal activities, that vice. You understand what I'm saying? The shit in the Bacchanalian realm, that night realm, the shit that all religions say that you don't supposed to partake in. Bacchus is supposed to be the prototype of the devil, but the word Bacchus and the word Jesus is the goddamn thing. It's an enigma. You see what I'm saying? The word Bacchus, you see what I'm saying? Jesus is a comprised word that came from the goddamn Bacchus because Bacchus was a Roman deity. And the Romans said, well, if we're going to rule and we're going to rule over people, we're going to still put our little shit up in there and really say, this is the real shit. This is the stuff that we never deviated from. They just only use other stuff as a political tool to rule against the people. You see what I'm saying? To rule against the people. Um, what time you got? It's the root against it. Let's go into a question and answer right quick. Um, you know, uh, go into a question and answer right quick. Because, um, hmm? Any questions? Any questions? Well, we're talking about, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. We're talking about something that's so vast now, man. We're talking about something that is so vast now on the earth plane and so out of sync and all that kind of thing here, man. Basically, it's not even about race. It's about energy. Think of it on energy. We say race and stuff because we are the doggone catalyst for that because we are the original people. You see what I'm saying? We are the original people. But what we're talking about here, we're talking about energy and all because the original people is motherfucking in the same. But we do know that if there is some reprieve of this particular information, we know that the original people, whatever they may be, will be the ones that survive. Now, then again, on the other hand, we got to understand what is the offshoot of the original people. And in, in most of those things around the world, you got aspects of original people that has been proven throughout the whole planet Earth right now to this particular day. You see what I'm saying? Right at this particular day, all over the planet, as Elijah Muhammad said. You see what I'm saying? So, um, so it's one of those type of things here and all. But then again, on the other hand, the catalyst is us. And the catalyst is not necessarily the people. When we say catalyst, we're not even just talking about the doggone 
black race as you know it in that particular aspect. We're talking about the conscious ones to bring this thing through. Now that can be, you see what I'm saying? But ultimately, whatever souls there are, those ones will be going back to the other aspect. You see, but like I said before, and I said this in 97, and even the devil Blair bears witness to this. Most of the people commonly known as black people in America have been dead. There's only a few of us left. The rest of motherfuckers are this a whole clone nation. Even Deborah Blair bears witness to that shit. Just about 98% of every damn brother that went into prison within the last damn 10 years was being cloned. And the ones who didn't, it's because of some miracle they got up out of there. But like we said, we got so many uh, incidences going down where people say that they come, put somebody come in the cell and get them, and then they just don't know why, come in the cell and get them, some white folks, and then they end up back in the cell the next morning. And remember I told you about the guy that, um, that was born, and he was born the same year as this sister named Taffeta, and yet the motherfucker don't know what age he is. You know, he 30, tell me he 19, but he's been in prison. You see, so I'm trying to say, this shit is so messed up down here, we're still talking about the energy. But now what we're talking about here is the key to this thing here is, is not to go and get all them bells and all these gurus with the meditation classes to give you a whole bunch of motherfucking, charge you a whole bunch of money to illuminate what they didn't illuminate. I ain't seen none of these motherfucking punk ass niggas illuminate the God yet. But all, ain't none of them talking about, the, the government is not stopping you going and meditating or doing some shit with some bells and some bowls and some this and that. Motherfucker stopping your vice. They messing with your entertainment, your social aspect of life. That's what they shutting down. Your outlet and making sure that the only motherfuckers you get acquainted with, even in the poor fucker you want to meet somebody, is some big asshole. The equality of the damn people you can meet to share some shit with is some damn fools. Are they Christians, one of the two? <laughs> like most people like got a little brother up in, 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 in Philadelphia, he like, damn man, shit, I'm 62. He was 60 at the time. He like, shit, I'm 60. I'm 59. Every motherfucker my age is uh, just on that level is a motherfucker in the church. You know what I'm saying? You cut on my tape, they go run in the other damn room. You know, that kind of stuff, you see. Uh, that, 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 that kind of information, you see what I'm saying? So what we're talking about, we're still, we're still going back, we're still breaking this thing back down to the actual vice aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, on that particular aspect. So give me some question. Anybody? What's that? Thing, so yeah, call up. Mm -hmm. But Don Juan was saying too that people who, uh, who learn to tap into their root system, their eyes are really like they have a glow in the eyes. The people who don't have that are real weak. Their eyes well, it depends. Yeah, but what, they're talking about the primal aspect. Everything that we put on the white boy and shit, we supposed to been doing. Oh, look at him. He's a beast. We even gave him that divine name, the beast, that sits in the middle of the earth, the Sphinx. But the, what they're talking about here is that particular primal nature and stuff is getting back to that particular aspect. Remember in, even in, even Denzel, when he was talking about he had to do the role, the, the, the train for Hurricane, they said, what happened? He said, man, I got caught up in this shit. He said, man, I was beating motherfuckers ass. You know, he was in the gym training for that shit. He said, man, he said, man, I, I really got into this shit, man. He said, shoot, I didn't know I had this competitive aspect. So even all of that type of stuff, whatever it is that floats your boat in the fun and game division, Long as you're not denying yourself, that's what I'm trying to say. Quit denying yourself the indulgence and give away to all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You might like to throw shit on your walls. I don't know whatever the deal is and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And all you know, what's that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what basically what it is. We all have to end the physical body. You understand what I'm saying? We'll end the physical body. That's why I'm saying it's ludicrous that all these new cuffs, they got them all on the radio. And they're thinking that some, these motherfuckers are actually thinking because they're eating some wheatgrass, that they're going to, God is going to favor them or they're going to be better 
And those are my body because they're eating some fucking soy milk and some bullshit. Did in actuality that got some shit to do with them illuminating. So they got a whole intelligentsia now that their religion is motherfuckers is now motherfuckers ain't going to hell and the motherfuckers going to hell and shit because they ate a goddamn chicken pot pie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the black water, this is one of the keys. Now, the sister Kimberly got it in all this. It was an extension of the Bermuda Triangle. But remember, the Bermuda Triangle was nothing but a, 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 a leftover dimension of the Earth before the continental drift or what we call the sinking of Atlantis. But another sister out in California got that the black water off the coast is not just in Florida. They telling people it's Florida. This shit is all over the world, these portholes. Now, these portholes all over the earth, just remember, don't think physical. If they got portholes all over the earth, that means that there's portholes in us. Like dimensions, gateways in the human mind and the soul in us. That lines up. So what you are seeing physically out there is an indication of what's going on on the inside of us. So if there's a black water and black hole out there, and what they say, they say, they ain't no, well, they coming, they lied. The first day, they said there's nothing existing in this shit, no marine life whatsoever, and they didn't know what the hell it was. You see what I'm saying? Right after they announced this damn black water and shit, Israel breaks out. The Catholic Church shit breaks out. See what I'm saying? Right after they announced this shit. Dean Coons Phantoms, the ancient evil. That's what this shit is about. The same monsters in Dean Coons Phantoms, the ancient evil. That's what this thing is about. The same one in In the Mouth of Madness, the movie In the Mouth of Madness. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing. These great old ones, the deep ones, the great old ones, the outer ones. All of this stuff is happening. But that realm is supposed to overtake the realm of repression. Dionysus represents, a uh, Bacchanalian realm represents the return of the repressed. So the, the, the realm of repression can't stand. That's in the movie Chocolat. Anybody saw the movie Chocolat? They had a strict, rigid code of that church shit going down. And at the end, the preacher ended up in the goddamn window eating the candy. Going crazy because, because you know, his woman was in Italy, so-called, and all, and stuff like that. In all honesty, it was some freak stuff that would go on and stuff, and they just broke it down to the chocolate. But, but what happened? The chocolate represented what? Melanin. And they said what? They said that the, the guy from France traveled over to the fucking Americas and met a dark sister from the damn of South America or whatever that deal was, and they said it was putting all that medicinal herbs and stuff in the chocolate and the coca, the cow cow of a coca plant. And there were scientists on there were dealing with the alchemy. And that woman was, and she went back to Europe, but she left his ass with the children walking around France and stuff, going to these villages, liberating them goddamn rigid, frigid ass crackers. And she went up in the thing, and that shit went up against the, what? The Catholic, wasn't it the Catholic Church? Wasn't it the Catholic Church? That chocolate, that melanin, went up against the chocolate the Catholic Church and did what? Whipped their ass. Remember that? Well, that's the same shit going on right now. This stuff is going up against organized religion and fascism. Christian fascism. Religious fascism. Behavioral modification. Fascism. Why the hell you think damn George Bush tell that motherfucker they got to be married now to be on welfare? Before you couldn't have a motherfucking man in the house. Why the hell you think they appoint the same motherfucker that's blowing up owls they appointing he's a big time religious motherfucker? Because religious fascism is the same wall. Thank you, Lord, and pass the fucking ammunition. They go hand in hand like peas and carrots. You see what I'm saying? They go hand in hand, religion and fascist, murderous, male chauvinist murder cults. Why you think the motherfucker talking about you got to be married and all this kind of thing? And they got all these black preachers running the sex shops out of town. You see what I'm saying? A motherfucking black preacher need a whip on his ass and some handcuffs. 
You see what I'm saying? And they got the damn, they got all of them, they got everybody going against, going against the so-called Bacchanalian realm. That's a real order that's taking over. And they going against, they got black preachers going against this damn shit. They got the, they got the, uh, the, the George Bush. Why the hell George Bush give all this money to religious based organizations to keep the fascism going, the religious fascism going? And that's what the movie Chocolat was about, breaking down that shit. Because when you suppress it, it's going to come around any damn way. You see what I'm saying? It's going to come around anyway. That's why in one, one, one special they did, every last religious, fascist, um, hard-nosed, mild majority preacher in the 80s fell. You see what I'm saying? Now that shit get ready to come around to the black preachers. Same thing. They're going to get caught around here doing some of the same old freaky deaky shit. You see what I'm saying? Because it's got to come out. You see what I'm saying? It's got to come out. This has already started. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's, all, it's all being started, but it's still that same realm. Give me some questions. What's that? Mm -hmm. I don't understand what you're saying about the red on the bottom of every realm. Are we supposed to be on that left one time in order to be? Yes. Yes. What kind of balance is that? I don't know. You, but see, your balance is based on moralism. The balance that you The people that look more like the Amish, the Mennonites, or, or, or the Victorian things now is the conscious community. We done righteous our ass into motherfucking goddamn Victorian crackers. And the cracker getting his freak on. And his expression on. We the motherfuckers sitting around here need to just wear all black and put some big old buckles on our shoes. Because we ain't nothing but pilgrims. Quakers. Pilgrims. You see what I'm saying? So your concept, our concept of what we call consciousness ain't nothing but a motherfucking pilgrim in kitchen cloth. You see? All this old bullshit. But that's the first level. Yes, we came out of hell. We came out of hell. That's the first level. But as you keep going on, now all the old punctified niggas is these old Hebrew Israelites, these Islamic faggots, and all these other old isms and schisms and bullshit ass motherfuckers out here. They're doing the same old pimp games. They ain't nothing but Reverend Ikes and goddamn Creflo Dollar and T.D. Jakes. Whether you wear an eight-button goddamn suit or whether you wear a motherfucking kitchen cloth dashiki, it's the same game with some knowledge covered over the shit. 
That's what we're talking about here. Our concept of righteousness and our concept of what we think ain't got shit to do with the ancient African who had gnosis, knowledge of the universe, which means God don't give a fuck what you do, whether you fought it on your goddamn neighbor's head. He too busy, or she too busy worried that the sun don't bump into the moon. Then to worry about whether you stole some goddamn a brick off your damn neighbor front porch. It doesn't matter. That's not the balance. We be talking all that my alti and balance. We don't know what that shit is. That's an alchemical principle. But the Afrocentric motherfuckers never goddamn studied that shit. They stopped at a certain level. And they keep thinking that shit is some damn Christianity. And it ain't got nothing to do with that. The balance that they talk about, if this is an illusion and don't exist, then what is balance on this shit here? It don't exist. The dream and the illusion can never be real. It can never have the balance. The balance that they're talking about is on the inside of you. In that case, there's a, a, a balance and an equilibrium between those things that your desires give away to as well as the philosophical things that is produced by those same desires that you allowed yourself to flourish in because you didn't suppress those damn things. That is the difference. So even when we say that kind of shit, motherfucker don't get on that level because what they did is they have accepted a new form of the same religion. In this case, it's a bunch of motherfuckers out here on the radio thinking that because they ate some goddamn wheatgrass that they're going to get to heaven more than a motherfucker eating some goddamn hog and this shit ain't happening. They might have a, they might, they might not have a stomach ache, but it has nothing to do with spirit. Spirit is not physical. And the equilibrium aspect is when you start focusing on all the things that's dangerous for you, then guess what happened? Your brain and your body starts making those things dangerous. So my same brother who used to lick ketchup off the ground, now if you paint your toenails in his house, he break out in hives. What happened? It's because he's trained his mind that everything is dangerous. You want to know to help this motherfucker? Go downtown. They beat them goddamn bums on the street. They got niggas on the street been 10, 15 years plus living outside. And they got all kind of decent motherfuckers with goddamn big screen TVs dying every goddamn day. And them niggas eating out the trash can. You say, well, how can that be? Their body's taking on all them drugs. First of all, them motherfuckers don't, they're the only free people in America because they don't worry about the same thing we worry about. So therefore, their body don't give away to disease because they don't worry about the same thing. So worrying about this motherfucking diet too much does the same thing. You ever hear these motherfuckers write all these books on cancer and how not to get cancer and the motherfuckers come down with cancer? It's been an ass for them motherfuckers over the last 15 years. They say, I feel a little embarrassed. I came down with cancer. I done wrote 10 books on how not to get cancer and I come down with it because they focus on cancer. This is the damn shit. Your mind, you don't focus on that bullshit, it don't happen. I'm a big motherfucker, but I ain't never sick. Never. Never sick. You see, and then I used to take a whole, I used to come down with a cold from, from, like, from, from like 93 to 99, I used to pop all that echinacea, and I would come down with a cold and all that shit. And then in 99, in the spring of 99, I'd be coming down with the cold at night, and by the time I wake up, the motherfucker be gone. I don't even have to even take the goddamn vitamins no more. Because a lot of this shit is mind over fucking matter. You see what I'm saying? And we don't let this shit. But my brother, that motherfucker so entrenched in this shit. He's so entrenched in this shit, you can cough in his backyard and everybody in the house be sick. You know what I'm saying? I guarantee you, that motherfucker, is, his diet is impeccable. And in the last five years, I ain't been sick at all. I guarantee you, Mike done been sick a dozen times. That's because he has trained his body, his archetype of the collective unconscious that the shit is dangerous for him. And you are what you think you are. So therefore, the balance ain't got nothing to do with the physical shit we talking about here. You know what I'm saying? So they got all these niggas on the goddamn radio 
talking about all the shit that they and all they, all the shit that they don't eat. And only thing they have done is become another elite Greek group that look down on motherfuckers because they ate some goddamn white bread. You see what I'm saying? Now I'm not talking about you. I'm and I'm and, and by no means this is a throw off on the great work that you do. But my point here is, don't let the work that you do become a motherfucking theology in the aspect of the divine, because it ain't. You see what I'm saying? Because it ain't. We know that shit, but we come from a goddamn history where niggas used to eat what the fuck they wanted. We ain't had no goddamn disease before 1980. Until we let some cracker convince us. You see what I'm saying? We didn't have none of that shit. Now all of a sudden, you ever hear black people say, you know them black folks got, old people say black folks got white people's diseases now. Never heard that shit? Them black folks got white people's diseases now. That's because you let a motherfucker in 1980 when you became more educated convince your ass that this shit is disease. Well, what the hell happened to all them motherfuckers, man, that was living off of, they said the goddamn count base in them, they said we're going to record an album. They say y'all make it to Chicago, and them niggas had a loaf of goddamn bread and a can of pork and beans amongst 12 of them. They ate the loaf of bread, and they had four cans of pork and beans. The, the, the Benny Moulton Orchestra. They had a loaf of bread and four cans of pork and beans amongst 12 motherfuckers. The man say, and they got on the back of a pickup truck and drove from goddamn Cleveland, Ohio to fucking New Jersey. And got up in the studio and threw down, blew them motherfucking horns like never before, off of fuel, off of four cans of fucking poking beans and a goddamn loaf of bread. White you know what they said that shit about your boy that used to play the damn thing? They said that nigga was fueled by. No, it was one of those other motherfuckers used to blow the horn sideways something. Lester Young. Young was fueled off of poking beans and gin. Fueled off of pork and beans and gin. But that motherfucker was letting go of that muse and that, none of that shit happening. It's only when you become sophisticated that the muse starts to shut down and that's when you die. That's when you die. When the muse shut down. Fight to keep the muse to a certain level. You know niggas, you eat all kind of shit. Sardines. Vienna sausages. Them niggas were never sick, though. We all wheat grass and seven on the motherfuckers and sick and all kind of shit. You ain't doing the history. But they didn't have, their minds wasn't fucked up. They got their freak on, they got their news on, and they get all that shit. And even with the church shit, that was a metaphysical church the first 50 years of the goddamn United States. That shit was metaphysical. That shit was straight up blues. The gospel is made off of blues. They was fusing that shit in. That was a metaphysical church before it became. The white man said, we got to stop the metaphysical church in the black community. And that shit became prosperity religion. What happened the first 50 years or the first 70 years when nigga didn't need no money to be spiritual? That was a metaphysical church that the black people went to called Christianity. It's when they got that prosperity shit now. Eight button suits and shit. Swiping your credit card at the goddamn door. Then your ass start coming down with all kind of white folks diseases. See how that shit go? That's what this shit was about. You see, what happened to all them niggas doing all kind of shit? Niggas used to eat all kind of shit. But isn't it funny they say they took a poll in 1970 and the best diet on the planet was a goddamn black child? Because they, because Whatever goddamn Skittles, well, they had them Nihilators back then. They fucked a lot of niggas up when they come out with them shits in the late 60s. Them Nihilators and shit like that. But them motherfuckers was eating more vegetables and greens and shit. You see what I'm saying? Mosey, I'm convinced collard green with hog in it is more medicinal. You heard it from Bobby Hammond. And I don't eat that shit. It turned my goddamn stomach. <laughs> you heard that shit from Bobby Hemmett. That shit turned my damn stomach. If shit, the hog was to get that awful ass collard greens down. Shit, that's what made the motherfucker go down. 
Eat some goddamn collard green and let that goddamn acid kick back up on your ass and you'll see whether that's some good shit or not. When you put carrots in it all you want, that's some fucked up shit. You better get this motherfucker right here because it's about the melanin. Everything is inside of the melanin. It's alchemical. It's alchemical. But we have letting somebody, we let somebody convince us. The problem here is, is we don't dance no more. We don't house party no more. We let a motherfucker convince us to give us in another social order. And that's why we got to have all the diet shit now, because the other damn order, the social realm that we was into was keeping us alive. We don't do none of that shit no more. We don't pop no cold ones. A goddamn bourgeoisie don't pop no cold one on the front porch with a fly swat and a goddamn mason jar full of fucking water in the summer. Motherfuckers on my street don't even come out no more. Why you bullshit? They don't even come out no more. We don't do no shit like that. Start, you start a goddamn fire to keep the gnats away in Atlanta, they call the cops on your ass. It's against the law to do shit with nature. You know what I'm saying? We don't do, I mean, basic shit we don't do no more because it's not cool with upward mobile. And we're sick based on social order. You understand what I'm saying? They got to have them health food stores to offset your frigid ass. You know what I'm saying? You see? Another thing, like I say, fucking a bunch of motherfuckers that some preacher put you together with kills you too. See what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Being in the bed with a motherfucker based on some old God put you together. That kind of ignorant shit. That's a deadly one right there. Some asshole that you don't like no more. You see what I'm saying? You ain't stuck in some old routine of screwing this goddamn nigga. You see what I'm saying? Some old dumb shit like that. It's a lot of things, but most of the shit is fucking damn social. And that's what we're dying from. We don't do the certain things that kept our people alive, and we're not anthropologists to take a chronicle on what we used to do. You see what I'm saying? On what the hell we used to do. No social outlets, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? It might have been medicinal to beat the fuck out your goddamn kids. <laughs> that might have been some medicinal shit. Motherfucker, fuck up. Now it's time for me to let my goddamn cancerous pus off on your ass. And that way, I ain't talking about abusing a motherfucker, but I'm talking about a motherfucker you done let go. He done fucked somebody up. Some shit that'll get him a good ass whipping. You let the shit go. Because some old motherfucker told you to tell him time out, you catch the cancer because you didn't step to that motherfucker and kick him up his goddamn ass. That's how my mama used to live. She let that shit build up, and she come up in that motherfucker. And last time I got a beating, I think was sixth grade, that motherfucker lasted an hour. I said, this motherfucker ain't gonna never stop. <laughs> when I stole that Batmobile. <laughs> I told you about that story. I told you, did I tell you about that story? No, no. Went to Roses. They had them shits down south. My brother, that's like a, a Kmart. Went to fucking Roses. Mama bought me a goddamn Batmobile. So I'm playing with the Batmobile out in the yard. It get the rain and I leave the shit in the yard. So my grandmama go out there and see the motherfucking Batmobile. She taking it and put it up under her bed. She was good for putting shit up under her bed. Turkeys and all kind of shit. So she put the shit up under her bed. The next day, we go back to Roses. I think somebody, some kid done came and stole my Batmobile. So I go back to Roses and steal a goddamn Batmobile, put it in my damn sock, a big old battery-powered car. Put it in a damn sock. About this big now, this is why I put the motherfucker in my sock. And that's metaphysical right there, how a motherfucker get a shit in his sock. I'm out there in the yard the next day playing with the Batmobile. My grandmama come and say, this motherfucker done went in my, under my bed. So she go up under the bed and look, and there's another Batmobile up in that bitch. So she come out there and go, hey, look, um, where did you get that, that Batmobile from? And I, right then I knew. I said, under your bed, because I know that's her shit. She said, well, you got that under your bed. What is this one doing? I was cold busted. I couldn't say shit, but like, goddamn, you need to beat my ass on this one. You know? You know, we do kind of shit like that to survive the news, like I tell them. Pissing in Mountain Dew bottles and giving it to your brother. <laughs> shit like that. Y'all be like. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
You know what I'm saying? Pissing in mine two bottles and motherfuckers. Hey, we got a Mountain Dew. You run around the goddamn corner and it's a damn bottle full of piss. Shit like that. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I'm trying to say the thing was, you know, but my mama, she cut that ass and what happened? She get the healing. See, the cracker done broke that shit down until you time out. You keep the cancer in you and you die because you're trying to be like the goddamn crackers. You see what I'm saying? But you probably could have released so much toxins by going to that motherfucker ass properly. You know, waiting they go to bed and shit. Like my mama, wait till you go to bed. You we really done made this shit. Wait till you go to bed and then bust around that motherfucker. That kind of shit. Then beat a motherfucker ass, then get mad because the motherfucker crying. And then I'm gonna beat your goddamn ass if you don't quit that crying. You know what I'm saying? She done put a damn stitching card upside your fucking head, about to took your eye out, and then she gonna get mad at you for crying. That kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? That kind of damn shit. Or when we got, then when we get a, you know, like I said, I got a little age on me and the little switches and shit. When I was taking that karate and I get kicked in the balls and kicked in the eye. So she come with that switch and I'm like, okay, shit. <laughs> Looking at that shit, you know. So then she got smart. She pick up like telephones, big items, vases, and throw at your ass to physically hurt you. That kind of shit. And you like, are you crazy? But you be crying and shit because she done hit you with a large piece of glass or something like that. That kind of shit. But she releasing that goddamn energy. And this was a motherfucking upper mobile school teacher. Can you imagine? This was motherfucking the so-called socially acceptable goddamn putting pain and torture on people. You see? So we had a nigga named Darius. Darius was a little boy. That he got two out of three, four school systems. And he, he was, they couldn't babysit him. They couldn't put, he was like seven at the time. No, he was like five. And they couldn't, he was like seven. And they couldn't babysit him because he, when he go to the other dog on children's house, when they, the babysit, he would beat up on the little girl, had little girls, man, three and four with black eyes. Dash was a menace. Then they said, well, the only people can take him now is we go to the, now we're going to send him to a reform school. He got to go to Miss Shaw House. That's my mom, my grandmama, the ultimate disciplinarian, Miss Shaw and the Hemis. And by that time, my grandmama, you know, she, she put fear in the motherfucker heart. She was like seven at that time. But she still could really terrorize a motherfucker because she was so mean. But, she's, but at that time, we had been into the discipline game, so she gave them to me and my three brothers. And every day when we came in from school, we took that nigga out in the backyard and we beat the shit out of him. <laughs> and then we drag him in there and my grandmama would feed him. And every goddamn day, we beat the shit out of that nigga. Suflex, body slam, power drives. <laughs> so when I came in from high school, I was in high school. We come up from high school and say, Darius, time for your ass to. But no, don't get me wrong. This motherfucker here was a menace to society. He was doing ruthless shit to little babies. They, they locked him in the closet in the school. He bust out the closet and peed on the teacher. <laughs> so the only person, so we come in, me and my three brothers, we beat this shit out that nigga. We take him out in the backyard. We beat him. We Light a fire, we hold his head over the fire, about to burn him, and all he just be hollering, we talking, and he coming in, my grandmama sit him down and she feed the nigga. And that motherfucker, that's the only and you guess what? The only people he could hang around in the town was us. Was us. But this is the kind of nigga, when we first got him, I'd be sitting in the chair sleeping, and I saw him, he was sitting there with a bottle in his hand, and I was going to see I nod off like that and shit like that. And then when I go to sleep, I hear this thing go bling and hit me in the damn head. And I jump up and I was beating him. My mama came and said, what you doing beating that boy like that? But I was insane. But he was that. When we first got him, he, he, was like, he, he set the damn carpet on fire in the house and then blame it on his little sister. You see what I'm saying? Only, every day we come in from school, we beat that nigga ass. Torch him, strangle him, smother him ass. And he became a socially acceptable H.E.O. <laughs> But my, my, my grandma, they were disciplinarians. And they knew how to get that shit, so they didn't have no cancer, because they didn't take that shit off, motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? You beat that ass, but now you timing out, and the cancer coming to your ass. Because you timing out with this motherfucking goddamn minister society. You see what I'm saying? 
Lock that nigga up in the damn closet with no food. <laughs> Whatever. All I know is black people used to do it. We didn't sing because of what they did, but still, yeah, that motherfucker wasn't dying from no disease. <laughs> the motherfucker was going through therapy right now for some shit with went down with their parents, but the motherfucker was living. <laughs> I'm just joking. There's some balance got to come in that shit, but... But then again, on the other end, we got 14 motherfucking niggas in jail, so... Uh, somebody was doing something right. Give me some questions. Any more questions? Y'all in shock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent one. That one and the one that they just put out uh, in, in 2000. They got two of them. Dune and the one that they just, they just made a, a, a three-hour version, Frank Herbert's Dune. That came out in 3000. That, that whole thing is the whole Christ motif. Um, excellent movie. Mm -hmm. Give me some more questions. Go see Time Machine. When they got that Time Machine, uh, if you look real close, everybody there was either Tibetan or black. There was light skin, but there was black. And the white boy, the mutant, was still ruling from up underground, controlling motherfuckers' minds. That was a tight one. Time machine. That was a tight one. Blade was just disappointing. I mean, it was good if you want to see a motherfucker get their ass whipped for two hours. But as far as they didn't drop no science hardly. Not compared to the other because they didn't even let the sister come back. Now, she was the other movie. The first movie was the black woman movie. And all that shit that he was doing in, in, in Blade 2 is the shit that she created in Blade 1. You know? But, um, yes, uh, that one, but, but Time Machine, Queen of the Dam, yes, the Time Machine, they dropped some stuff in there about the Illuminati up under the ground, mutants controlling the minds of the black folks. But the black folks in the movie was docile, wouldn't fight back. Come to find out, they was controlling the minds up under the ground. It was it was a good movie. Time Machine. How What's you, that? How you feel about uh, ejaculation and women's forces ejaculation? And if you're dealing with ejaculation, is it a way to, is it a way to do so without having to worry about... Well, I'm going to be honest with you. In the tantric thing, some of the texts that they dealt, dealt with, one teaspoon of cum is not going to offshoot, offshoot things. So a lot of that stuff there is it's, it's, it's jargon that was outmoded but also it means here is, is the balance is you don't supposed to ejaculate all the time because you lose your sexual energy. You see what I'm saying? Whenever you uh, 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 what you call it and all. But you ain't heard about this shit right here? What's the name of that shit called? That, what's the name of that thing called? Um, huh? What's the name of that, 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 that blue pill? The other blue pill. Huh? Stamina RX. Stamina RX. Stamina RX. <laughs> that shit's selling out the damn stores. Stamina RX. Oh, you can, oh, you shit. Uh, you can get it at, well, uh, some of these gas stations sell it. Um, but any of them Starship, y'all know what Starship is. Don't be threatened. You know what motherfuckers know what Starship is? I suggest you visit it and find out what Starship is. They call it a head shop. They sell the bongs and they sell all the, uh, the sexual stuff also too. Now the other key, the other key is, you know the little goddamn paddle ball with the paddle ball with the little ball on the end? Get that motherfucker and break the goddamn ball off. Now that is a sexual device. <laughs> huh? That's the that's the sexual flogging. Get that motherfucker and break the damn ball off from that shit. The ladies love it. <laughs> Get you a damn. They got them now in plastic. With all colors, I saw the colors on it. You know the paddle ball. 
So get one to match up the color of the gods. Ocean, yellow, red, you know, blue for the goddamn Yemen, y'all. You know what day of the week it is. <laughs> Shit like that. Get innovative. You know what I'm saying? Get innovative. <laughs> Give me some questions. that. Um, you mean so like those more, more, more dealing towards the pharmaceutical or the natural? Well, the ancients did it. You know. Well, um, I'm just saying. You know, I, you know, I really can't. I really can't say based on um what's out here, whatever type thing here. Now, nah, I mean, you know. But I'm just saying, as far as uh, all I can say is, is based on the, 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 the natural ones, I know the ancients did. See, most of the designer ones we're talking about, there's in the hands of the Europeans, although I'm not all, let's put it this particular way. But like I told you the last time, the pharmaceutical was alchemical and that was ours also. You see what I'm saying? It's just that, you know, it, that's, that's, that's ours also. But so I wouldn't really know based on, but I just know that, um, it was the reason why they stopped Timothy Leary and all their particular acid researchers and stuff from the late 60s, early 70s. You see what I'm saying? And all, you see. And basically, it was, and a lot of that had to deal with um, melanin research, too. Uh, a lot of that had to deal, deal with, with melanin um, research. There's all kinds of metaphysical things, like the metaphysics are throwing up. And I, got, I, 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 I hooked up on this one, help hazardly. Then a motherfucking vegetarian eating all that goddamn shit and had to throw up because I threw up all the enzymes. I'm throwing up more when I was a damn vegetarian. But what happened was, was over about a course of the throwing up over a year, uh, there's a nozzle in the bottom of the stomach, which is a chakra. And I opened, I cleaned out that nozzle, and when I throw up, my third eye would come open. And I didn't know until about two years later, I was with C. Primanel, and he said, you know that's a damn uh, a nozzle, that's a chakra down there. When you throw up this goddamn... It's a chakra. It's a metaphysical chakra that opens up in the bottom of the stomach. So there is mysteries to the man and woman that we are not, I mean, there's, there's thousands of things. You see what I'm saying? There's thousands of things. So therefore, when I'm talking about giving over to these views, it's like a little paddle ball and shit. You waking up some animal up in there, some monster. But why is it as though it's, it's the erogenous zone? What is the original crisis based off of Dionysus, Phanes, Bacchus, and Eros is the same entity. In the book Orpheus, Orphic and Greek religion, Phanes, Bacchanesus, Dionysus, Eros. Eros is eroticism. It's the same entity. So all this erotic shit is the Christ level. That's why Missy told you to get your goddamn freak on. That is the Christ level. That's why Bacchus and the word Jesus is the same. But that's Phanes, Eros. Then you get the whole thing of eroticism. That is the Christ. You see what I'm saying? So whatever floats your motherfucking boat, that's the Christ level. That's why the damn church and all them is trying to stop that shit. They'll send you the water, get your face blowed off, but you can't fuck nothing. Ain't that a bitch? They will sanction war. Thank you, God, and pass the ammunition, but you can't screw that. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that a backward shit? What's that? I was uh, going to ask about uh, cremation versus mummification. And, and because I know that early in the Egyptian, even yeah. pre dynastic and early dynastic, they did mummify. And you made a reference to the fact that. It's two, it, it's two different forms of metaphysical aspects. It depends on what you're trying to do. The cremation aspect that was, that, that was later on preserved in India was they cremated, but then again, they were trying to get the body to come out of the body fast enough, because what happens is as long as the soul is inside of the body, your spirit leaves. The soul does not let go. The soul is wrapped in ego. And so it still thinks that it's that body. So the soul gets shut up in the goddamn casket. And it would be in its own little world because it was already dormant when it was down to you before. Your spirit leaves. Your mind leaves. The soul is up in there. That's an incubated, dormant Essence, that's the true you. And it just has different dimensions of itself. 
The spirit leaves, the soul still stays in the body until the body totally decomposed. Then the soul gets to hell on when it realizes, oh, fuck, need some bones, I must be dead. Now, the, the ancient Indians used to cremate so the soul could be released on the same day or something after it burned, and then they would take that particular soul and they could track that soul to where it was going to incarnate in a person, and then they can bring that person back about a year or so, and that person can have the past life remembrance and can do certain tasks. It's in the movie Little Buddha with Keanu Reeves and shit. So they could do that particular thing. They talk about it also in the autobiography of Yogi. Now, the Egyptians, on the other hand, some of them didn't want to reincarnate and have this cycle of reincarnation to the point where they might have been a god and, and, and preacher some things, but then they might end up a motherfucker on the corner. You understand what I'm saying? Or some pallbearer in some Baptist church somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So that particular thing, they would embalm the body so that soul could stay in there till the end times. Because the body hadn't decomposed. So that soul can stay in its own little dimension, its own little world until all this shit is over. You see what I'm saying? So there was two ways of doing it. Both particular ways are a form of the, of, of the esoteric or the occult. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, what's that? Yeah. Okay, they reached the level. Did they not need to get their feet on anymore? Well, how had they got to the level where? Um, they well, what they had done was, and see, there's a, there's some mystery behind that. What the yogis had done was master the astral plane. The astral plane is still only, although it's the astral plane, it's still just levels of illusion. So in actuality. They didn't get to the highest level of Godhood because we're still down here because the highest level of Godhood, we can only get to that when the earth is transformed and the kingdom has come in. So the only thing they did is master the astral planes. That's a different thing and all. And over the course of years, we kept thinking that was the ascended masters. That's a, it's a person that mastered the astral plane, but the astral planes are a form of illusions too. It is the underworld which will be the world of the world to come. So you have the, the matrix that consists of the physical realm and 13 or how many other dimensions of different spiritual planes. And although they can go on those different planes and hang around for a couple of years, it's still a form of illusion regardless. Until the whole universe is redo, redo itself into a new beginning, and that's the whole world that's comprised of every soul in it. So for the mere fact, we got these motherfuckers that go up to ask for and they call themselves ascended masters, and we ain't benefiting from it. That was just a form of a system that they used to deal with, just like the Egyptian would mummify to keep from coming back to this matrix. Some of them could go up on these astral planes and don't have to come back to the physical. But over the course of years, because the, the, the real knowledge was lost, we kept thinking that those are the damn high motherfuckers and they ain't. You see what I'm saying? They just was able to master the astral plane with just another forms of illusion. What we're talking about is the realm of the realm that is the world to come. And in that, that's a whole bunch of monsters that deal with passion and the erotic things. And not the absence of indulgence, but indulgence. Then they say, ooh, he indulged too much and the demons got him. Well, that's what he is, a motherfucking demon. He just went to his true self and stuff like that. So there's two different systems and all, and it can get very muddled and complicated if you don't understand the systems. The yogi master has not become the true God because the one who becomes the true God, all the souls come become that at the same time. Based on that door we open. They just mastered going to another form of illusion and didn't have to fuck around with earth no more. You understand what I'm saying? So they just waddling around up in there. It's on the movie Star Trek Generations, where he, where Captain Kirk got thrown into an alternate universe, and it was he was out there cutting flowers and shit. It was a beautiful place of his childhood, and he loved it. And the guy said, "Hey, it ain't real." Although it was his own paradise, it was still an illusion anyway. And that's all the yogis have done over the years: have mastered those forms of the astral plane. And the astral plane is the matrix. It's just that we don't understand. We talk about the physical matrix, but there's several levels of the same illusionary Maya that go all the way up to these different planes. All of it's called the Devashanic plane. 
the buddhic plane all of these different planes they talk about they are still only forms of illusions and so those masters bending spoons and all that kind of shit is just people they are actually con men and don't know it because obviously we're not benefiting from a Sai Baba or autobiographer yoga hell the only thing he hung around is well he was smart he came over here to get paid he ain't had nobody up in his audience who wasn't white and who wasn't rich. You see his shit and all. So they, they came over here to them. They was became they became hustlers out of a Victorian India that was colonized. So they came over to get paid off these crackers ass. So they knew what they was doing. Let's go get some money off these motherfuckers by putting them through all kind of yoga techniques and all that shit and then tell them that they are extended masters and all because they got on a long white beard and some old new damn robe on them and be meditating and shit to some bells and stuff. So that can be a whole con game too. And I was confused about it when I first started out and trying to figure this kind of shit out and all till I, but you, you have to keep on until you get the bigger picture and all. So a lot of the yoga, thing, we got a lot of black people are caught up in that. Been, Meditating for five, for, for the last damn ten something years. You know what I'm saying? Celibate for no reason. Ain't shit came out of the stuff and all. You know what I'm saying? As far as I, I know a brother, he ain't had sex in guys 15 years. I say, ain't you a damn fool? We need to take you outside and beat the shit out of you. For what reason? You know, because he done let some fool fool him into saying that kind of, that kind of stuff is right. And, and it didn't do nothing. He don't have a... Last time a motherfucker didn't have a damn automobile. I ain't got one either, but I ain't fucking around being, I didn't have to goddamn have no big balls to do that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying, hell, he need to get something out of the goddamn deal. Shit, he can be like me and all. Hell, that's a thousand nigga walking around with a motherfucking bicycle. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have shit. I'm like, well, what's the point, nigga? You on model just like me. At least I'm getting some booty. God damn! If you, if I, we both end up on modern together and shit. You know what I'm saying? Up here waiting on the bus in the rain and god damn, at least you need to do is doing it, getting some booty. Your, your fate is the same as mine, you bragging because you ain't had sex in 15 years. Big old roll, old molded, mildew, rheumatism ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? This